Hello, welcome to Twilight Princess 100%. Um, I'm not going to say too much, I'm just going to introduce my commentator, T-Bag. You would like to say hi? Yeah, hey, how you all doing? I am, I'm, I'm T-Bag. I'm, I'm an avid 100% runner. Um, yeah, do you want to get into the run and we can do, we can do niceties during all the, the admin stuff at the start? Yeah, sure. Alright, what was the file name? Let me just do one final refresh for you and confirm it. The file name choice is Ruffled B, capital R U F F L E D, capital B. Uh, B? Capital B, brother, yeah. Okay. All right. I'll start in three, two, one. Good luck. Awesome. Uh, I can I can take it away. Yeah, time. I go. Ahead. Um. So, yeah. So Twilight Princess early game is uh, it's quite similar to how we'll do casual playthroughs. Um. So there won't be too dissimilar. So I think it's probably a good time to kind of explain more about the run and also kind of introduce introduce Nuki to you a bit more. Um. So if you haven't seen Nuki before, um, she's probably most well known for when she did uh, the 3D 100% Zelda marathon. So that's Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time. Wind Waker, Skyward Sword, Twilight Princess, and Breath of the Wild 100%. Um, all in one RTA sitting. I think it was 56 hours, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 56 hours, 8 minutes. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so that is, uh, if you haven't seen Nuki before, that's where she is from. Um, and as I said, I'm uh, uh, just a 100% speedrunner. Been running now for a couple of months. Uh, overall, Twilight Princess, about a year and a half. Um but getting into what we'll be doing today, um, so as I said, this is TP 100%. Um, and when when you say 100% on a speedrun, it's normally it's open to a little bit of interpretation um, as to what 100% uh, actually means. Um, so the main things we're going to be looking for in this run are we're going to be trying to get all of the heart pieces. Um, we're going to be trying to get all of the items on the pause screen. Um, within this game, if you've never seen it before, there are 60 pose throughout the throughout the game. And basically what they are, are these enemies that only spawn at night time um, and they contain a soul within them. So we need to be able to collect all 60 of them. Um, there's also 24 golden bugs. So there is um, a person in this game called Agatha, who is a uh, who's an avid bug collector. And basically she would like you to, throughout the game, find 24 golden bugs and give them to her. And as a, uh, as a reward, she will give you back a bunch of money and um, a bigger wallet. Um, so those are kind of our main three collectibles. Um, there's then uh, we have to pick up all of the equipment across the run and upgrade it to as high as it can be. Um, all warp portals, which is kind of standard stuff. Um, and then we also have to pick up a letter, a scent, and the fishing journal, so catching a fish. Um, but it'll all make more sense as we get further into the run. I don't believe I skipped over anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Upgrading the wall and the quiver is the only other thing. Um, but it, as I said, it will make more sense when we get there um, as we kind of take you through the night. Um, but as I said, the early game in this in this run is quite similar to a casual playthrough because we don't, what we don't want to do is do any kind of major sequence breaks at the start. Um, so right now what you can see Nuki doing is she's working through Ordon, trying to get up to 30 rupees uh, because... <laughs> because... Um, the slingshot that we need to the first item of the run that we get uh, sorry well the first we buy will be the slingshot um because we need to get that as that is on our item wheel screen um so it's just the day the the everyday chores of uh, of ordon so we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to save a baby from a monkey um and we're gonna have to do a little bit of fishing to feed a cat um and then we will start getting into more of the kind of exploits and glitches and stuff like that um this game does have a fair amount of glitches. Um, it's not as some people would say it's not as broken as some other Zelda games. Um, just because we don't have any major broken movement mechanic like um, super swims, um, I don't know, like uh, SRM stuff like that. Um, but there is definitely there uh, the fair share of glitches across the run. This is quite a start. That was very unfortunate with the monkey. Yeah, I was gonna say that's very, that's a very unfortunate. Um, that monkey, the, the hitbox on that monkey is quite strange. Um, I guess it's also important to note that this is the GameCube version of the game. Um, so there's three versions of this game. You've got the GameCube version, you've got the Wii version, and you've got the HD version. Um, so they're all very different and have very different runs because certain glitches work on certain versions of the game. Um, at the moment, 
GameCube is the fastest version um, and probably the most broken, some might say. Um, and that is partially due to this uh, a movement mechanic called an LJA, which will make a lot more sense when we pick up the boomerang in about an hour's time. Um, but basically what it is, is that if you throw your boomerang and you do a jump attack, uh, you will then be sent very, very far. And it's like, it's almost like a, it's like a super jump basically. Um, but when you see it, it will definitely make a lot more sense. Um, but there are, as I said, there are the Wii version and there is the, uh, the, the Wii U version, not the Switch. Um, and yeah, those have their own respective runs. Oh. So I said 30 rupees now. Now we just need to grab two fish for this cat and then we will, uh, we will be on our way. I don't know what happened to your fishing rod there. I'm I, not sure. I broke, I guess. Yeah, so the within this within this run, the early game has a fair amount of RNG to it. Um, across the game, there's a fair amount of RNG. Um, but especially in this early game here. So the amount of rupees you get from the grass can play an impact on how kind of the like what actions you do. Um, the length of time for these fish to, to grab your rod also. Um, so yeah, there's a fair amount for when you're doing PB attempts, there is a fair amount of, um, early game RNG that gets taken into account. They are not, they are not like this it. is, no. That's right. It is, it is a long run. There will be plenty, there will be plenty of time save across the run. Also, I don't um, know if you mentioned the we'll size of the fish as well. Oh yeah. So within, so we grabbed the two fish here. Um, and basically they can either be 10 inches or 11 inches. I don't know what that is in centimeters. Uh, but basically, if you get a 10-inch fish on the first pull, and if you get an 11-inch fish on the second pull, there is an extra text box, just because we love we love a good bit of time loss in, in early game. Um, there's also a very heavy RNG trick uh, called Cat Warp, where we can basically warp this cat from where Nuki is standing currently to the other side of the water. Um, but it is, it is very RNG heavy and not really worth going for because uh, there's a very large chance that you will reset. Oh, I guess also it is important to note, I believe you're playing... You're playing the GameCube version, but you're playing on a Wii, I believe? Correct. I believe you own a Wii? Yes, cool, okay. Yeah, so you can play you, you can play GameCube games on the Wii. Um, so that's just kind of a, a, a little side note, I guess. Um, but there we are. Those are our first two items of the run. So we, we picked up some milk, um, which we got for saving the cat, and we've also got our slingshot. Um, so that milk will actually come, it'll, it'll be very beneficial in about five and a half hours from now. Um, so we keep we keep that until very late on in the run uh, when we do a thing called Cave of Ordeals, which is, um, it's it's a, a 50 floor dungeon uh, with um, like a wave of enemies per floor. And the idea is to try and take as, as little bit of damage as you can through it. So we need the milk for there in case we, in case we take some damage. Um, but yeah, I guess the main difference, yeah, the main difference between the GameCube and the Wii run would be the LJ. Um, but there's also a bunch of different tricks that they've patched within different versions. Um, so something that we don't do in this run, um, there's Sword and Shield Skip, which I believe is unanimous, I think across all versions. Um, there'll be Early Master Sword, which we'll see in a bit, where basically the, the major sequence break we have within the early parts of this game is a trick called Early Master Sword, um, and it is basically what it says on the tin. Um, you get to the Master Sword very early. Um, so if you've ever played through this game before, um, you'll know that you get the Master Sword quite, like, fairly late on in the grand scheme of things. Um, but what getting the Master Sword does is it lets you, it gives you the Twilight Crystal. Um, and the Twilight Crystal lets you transform between wolf and human whenever you want. So we're able to use that for a lot of different sequence breaks. Um, this gate is not. It's, this gate is not liking you at all. This early game is not liking me at all. No, it's not. As okay. I said, yeah, that that gate, that gate there is effectively RNG. It's it's not technically, but it, it may as well be. Um, you basically bonk on it, and there's a, almost a fifty fifty chance on what side you'll end up on. Um, yeah. So now what we're doing is we're in to. Uh, so we, we've left Oron Village, and we basically need to go through and free. Uh, Tallow, who is one of the kids from the village, who has been taken and is in a cage with a monkey. Um, because there's a lot of monkeys in this game for some reason. Um, and we're also going to stop off by a person called Karo. Um, so Karo is, uh, the man with the, the, kind of the bird's nest hair, I guess is a good way of putting it. Um, 
and he will give us he will give us a lantern um, and we'll actually come back to Karo in about two hours time um, and you'll see quite a quite an interesting trick there one of the one of the big sequence breaks in the run um, I guess I can explain the sequence break actually now why, why we have some time because there's not too much to go through in early game just because it is um, almost like um, almost like a casual playthrough I guess the main difference would be that we don't get the wooden sword within this run. Um, so if you've ever played it, you leave Ord on village and the kids would like to see you hit a bunch of like scarecrows effectively with the uh, with the uh, sword. Um, but what we don't get in this run because it doesn't actually have a place on the pause screen. So when you get to the end of the run, you want to be able to look at your pause screen and have all the slots filled. That's not there. Um, so it's just the Ord on sword and the um, master sword. Uh, did you explain rolling? I, I didn't actually. Yeah. So um, the way rolling works in this game. So rolling is our main movement mechanic. We don't have, we don't have like we don't run backwards and we don't have super swims or anything like that. Um, so we roll a lot of time to get around the place. Um, but what happens is that a lot of people think that when you're rolling, you can just kind of mash away at A, and it will just roll because that's that's probably how you did it when you played through it casually. Um, but what you can actually do is you can frame perfect chain your rolls and if you if you manage to do that you actually keep a lot of speed um, but if you drop the chained roll so if I did if I did two rolls um, and the first one was good and then the second one wasn't good it, like your momentum shifts um, so it's kind of hard to pick up your speed if you, especially if you're on something like a slope um, so yeah there, there is a lot of optimization that can go into this game to make it make it quite fast Mm -hmm. uh, but we will have later on when we get um, when we get the master sword, we will be able to be wolf link a lot of the time. Um, so then, running around as wolf will be there's kind of this balance in the game between uh, when it's best to transform and roll, or when it's best to just stay as wolf. Because um, transforming, I think, takes like four seconds or something like that. So it's it's kind of weighing up your options as to how you want to do it. Um, but nearly out of kind of early early game um what we're going to have after move free tallow is we're going to have a, we're going to have goats so there's the first round of goats that i was talking through earlier um but we're going to have now what we have is goats two uh, so goats one has 10 goats uh, goats two has 20 goats and goats three has also has 20 goats um and the goats again are very can be quite rng heavy um you you want them to go a certain way and sometimes they don't really do it um, I think the best goats is like 15. Um, if we get sub 20, that would be very nice. And um, it can get it can get out of hand very quickly. They were very nice to you. Now they are. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, so because we don't have a wooden sword here, we actually can't break the cage. So we have to get the focus to break the cage. Um, if you see other runs like no save and quit, um, they we don't have a slingshot and we don't have a sword. Um, so you have to do this thing called boko pushing, which is basically running into the model of the boko to push them down the slope to the shop with the bird in it for trill the bird to um, to kill them for you on your behalf. It's very very funny. I would recommend. It is. It. it is. It is a crazy. It is a crazy mechanic. Um, but people are very good at it. It's also actually the standard way. I believe in the HD version <laughs> um, of how they do it. Um, but let's let's pray for a sub twenty goats. Yeah, and while we do go, so we can get a donation or two. Absolutely, thank you very much. We have $10 from Arai Shadow who says, Thank you for doing this amazing event. You are all so awesome. Less than three. And Rewarder Beast also donates $10 and says, If you're going to use that milk in five and a half hours, you should probably put it in the refrigerator. <laughs> thank Thanks, you so Beast. much for your kind donations. That is the most Beast comment I think of. <laughs> that, that really checks out. Um, so... Will the beast there, the person who donated, and um, they are the world record holder for this category. Um, so they have a uh, six, seventeen, eighty. Yes, they are seventeen, eighty. Very, very good. Very, very good. Um, yeah, this this game is quite quite difficult, especially because the run is six and a half, seven, like or even longer. Um, so it is it is quite a difficult run because the, a lot of the run is structured around um, day night cycles. So there's three day-night cycles within kind of middle to late game. Um, and as I said before, the pose in this game only come out at nighttime. 
Um, so the majority of the pose are just kind of around the place, just in the open world. So what we have to do is we want to get to a point and then when it turns nighttime, we want to basically collect all the pose and end up at another point before the night ends. Um, so we're almost we're working off cycles. Um, and if you miss that cycle, then it does become quite difficult. Um, so there'll be the first one will be just after uh, MDH or uh, Midna's Desperate Hour, which has the great piano music, if you know what that is. Um, yeah, so there'll be, there'll be our first day night cycle there, and then it will make a lot more sense that we basically spend a lot of time in the day collecting bugs and getting items, and then we spend the night time getting pose, and then we want to end up at Arbiter's Grounds before before the night is done. Um, so those are those are those are quite interesting parts. Yeah, and funnily enough, I've been running this since early twenty twenty one, but like the route hasn't changed at all. But the week before ESO, they decided to reroute. It's a very yeah, it's a new there's a new reroute. Um saves thirty seconds. Um and it it loads up some of the so one of the day night cycles, the last one that we do, um, is now incredibly difficult. Um and because so there's a bit to give kind of background story to it. Um there is a task being developed for TP one hundred percent. Um so someone in the community is going through and building a task. Um and they were looking for feedback on how to best structure the route and then Conversation started happening, and now we have a new RTA route, um, which is very difficult to hit. But if you do hit it, thirty seconds is thirty seconds. Um, but this route, this route works as well. Um, but now what we're in is we're in the sewers. We're in the sewers of Hyrule Castle, um, and this is our first exposure to Wolflink. Um, so, as I said, Wolflink's speed is a lot better than human speed, um, but then obviously he is limited, and you can't open doors and um, and things like that. So that's where that's where the Twilight Crystal from the Master Sword really comes into effect because you can you can use the fast movement of uh, Wolf Link and then transform and open a door or whatever it might be. Um, so then after this, what we've got is we're going to go back to Ordon. Uh, we have to pick up a sword and a shield from the uh, from some houses, and then we're into Farron, which is our first our first Twilight. Um, so there's three Twilight Zones within this run. So you've got Farron, you've got Elden, and you've got Lanayru. Um And basically, before kind of normality is there, like people are walking around, stuff like that, um, everyone is effectively like a spirit. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to run around the, the region and defeat these little Twilight Bugs, which drop a soul, or drop a tear, I guess. Um, and you need to go through, I don't know how many there are, I think there's like 12, 15, something like that. Um, and so we need to go through and clear all that before we can do a bunch of other stuff. Um, I guess it's also worth noting, just while um, Nuki is going up here, uh, this game, a fair amount of um, optimizations in this game come through uh, basically frame perfect. Uh, so between one action and another action, there's generally a one frame window where you can put in an input. Um, so within the any percent run of this game, there's a trick called Gorge Void, um, which is basically between a cutscene and another cutscene, there's a single frame window, and if you press L and A within that on that frame, uh, you void out and it saves you. It's about a minute. Um, so there's a fair amount of that. So for example, where Nuki came out there, between that cutscene and Midna talking to you, there's a one frame window to do a jump attack, and if you get that jump attack off, you skip the Midna text. Um, so there is there is a lot of them throughout the run. Yeah, there's a um, They're not. Oh, Sorry. Yeah, they're not overly like n noticeable. Like they're kind of it. It happens if you get them. Awesome. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. Um, but just for kind of optimizing and stuff like that, it's definitely it's definitely beneficial. And now we get to see uh, Zelda for the first time for about half a second as we skip the cutscene. Yeah, I was about to say we won't actually get to see her really. No. So, for context, if you've never played this game casually, this is the first time you get to see Zelda. Um, so, Zelda is hiding out up here, um, and we'll come back to her in like an hour and a half. A eh, bit longer, or like two hours. Um, and now, off to Ordon. So, Ordon, where we are here, just where Nuki's about to spawn into, um, in the Any% percent run, has a big sequence break called Sword and Shield Skip, which kind of does what it says on the tin. Uh, you skip getting the sword and the shield. 
Um, we have this uh, this Baldwin that we'll see around the corner, um, our mate Hugo. Um, and basically, what you do is you you push him into a certain spot, um, and then you do two jump attacks back to back. So one of them hits him into the air, and then while he's in the air, you do another jump attack. And because because you're targeting up so high, you jump really far, and basically you jump over a floor trigger into a cutscene trigger. Um, so that is quite a cool trick. It's a very it's it can be quite difficult. It's probably one of the one of the hardest things for new runners to learn. Um, but if you get good at it, it is it is quite a rewarding trick. I think it saves about it's like six minutes or something like that on the run. Yeah, I've never ran into this um, one, but from what I know, uh, everyone hates Hugo. Yeah, Hugo Hugo can be Hugo can be painful because um, what we need him to do is we need him to be in a certain spot and we need him to attack us. But the time at which he attacks us is RNG, so he can just stand there and look at us forever if he wants to. Um, so we have to wait for him to him to attack. Um, I guess a weird thing to note, just while Nuki is in Ordon, um, for some reason in this game, so Wolfink has uh, different speed caps based on what area that, um, he's in. So if you're in Castle Town, it's quite slow. If you're in Hyrule Field, it's really fast. Um, for some reason, in Ordon Village, your speed is also the same as... Um, within Ordon Village, your speed is the same as Hyrule Field. Um, so you kind of just zoom through Ordon for some reason. Um, but we'll see later on when we get to Castle Town that they just really cap uh, Wolfing speed. Um, so we're going to do we're going to do these things called dash cancels, um, which basically if you press A to dash and then you press the B button, I believe it's within ten frames of it, you do an attack. And what that does is it doesn't expire your dash, so you can just keep kind of cycling that through. Um, so you just roll from A to B, A to B, and just keep that going. And that is our fastest way to get through to get through the uh, to Castle Town. And there also it can be beneficial in other uh, kind of in other places. Um, and now we're grabbing we're grabbing our sword, and then we'll be on our way into Farron. And that's where we'll see early master sword. So that is the big sequence break I was talking about before. Um, we have a, a shadow beast called uh, Jamal, as named by the community. Um, and what we, what we want Jamal to do is you want him to stand in a very particular spot. And again, we want him to attack us. Um, and if we time a midnight charge attack, um, it will it will super jump us out of the arena. Um, so Midna, Midna has a charge attack that if you hold B, uh, she creates this circle around you, like a red circle. And effectively, anyone within that circle will get one hit, um, which sounds very overpowered, but it, it serves a purpose. Um, and so what we need to do is we need to use that to manip it in a, in a different way. So I think this is our first Shadow Beast of the run. Yes, that would be correct. <laughs> so there's these portals that spawn throughout the world, um, and these uh, very interesting looking creatures drop out of them. Um, and basically, if you, if you fight all of the Shadow Beasts in the area, you will then get the portal to spawn as a result of that. Um, but what we'll, what we'll see in a second is that you have to you have to kill the last two shadow beasts within a section very quickly. So if you only kill one of them, they do like a scream and spawn back their friends. Um, so you need to kill two of them in very quick succession. But this will all make sense in about 30 seconds. Um, I guess we're going to have a cutscene on the other side of here if there's any donations or anything. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we I just want to actually just let you know about the next bid war that's coming up for Lunastis uh, in the morning. Uh, you can choose between the graphics choice for that run. So, you know, do you prefer your games maybe with a little spicy CRT edge or do you like the more modern look of games these days? You can donate for that bid war to choose how the graphics are going to look. Currently, Retro's in the lead with $10. Modern has nothing on it at the moment, so an $11 donation, you can completely change how that game is going to look. So do please keep those donations coming in. Yeah, please awesome. do. Um, um, sorry, I <laughs> interrupted you there. Um, there you so this here is our first our first day of Shadow Beats fight that I was explaining before. Um, so what Nuki's going to do is she's going to intentionally fail the fight um, for uh, for mid to then correct us. So basically, if we if we fight two of them, um, we'll then see that they respawn. They're they're not liking you. There we go. So now we'll see if they will. 
yeah, quick, quick spinning in this game is basically if you spin the analog stick, um, you can't go too slow, but you can't go too fast. Um, and press B, you're able to do a faster spin attack. But this is the example of the mid to charge attack. So what you need to do is you need to kill those last two in very quick succession after each other. Um, I see someone in the chat, by the way, just because I have it up on on a screen, asking about your 3D marathon. Um, and asking if you did it all in one sitting, which I believe you I did, did but you took a slight break. With no sleep. Uh, yes, so my longest break in there was, I think, eight minutes. But the timer kept going. Oh, wow. Yeah, so wait, wait till wait till um, TOTK gets released and we'll, we'll chuck an, chuck another 100% um, into there. Yep, that's the plan. Um, so these are our Twilight Bugs. So if you see on the right hand side there, there's like a, an empty vessel and just a bunch of kind of empty circles. And what we need to do is that each bug will give us a tier to fill that up. And when that is filled up, then we can, then the Twilight is cleared. Um, so it's also kind of important to note that you can hear when the tears spawn from the bugs that there's this like dinging noise. Um, what we do in some instances is that we will, we, we fight the bugs, but then what we do is we leave them there. Um, because as long as there's a ding, they've kind of spawned into the area. So we can come back later on on like a better path and pick them up. Um, so you will see Nuki kill some bugs and then just run away, but we will, we'll be back later for them. But also, um, I think the next ones like they take a few seconds to actually be grabbable as well. Just skip that part a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually a difference between the uh, HD version and the SD version. So in the HD version, when you kill the bugs, you like the second they pop, you can pick it up. But within this version, when you when you kill the bugs, it takes a couple of seconds to pop, and then when it pops, it has it's like two seconds, three seconds of effectively like invincibility frames. Um, so you just can't pick them up at that point. So it makes more sense rather than waiting around to run away and we'll come back later and grab them all. Uh, I do want to go back to quick swinging for a second. 100% um, runners generally have a bad time with it. And because of that, the Water Beast, Water Record Holder, we made, we mentioned earlier, get a nice little song for it. Yeah, it has a couple of songs. There's, uh, there's one for Hugo as well. Oh, really? I um, for Sword and Shield Scope. Yeah, it's um, it's a cover of um, "Behind These Hazel Eyes" by by Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> um, so th this here will be an example of Nuki waiting for the uh, for the bugs to spawn. Uh, sorry, to kind of for the tier to spawn, uh, because we have no need to come back through here, uh, because the uh, the purple fog below us, uh, we can actually run through it if we use our lantern. Um, so we'll see that we have to run back through Farron again. Um, so there is a there is a second time of coming through. Um, but now it is time to go into EMS. So our master sword is this one. Um, so what you'll see is you'll see uh, there's a shadow beast arena, and then uh, we're going to pick our mate on the left. Um, and if we fail it, we have to kill one of the other ones to get him to respawn. Uh, but hopefully it'll make sense when you see it now. Perfect. Yeah, there we go. First try. Um, so it's worth noting there that basically that is so that was Jamal. Um, and we have uh, he can do two different types of uh, tricks. Sorry, two different types of swings. He can do a fast swing or he can do a slow swing. Uh, we need it to be a slow swing. Uh, well, you don't technically need it, but it it's it's frame perfect. It's basically, frame. you need it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's ridiculous. I've I've only seen Tass do it. Um. So yeah, you need him to do a slow swing so that you can stand in the corner, and then when his hand is over his head, um, you basically do the jump attack, and you're you're effectively targeting his hand, um, and that will be the super jump. So we'll see a couple of them within the run. There's a really cool one within Snow Peak, uh, about three to four hours in. That's really cool, um, and yeah, it's quite it's quite a good mechanic. It lets us get to places that we shouldn't really be able to. Um, and this is also our first Howling Stone of the run. Um, That's part of the game. So. But the, I think they're all remakes from like Ocarina of Time and stuff like that. I think they're like, re like a lot of them reference. Yeah, yeah. A lot of them are like songs from other from previous Zelda games. 
Um, but basically, what those Howling Stones do is they spawn a Golden Wolf. Um, and so we need to talk to the Golden Wolf, and that will give us um, that will give us our hidden skills. Um, so part of the Hondo route is that we need to do uh, get all seven skills. Uh, one of them is actually mandatory to defeat the game anyway. So there's a finish, uh, like ending blow, which is like when you jump up in the air and like like land your sword into someone. Um, if you actually don't get that, you can't defeat the final Ganon fight. You can knock him to the floor and he can be sitting there, but then you're kind of just stuck, like just holding hands. Uh, there's not too much you can do. Um, and this here is Skull Kid. So this is our, our, our first Skull Kid chase. Um, we're going to have a second one later on. Uh, but basically, we need to run around Sacred Grove uh, chasing the Skull Kid. And then uh, he will bring us to a, a puzzle. And then behind the puzzle will be the Master Sword. Um, so we're, what, 30, 30 odd minutes into the run. And we've basically gotten something that would take like casual players a, lo a very long time to get to. Quite a number of hours, so... Yeah, it's quite it's quite late on. So there's the the main two kind of dungeon collectibles, I guess, are we got few shadows and we've got mirror shards. Um, so few sh few shadows are uh, the first three dungeons, I believe, and then mirror shards are a later three. Um, so we need the few shadows to put together Midna's helmet. I don't know if there's a technical term for it, but the helmet. Um, and then we need the mirror shards later on to open up the uh, the portal effectively to the Palace of Twilight. Um, so they kind of break them up into small groups. So we have we have categories on the leaderboards for all mirror shards and all few shadows, and that's basically like it, it's it's almost like a dungeon rush, like kind of go between just dungeon to dungeon and get the stuff that you need. Um, and that is our skill kit fight completed. So we have a we have a puzzle coming up after this. If you've ever played this game casually as a kid, you will know that this is an awful puzzle. Uh, it doesn't. It's it's quite confusing. You need to basically get two statues to land on exact spots, um, but the input you do impacts both of them. That will make more sense when you see it. Um, but thankfully, as speedrunners, we know we know what the pattern is, and it is always the same. Um, th this is kind of an auto scroll if we have any, any um, donations or admin stuff. Uh, no further donations at the moment, but I'd love to tell you about our wonderful charity, Alzheimer Fondon. So they're doing some incredible work, obviously, on uh, Alzheimer's disease. However, unfortunately, there is currently no cure for it. Um, but current treatments can temporarily slow the worsening of the dementia symptoms and improve quality of life for those with Alzheimer's and their caregivers. And as we speak, potential antibody treatments and vaccines are being developed. So to help the scientists complete their quest for a cure, they do need more funds. So please, everyone, do help us beat this disease by donating now. 100% of the proceeds to this are going towards the charity. That includes not just your donations, but all the revenue from Twitch subscriptions and your bitches in chat as well. Yeah, awesome. Um, so this here is the puzzle I was talking about before. Um, so what we'll see here is that Nuki will do a, a howl, and then these statues will effectively come to life. Um, and behind here will be our Master Sword. Uh, I guess it's also important to note that when we first entered Sacred Grove, uh, Nuki made a save file. Um, so I don't know if you saw that, that just before the Howling Stone, Nuki made a save file. Um, and so we'll actually need that later on. So you use all three save files within this game. Um, so you make one within Ordon, you make one at the start of Sacred Grove, and then you have your third file, which is your playing file. Um, and we use the we use the other files for a trick known as early boss flags. Um, and kind of the easiest way to explain early boss flags is that before each boss in this game, there's a cutscene in the place. Um, and when you skip through that cutscene, the game then goes into a state of okay, this is a boss fight. Um, and so what we do is we set up these other files in spots that we can trigger boss fights and then reset the console, but then the flag transfers over to our playing file. Um, so what we'll do is within here, this skull, the Skull Kid fight there, and that is considered a boss fight. So what we'll be able to do later on is we'll be able to do the Howling Stone to trigger the Skull Kid fight, and then just quit out that file, go into our main file, and we'll be able to access boss fights earlier than we should be able to. 
Um, so we'll see that happen in lake bed. Uh, because in this run, we don't do a whole lot within lake bed. Because um, it is our only dungeon with a boss key skip. Um, so all the rest of them, all the bosses are stuck behind a big door with a lock on it. Um, but lake bed, it's a hole in the ground. Um, so what we're able to do is we can actually clip into it. Um, which we'll see, see in about an hour's time, which is really good. Um, and now we have our Master Sword. And we'll also see the Twilight Crystal in a second. That will make sense if you've never seen that before. Um, because I've played through this game casually and I didn't know what that was. Uh, but now it now it makes a lot more sense. Um, and this is also this is a two minute unskippable cutscene. So we have a we have a fair amount of that throughout the run. Um, there's one later on when we're entering Hyrule Castle. It's also a two minute unskippable cutscene. Um, we can we can skip a lot, uh, but we can't. There is there is some that we have to sit through, unfortunately. But that there is the Twilight Crystal. Um, so that's what lets us transform between uh, human and wolf whenever we want. Um, so we'll see that a fair bit coming up. Yeah, and one thing yeah, about these longer runs at home is uh, cutscenes and routing is definitely, or bathroom break routing is definitely a big part of it. I feel like for most runners. Yeah. So so this run this run doesn't have any like scheduled breaks in it. Um, but there are a couple of cutscenes throughout the run that are long enough that you could dip out if you needed to. Um, so I know people use this one. They use the Morpheal, uh, post Morpheal. Um, and also uh, there'll be a cutscene later on when we're doing Ilya's memory. Um, and that's like a minute unskippable cutscene. So we, we, try to, we try to make it work, um, even though there is no kind of um, guaranteed breaks, I guess. Or like set in stone in the rules. Mm -hmm. um, but now we're back to Farron. So what you'll see here is, um, if you can see on the map there, all the white dots are the Twilight Tears. Um, so these are the two bugs that Nuki left earlier. So she can just run through and grab them. Uh, we're going to have two on the other side of the fence. And then when we go through this tunnel, we're going to do something that looks a bit weird. Um, if you've ever played this game before, you'll know that there's normally a monkey. Um, that we hang out with, and the monkey uses a like a stick with a lantern on it to clear the fog. Um, by using our lantern, we can we can like, we can clear the physical properties of the fog, but the fog still is there. So we can go through it as if the fog isn't there, but it looks like it is, um, which isn't the best explanation in the world, but it'll make more sense here. Um, did you? Oh, you must have got the other one right. I guess so. Uh, yeah. That royally confused me. Yeah, there's yeah two here and two and um two here and then two outside of Forest Temple. Yeah. Um. So what you can see Nuki do? Oh, that gonna put me on the other side. Sorry. That's gonna put you oh yeah back God. here. Yeah. Um. So what so what's happening here is when Nuki is using the lantern, um, it's clearing the fog within the game, but obviously you can still see it. Um, so that lets us just run through the fog rather than go the long way around. And there's the two other bugs, and then we've got two more outside of Forest Temple. Um, I guess it's also important to note that there is a lot of rupee routing within this game. Um, so at the start, our wallet is kept at 300. Uh, when we give a bug to Agatha, we get a 600 wallet. And by the time we've given all the bugs to her, we have an 1,000 wallet. Um, so a lot of our routing goes into having a full wallet, emptying it in some way, and then filling it back up gradually. Uh, because there's a there's a guy called Charlo um, who hangs out in Castletown. And he, he wants 1,000 rupees for a heart piece. Um, but obviously our wallet isn't big enough for that most of the time. So we go back to him in increments to... Um, to, to do it and it's the, it's the same with Agatha so the person who we give the golden bugs to um, she gives us 50 rupees per bug and then if you give her a pair she'll give you an extra she'll give you a hundred um, but obviously if your wallet can't fit it then you're just kind of wasting rupees because um, this game does have the functionality that if you if you had a max wallet and you open up a chest um, it'll say you don't have any space please put it back uh, so we don't really want that to happen. Nice backflip. So that's an, that's an example there of um, 
uh, a frame perfect. So mid no normally talks to you there, but because Nuki was mashing A when the cutscene ended, um, she was able to backflip out of it, saves a couple of seconds. Um, yeah, just kind of a, a nice thing to get. Um, and now we're off to our Golden Wolf. So this one, this Golden Wolf is going to teach us um, Ending Blow, which is that trick I talked about before uh, that we'll need for Ganon. Um, so we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll get seven of these across the run, uh, with the last one being a thing called Great Spin. Um, and so what Great Spin is, is that if you're on, if you're on full health and you do a spin attack, it does a very, very large and powerful spin attack. Um, and we need that later on for um, Cave of Ordeals and just general fighting enemies, to be honest. Yeah, and I'm not sure how this impacts the routing, but the Golden Wolves, it's not like per location has a hidden skill. It's like it goes in order. So like if I got the one at Castletown or something, it would still give me ending blow. And I think that's what any percent does. Yeah, so it, the, fir the first one will always be ending blow. So you can get either this golden wolf, you can get a different one, um, but it will always be ending blow. And then when you get it, it will always spawn you in North Farron. Um, so that's used in any percent routing because uh, we only get one hidden skill in that. But that's an example of what it'd be like. So that's actually how we finish the game. So th the time on this um, on this run will finish when we do an like we ending blow uh, Ganon. And now we're off to Forest Temple. Um, so our first dungeon of the run, I believe there's 10 dungeons in the game. If you include Cave of Ordeals. If you include Cave um, Ordeals. Uh... Yeah, so what we got in here is we're going to see an interesting trick when we go in here called Back in Time. Um, I'm, I'll be quiet for a sec just to let Nuki hit it. Yeah, it's, it's a bit more safe, but it's okay. That looks good to me. It's good to meet you. Um, so what happened there was... It is a it's a frame perfect uh, void out with a frame perfect reset, um, and basically so where Nuki is right there on top of the bridge is um, what we see on the title screen. So if you load up the game and you let it run, it'll just kind of it'll show you a link along the bridge. Um, but what we do is that if we void on the same frame that we reset the console, um, the game doesn't know where to spawn you effectively. Um, so rather than choosing the title screen or voiding, it voids you onto the title screen. Um, and what that does is it triggers um, those early boss flags I was talking about before. Um, so if you've ever played Forest Temple, you have to go collect a bunch of different monkeys. Um, so they will let you get across the bridge. Uh, but now we have no reason to. We can just go straight to the mini boss and get our boomerang, which will then be our kind of our main um, exploit in the run. Yeah, that's where the real fun begins. Yeah, the boomerang is just the the best item in this game by far. Um, it can just it can do so much. Um, so what we're seeing here is we only have one monkey. Um, and basically when we open the door after this, um, all the other monkeys will just spawn out of thin air. Um, so we can go over to Ook, uh, who is our mini boss of the dungeon. Um, so Ook does uh, Ook has a bunch of pillars in his room. Um, and what you can do is he will always jump at least twice, uh, but he has no cap on how many times he jumps. Uh, so we'll just kind of we'll just kind of see how he goes. A two hop is always nice. Uh, but now we have our monkey chain, so we can get across to the other side. I went quiet for a second there just to make sure he didn't void out. Yeah. Because um, if you. If you press A at the wrong time there and you fall off from the monkeys, um, that's quite a big issue because you have to go and redo your boss flags and stuff. Um, but here is Ook. So this is our, our boomerang boss. How many hops are we going to get? One, two, three. Eh, a three's not bad. I'd, I'd take a three. Um, and because we have uh, the Master Sword, we do a lot more damage than if we only had the Wooden or the Ordon Sword. Um, 
so we can one cycle a lot of bosses that we shouldn't be able to. Yeah, I got nine in the uh, last and then, one, so I'll take it. Nine is nine is pretty good. Yeah, nine is it, it. It loses you a surprising amount of time. I don't know what the time per hop is. Um, I think someone's got. I think someone's cleared twenty. I think my worst is like fifteen. Um, so yeah, it can be. You're just kind of at the mercy of the game at that point. Um, but now we'll have our boomerang, which you'll see quite early on, and um, how we can effectively soar through the air with it. Um, as I said, this is this is probably the main reason why the GameCube version is faster than the Wii version, uh, because the Wii version doesn't have this ver it doesn't have this um, exploit. Uh, so if we do a save warp here, so just saving and resetting the game, this will just put us at the start of the dungeon rather than having to backtrack. Um, so we do that quite. I think we do that almost in every. We don't do it in every dungeon, but we do it in quite a lot of them. Yeah, it's not every dungeon, but. Safe yeah, you don't do it in gore mines. But yeah, we do it. We do it in a fair amount. And so same thing. You no, know, normally in the second half of a forest temple, we have to save a bunch of monkeys. Um, and the monkeys make this massive chain. There's like nine or ten of them. Um, but because we can do the LJA, we can actually just jump over the gap. Um, so, yeah, we can... Uh, like a far, far temple, which should take quite a long time, can take like ten minutes to full clear it. Like, it, it goes by very, very fast. Uh, but we'll see our first LJA here, I believe, if you, if you go for it. I do. Yeah. So, what you see is that when we can throw the rang, and then presses jump attack. She's then cleared over to the other side. Nice. And there'll be a, there'll be a couple of massive ones later on that we'll we'll see. Yeah, they get real cinematic. They do. There's a trick in any percent which we won't see in this run uh, called rupee roll. Um, and so at uh, Kakariko Gorge, um, you basically do an LJA over the gorge. Um, so you just jump from one side of it to the other off of a hill um, and that is probably most that's probably the most cinematic one um, and what we're going to do here is there is so that's one of our heart pieces collected we have to get one more heart piece which will be behind this deku like down here um, so if we go here and we pick up I'm a doing the pot a pot yeah i had to i had to check there's there's about 10 different variations on how to do this uh, but if we drop the pot uh, we're able to just kind of bonk in behind it. Um, and now we've got both of our heart pieces. And now we just need the boss key. And then we can go to well, to the boss fight. To the Ababa. So I believe I believe every dungeon has two heart pieces. I think that's the rule. I think so, yeah. So in each dungeon. Yeah, I think in every dungeon you need to get two heart pieces. You need to get a boss key in every dungeon apart from uh, Lake Bed. Um, and then... Temple of Time has bugs outside of it, but I don't think this bugs in any other dungeon. I guess Forest Temple, technically. What am I doing? So there's actually some quite cool movement here. Um, so rather than climbing up on the wall, what we can do is we can line up with this little fence post and just hop over. Um, it's surprisingly forgiving, but it is a, it is quite a good way to do it. And now we have the boss key. So the way the boss fight in this dungeon works is, um, so our, our boss in this is Diabava. Um, and the way it works is actually Ook who gave us the Rang, the, the monkey from before. Um, what what happens is that he swings back and forth in the in the kind of boss room, and he has a, a he has a bomb between his legs. And what we do is we target the bomb, we target the enemy, and then. Um, that hits, but what we can do is we can actually manipulate the time of a bomb uh, to do a trick called Ooplus. So no longer needing Ooplus. Sorry, no longer needing Oop. Um, so what we do is that the time of bombs don't tick on during cutscenes. So what we do is we store up two bombs on land, um, and we uh, we we then trigger the cutscene. And then what happens is we can do kind of two quick hits on on Diababa. It will make more sense in a minute. But this is what I mean when we don't need the monkey chain. Uh, instead, we can just LJA over here. 
go up a couple of steps. And then LJ over here. And then we're at the end of the dungeon. So now we've just got the boss fight. So I might be quiet for Dia Baba because I don't know if you use the audio cue. Um, I don't know if I do either. But <laughs> I, want to I guess we'll find out. I don't think I do. I will just explain here. So the bomb on the left and the bomb on the right, um, those are the two that Nuki's going to store uh, store at her feet. So we'll keep those two. And then we throw the third into that one. And now, while this cutscene is triggering, those bombs are just sitting there and do not, um, they won't expire. Uh, so what we'll actually see here is we'll see them uh, just when the camera pans down. And what we're going to do is we're going to use both of these bombs really quickly to, to basically one cycle the Ababa. So that's one hit. We throw the other bomb to the side. And that's two hits. So if, if you don't do Ook this there, um, you have to wait for Ook to start swinging. Um, and he, he waits a while to even rock up, and then there's a cutscene and stuff. So that saves about 45 seconds against um, using Ook. Um, but there we go. That is our, our first dungeon done. Um, also important to know, I guess, that in each, uh, in each dungeon, we always collect the heart container. Because at the end of it, we need, I think we have 20 yes. hearts, I believe. Um, yeah, so we need to collect the heart container after every dungeon. Um, in the any percent run, they actually only collect one of them, so you normally finish the game with about four hearts. Um, but in this, obviously, we need all of them. So yeah, there is, there's forty five heart pieces, I believe. Um, yeah, so we'll collect a fair amount throughout the run. Uh, and now after this, we are off to Elden. Um, so as I said, Elden's our second Twilight. Um, so basically, it's around Kakariko Village and Death Mountain. Um, and what we want to do is going to go around. It, it's a lot of... Elden has a lot of little sections to it. So there's a lot of going into houses. Um, and so there's a lot of kind of in and out very quickly. Um, but within Elden, we'll see a trick called Bomb House Skip. Um, which, again, will make more sense when you see it. Um, but basically, there's a there's a bug up on a hill by uh, above the bomb shop. Um, and normally what happens is you, you run over to the bug, you scare it into the house, and then you have to blow up the house to get the bug out. Well, sorry, no. You try to burn the bug out, but it's a bomb house, so the fire causes the bombs to explode. Um, but what we do is we perform a trick where basically we jump around the where the bug spawns um, and go to it from another angle, and that allows us to basically intercept the bug. Um... And by doing that, the bug dies, and the game says, oh, well, the bug is dead. The cutscene must have played. You're all good to go. So we never have to go inside the house. Um, so that'd be quite cool. That'll be 10 minutes time, give or take. Um, it's also noting here, and uh, Nuki is going to do a thing called Mailman Skip. Um, so there is a mailman in this game that runs around in very interesting shorts. Um, and basically... Uh, if you run into certain triggers, um, the mailman will come over to say, hey, you got some mail, have a bit of a chat with you. Um, but there, by doing an LJA there, we can jump over the trigger. Um, so we actually only need to talk to the mailman. I think we talked to him twice within this route. Um, so, because it's a requirement within 100% to get a letter, not necessarily get all of the letters. Um, so we'll get some letters from him after TOT. Uh, Temple of Time, sorry. And we're into into Elden. Well, the region of Elden. Yeah, the beginning of Elden. Um, so I guess it's worth... Go ahead, sorry. Go. Uh, I think I think we're going to explain the exact same thing. Um, at the start here, there's going to be a cutscene. And this is where that trick called Gorge Void is. Uh, the single frame A-press um, that you use in 80%. But in this, we spawn the bridge because we need it later on. Um, I think that may have been the same 
Yeah, Sam, wait, you were going with it, Nikki. I was just going to yeah. say, it's just a Shadow Beast fight in the bridge, and we might have time for donations. Thank you very much. We have $10 from Kessinchu, who says, Second donation of today. I first donated to the save file named Ruffle Bricks, but when I saw trans rights as an option for Harvest Moon's dog name, I had to donate again. Good luck to Nuki Dog. Cheers from Brazil. And that brings the trans rights name for Name the Dog for Harvest Moon up to $20 there. And we also have $5 from Ellie Saraptor. It says, Nuki is a wonderful speedrunner and friend, and I'm happy to see her on the big stage. Proud of you. And that one has gone to the Hades Dash only, the Extreme Measures for Incentive. Thank you so much. Yeah, I guess I guess while we have a few seconds, just because of um, because of the like, just we have to spawn a bridge here, and there's an unskippable cutscene. Um, yeah, and it, it, I guess it is worth noticing uh, noting that obviously Nuki, you're in person, um, and I am doing commentary from Australia, so I'm kind of 16 hours ahead of you or something like that at this point. Um, yeah, I just thought of that when someone donated from Brazil, I was like, it is very international. It is very funny how it works out as well. This is quite comfortable for you. Yeah. It's like what? 1 p.m. Yeah, yeah, trying to trying to figure out time zones. You're like, oh, it's it's two o'clock my time, and I'm like, okay, that is some point on Sunday. I was gonna say you picked the good time zone, D-bag. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the thing. It's one in the afternoon here. It's like lunchtime. Um, there's a single perf a single frame uh, jump there. Um, to get between the cutscene and the text. Um, but it didn't get it. It's not, it's Wait, not a huge uh, issue. There is. <laughs> News to me. Yeah, yeah. If there's a there's a there's a jump attack and it stops Midna from talking to you. It sa it saves like, not even two seconds, I'd say. Yeah, it's about to say. Um, and now what we're going to have on the other side here is we're going to have a Shadow Beast fight and then we'll get the vessel for Elden. Um, so the first part in Elden that we're going to see is uh, a thing called Well Clip. Uh, it's kind of is what it says on the tin. It is a clip into a well. Um, so because we're not supposed to be wolf at this point, they didn't, they didn't code it so that Human Link couldn't clip through it. So what we can do is we can side hop through the top of the well which should normally be locked shut. Um, it's pretty pretty easy trick, um, but it lets us access the sanctuary basement earlier than we should be able to. Um, but there's our vessel. So again, we'll have it on the right-hand side, 15 slots, I think. Is it 50? Counting it now. You can count now. It now. Is, uh, it's 16. I did not know that. I think that there's less in the HD version. I think there's 12 I think there's in the HD 12, version. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what we see here is there's a bug over here. Um, when Nuki kills that, uh, she'll now wait for the ding. And when the ding happens, you can hop into the well. Um, so now when we come out of the well on the other side, uh, that bug will just have died there, and we can just collect the collect the tier. Uh, but there are three of them down here, which you can get in a very cool kind of jump. Uh, sorry, charge attack combination. And that's that. They do run. They, they love to scamper. Um, we will actually come. The point we're in right now, this kind of sanctuary basement, we will come back into later, and um, for a big sequence break, um, known as early city in the sky. Um, so within this game, to get to city in the sky, you have to run around the map and collect these sky characters. Uh, you have to move statues and all this. Uh, but we can actually just clip through the statue and skip it. It's probably it, um, like I'd say it's got to say like 20 30 minutes because it's a lot like it's a long time yeah to go get all the sky characters um what we can do here is if we bonk on this wall to the left um this bug's actually just gonna run towards us which is lovely that bug was very kind yeah so it is interesting to note that like when we're in here it looks like we're just going through collecting the bug um, but all these spots will play a role later on. So where where Nuki was just there is Malamart. Um, so Malamart is where we spend a lot of our money in this run. That fence is not having it, is it? <laughs> Alright, I give up. Okay, yeah. Um, so Malamart we spend a lot of our money in. So there is Gorobizo, um, who would like us to spend uh, a thousand to open up Malamart. Uh, we need to buy the Hylian Shield, we need to buy the Hawkeye, and then we need to give an extra 200. So we spend, I can't math off the top of my head, I think that's 1600. 
Um, so we need to spend a lot of rupees throughout the um, the last day night cycle. It's a lot of it's a lot of rupee management. And we have one more bug hiding up upstairs. That um, so that died. bonk that Nuki did was intentional. Um, so if you bonk the cupboard downstairs or the the kitchen bench, I guess, um, it scares the bug upstairs so that it's not hiding in the corner. I guess I, um, I get, oh. the wall I bonked, I guess, didn't knock it off the, the wall. Because it was still up there. Yeah, that bug that that bug is very strange. Um, it's also kind of worth to note that basically you saw there when Nuki went for that yellow, um, she went to side hop through it. Um, so within this game, if you collect anything more than a green rupee, so you collect a blue, uh, a blue, a yellow, a red, uh, a purple, or whatever it might be, um, the first time you collect it within um kind of that that play will give you a text prompt saying like oh you got 20 rupees uh, but if you side hop through it you won't get that text uh, but now that nuki has gotten the old text she won't get it for the next rupee i just to clarify i didn't say the kitchen hedge the kitchen bench the, like a bench top i did not say the, ki the kitchen hedge doesn't everyone have a kitchen hedge Um, what we have here is we have uh, the last one before bomb has skip. Um, so there'll be one hiding behind the cupboard here. Um, and when we get that one, we go outside. Do you go for wolf or do you go for human bomb has skip? Go for human. Okay, so th there's there's two methods here. One's human, one's wolf. And um, the wolf one is faster, but if you fail it, it loses like 30, 40 seconds. Um, so what you're going to see Nuki do here is she's going to transform. Just gonna do an LJ over to the other side of the that kind of this little dip. Um and then she's gonna transform again. And then you'll see this bug run into frame. Um and this is the bug that basically we run around it to the other side so that it can't get into the house. When we walk into the house, the house disintegrates, and we can collect all the tears on the inside. Um it's worth noting that that house, even though it has disappeared visually, it still has the same properties of the house. Um, so if you don't, uh, if you don't do correct movement, you actually get crushed by the house. Um, so even though it looks like it's gone, it's not really gone. Um, and then this is our last bug, and then we're off to Death Mountain, where we have a Howling Stone, a Shadow Beast fight, and three more bugs. This bug is really this annoying. This bug is quite rude. Yeah, there is a consistent manip, I think, but it's, yeah. Nice. 40 rupees at this point is pretty good. You're you're really good on rupee count at the moment. Um, so what we want to do is from now till um, after Temple of Time, we want to get 600 rupees uh, because we need to make our first donation to Malamart. Uh, so rupee management will play a role throughout the game that basically we need to get 600, we then need to get another 600, and then another 600. Um, so there's three waves of that. Um, and then by the end of Cave of Ordeals, we need to get 800 or 850 rupees, depending on what uh, what rupee routing you choose. Yeah, before that first Malamart visit, we do donate uh, 200 to Charlo. Yeah, so we give yeah 200 to Charlo, and then later on in the game, we give him 800, and just before we go into Hyrule. So it's actually one of the last things we do. Uh, so what we do here is we wait for the bug to pop, and then when the bug pops, you can then do the Howling Stone. Um, so now this bug will be dead when we come out of the Howling Stone. <laughs> they, are, they are quite lenient in terms of, in terms of following the... Uh, yes, yeah. Oh my god, I actually failed it. Oh, that, that, no, that didn't work. <laughs> yeah, really testing the limits of it. The hardest, they're like the howling stones are always consistent. So if you go, if you go to a certain howling stone, it will always be the same like rhythm or beat. I don't kind of know how to explain it. Uh, but there is one in Hidden Village, um, which is the hardest one by far. Oh yeah. It's just it's it's ridic it's ridiculously long. It's also the best one though. It is. It's fantastic. Um, I think that one looks great. Spin, I believe. Um, and then I, I guess it's actually probably just with kind of a little bit of downtime, it's good to explain what we have coming up after this. Um, 
so we're gonna have a a very glitchy cutscene, which I will warn you about before we before we get into that, because it is uh, it is a bit of a rave. Um, and then we will have a uh, bow wrestling. Um, so if you have played this before, you know that there's Mayor Bow, who is the mayor of Ordon, the guy who's got like tusks in his face. Um, and so Bow, you basically go back to Bow to understand how he like got respected by the Gorons. Um, and then he tells you he effectively used iron boots, uh, so we have to wrestle Bo for the iron boots. Um, but the thing with Bo is that it's a massive game of rock, paper, scissors. Um, so we do a move, and then we hope Bo does a move, and then that's just kind of how it goes. And we basically we're just kind of at the mercy of Bo. Um, but what we want to do is we want to be we want to mash at 12 mashes per second to get the best uh, chance of pushing them off. So if you get a if you get a slap on bow, and then you mash at twelve mashes per second, you will one cycle him, uh, so it will just make it a lot faster. Uh, but bow is sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say to say that um, bow like yeah, if there's not too much we can do. We can kind of hope it goes the right way, um, but it can range from being perfect to losing you a minute, minute and a half. It does yeah, it kind of has no no limits. Yeah, I was gonna ask, are you the one who described it as a uh, rock paper scissors? Yeah, rock paper. Yeah, big game of rock paper scissors. Because there's basically in the so there's two phases of bow. There is the first phase where basically he can either slap you, he can push you, or he can sidestep you. Um, and I think that's effectively a fifty-fifty. And then in the uh, second phase, he can only slap you or push you. He can't. Uh, sorry, he can't do nothing. Uh, so the second phase is harder. Um, but yeah, if it's been decomped and there's a bunch of numbers around it, which I won't bore you with, but basically, um, just try your best, you know, just, <laughs> just, just give it a crack. Uh, but thankfully, because of a trick we see later on, we don't also need to wrestle the Goron. So we actually get into Goron Mines through this really interesting thing called Karo TD, um, which I could talk about forever, um, uh, but I'll kind of wait till, wait till we get there. Um, it is worth noting that just after Nuki warps uh, out of Death Mountain here, uh, there's going to be a cutscene coming up. Uh, if, you don't, if you're not a fan of flashing lights or shouldn't be looking at flashing lights, I'd recommend you look away for a minute and we can tell you, we can tell you uh, when to come back. Because um, there's a cutscene coming up where basically we shouldn't be able to be wolf at this point um, and we need to tame Epona. And now, now that we are wolf, it does a thing where it tries to map... Um, it, try, it tries to effectively map Wolf Link's textures to Human Link's like, body model, um, which obviously isn't one-to-one. -one. Um, so the textures kind of fly around a little bit. Uh, you can't really see what's going on, but thankfully we don't we don't have many inputs. Yeah, so that cuts in in about 20 seconds. Yeah, 15, give 20. or take. And it, it is quite an interesting cutscene. It's like if you pick up Master Sword as human, um, but yeah, you'll see here that he's not exactly how he should be. Yeah, so last call here with the but, yeah. uh, but thankfully, uh, the inputs that we do here are always consistent. So it's always left, right, left, right. Um, so that is that is good. It is crazy how much it just gets the random, like, massive white and black um, lines across the screen. Things wrong here. That's how I remember my casual playthrough. I just realized now he's actually floating above the horse. He's floating above Epona. He's not even on the back of Epona. Um, and now what we're off to do is we're off to uh, Ordon. So we have to go back to Ordon again um, to get a uh, our second trick. So we're going to learn Shield Bash, which doesn't really serve much of a purpose in the run, unfortunately. Um, do, wait, do, can you do, do, you do LHS, bed. Long Helm Slither? I do that, yeah. Or I'm going to try. Okay, so we'll see. It's really good. It's, it, there is, there's this trick that got found uh, within the last kind of two to three months uh, through Reddit. Um, and basically, you can do these really cool front flips over enemies um, to in two different scenarios. Um, and the Shield Bash basically feeds into Helm Splitter, which we need for that. I actually, actually, yeah, we do need, we do need Gem um, Shield Bash for Lake, for Lake Bed, you are right. 
We need it for um the the void out. Yeah. Do you mind if I quickly jump in for thirty seconds? Yeah, go ahead. Just want to let you know as we go past 3 a.m. here in Malmo, Sweden, that is going to be the end of my reader shift. I'm going to be handing over to Zet. So, Nuki, good luck with the rest of the run. I hope it goes well. And the next voice you will hear as a reader will be Zet. Thank you, Thank Hans. you very much. Thanks, Zet. Uh, so this here is Shield Bash. Um, so, yeah, not much to it. It basically stuns out enemies. Um, we, don't, we don't really use it too much throughout the run. Um, but what's actually quite nice about some of the uh, hidden skills is that we use them for their movement, but not for their combat. Um, so we're going to learn a trick later called Backslice, which as a, as a fighting mechanic doesn't really serve a huge purpose. Um, but for movement and stuff, it is quite good. It gets us to a couple of places we should be able to. Um, so that is, that is quite nice. Um, so now we're into Ordon. We have an 100 rupee to grab because uh, we need a bit more money. And then we have uh, a bit of a bit of mashing, and then goats. I forgot about that. Then we have then we have more goats, because it's just a massive RNG segment. Yeah, I love that the developers thought one round of goats wasn't enough. They're like, let's have three, because I I think it's like in a casual playthrough you have to defeat the defeat, um, you have to herd the goats within three minutes. I think it is. Whereas, like, for speedrunners, they get it within, like, 20 seconds or whatever. So, like, when you talk to Bado, is that his name? Um, when you talk to him, he's all like, oh, my God, you did it 2 minutes 40 faster than last time. Yeah. Um, so there's a big, a lot of text ma text box mashing here and then a lot of mashing mashing. Um, so what Nuki's going to try and do is she's going to try and slap Bo, and then she's going to... Um, Try to push him off the edge of the ring, um, but yeah, we will see. We will see if he chooses to be nice. Surely, with my bad RNG in the beginning of the run, it'll be a little better now. Uh, it, it you either need a good bow or you need a sub twenty goats. You need something to kind of tilt like tilt the odds in your favor. All right, see how we go. I'm so not used to mashing yep. <laughs> nails because I got my nails done not too long ago. They like conflict. I couldn't imagine that. That could have been worse. That that's uh, that's that's bow one done. Yeah, I could have been a lot worse. But that's the easier one. That could have been a lot worse. Yeah, people have a lot of um different mashing techniques. This took me forever to figure out how to one cycle them. I just can't mash quick enough. This one is the harder one. Too. All right. oh, I thought we could get you, you can sometimes stand there and just slap each other ten times in a row just for fun All right. Wow, that was that was brave going for the slap there. I never I never slap phase two because I think it's it's got like a one in four chance or something But that could have been a whole lot worse could have been I'll take that And now what we've got is our iron boots um so the iron boots here are actually, they're actually quite cool just for optimizing stuff. So obviously if you're jumping off something, if you put on the iron boots, uh, you fall faster, which is great. Um, so we've got a trick coming up in a few minutes called Pillar Clip. Um, and so if to get into Lake Bed in a casual playthrough, you need to get the Zora armor, which helps us breathe. Well, sorry, it doesn't help us. It lets us breathe underwater. Um, and what you need to do is you need to sink to the bottom of Lake Hylia and you need to basically blow up the entrance and enter through. Um, but what we can do using the boots is we can actually sink down and just have the tiniest amount of air left um, to clip through a pillar into the loading zone. Um, so it's quite a scary trick. Each time you fail it, it loses about a minute. Um, but it is, it is a, it's an awesome sequence break. Yeah, the iron boots are actually it's pretty it. useful in this game, unlike the other 3D Zeldas. I feel like Some the other 3D games. Zeldas uh, don't make too much use of them. Yeah, the iron boots in this game are huge. The iron boots, the claw shot, and the boomerang in this game are just massive. Whereas things like spinner, ball, and chain don't serve a huge purpose. Like ball and chain's sole purpose is to kind of let you into, sorry, let you kill Zant. Just not great. So basically, yeah, this is <laughs> when the goats want to run. The goats want to run. So the thing with the goats is that if you yell at them, 
um, or whoop, I guess is the technical term for it, um, they get kind of hypersensitized. Um, so they, they, they respond much heavier to your movement. Um, yeah, they're, they're, it's an RNG nightmare. Hey, you got sub 40 though. <laughs> $39.99. Um, and now we'll actually collect uh, our first kind of open world harpies. Uh, so we're going to grab a harpies out of a tree. We're going to grab our first golden bug. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to do pillar clip. Uh, so what the way pillar clip works is that there's the point where the pillar meets the wall. Um, what we want to do is we want to call Midna. Um, so we want to press Z, which calls Midna. You didn't crash. Very nice. Yeah, it's very uh, tempted to save there. <laughs> yeah, so Nuki is Nuki once had a run where she transformed to that grass and crashed. And from what I know, no one's recreated it. Um, so, yeah, we don't know why it happened. It was just a, a freak instant once. I have actually had, like, um, all the random really bad crashes in the first few months of running the game. Like, I had one with Death Sword, which wasn't a crash, but it was a soft lock. There was one in Snoopy. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of interesting ones. You can also crash within the puppet cell to fight if you uh, open your item wheel on a certain frame, which I didn't know until I learned the hard way. So we're going to grab this uh, hard piece out of the tree. It's not grabbing it. Oh, it is. That's, oh, wow. A little lucky. Intentional. And we're going to grab this bug from the tree. And then, yeah, we're off to Pillow Clip. Um, so, yeah, when you press Z, um, you basically just kind of hang there in the water. Um, and your oxygen meter doesn't go down. Um, and what happens is that because you're at this weird point within the pillar, it'll push you to a certain point um, to where you can clip into it by equipping and unequipping the iron boots rapidly. Um, so it will it will make more sense soon. Um, gates don't exist. Gates are optional in this game. Yeah. They're, they're, you can, if you bonk and then side hop through the middle of gates... Uh, on particular, I think I don't know how big the frame window is, um, but yeah, you can you can get through a lot of gates in this game. Um, we're in the middle of a green screen here because this is a huge sequence break. But um, yeah, now we're into now we're into pillar clip, so I will I will I will be quiet for this one. Yeah, I took it a lot more safer than our runners. You can actually iron boots down in the water pretty early. But it all just makes the yeah. air meter after clipping a bit tighter. It makes yeah, it makes the oxygen bar very questionable. Okay. That's fine. That, mm, mm. I think it's fine. Yeah, that works. So while we got minute on text up, it we're gonna gradually pull and then or sorry be pushed. And then when we swim up, now we're in the pillar, and we can equip iron boots and we're through to the other side. And look at the auction in the top left. It is quite low. Oh that was <laughs> oh, <it's very laughs> that was um, that was very low. Yeah. Um and what we can do now is we can do a save warp, which will bring us kind of through this water tunnel. Um, and what Nuki does here is she actually loads that save file we made in Sacred Grove like 45 minutes ago. Um, and this is how we will trigger the, the boss fight. Um, so when she howls this cutscene, sorry, she howls at stone and then skips the cutscene, the game is like, okay, you're in a boss fight, so we can access the lake bed mini boss really, really early. Um, and actually, you'll see a cool void out that we do within there as well. So we don't spend a whole lot of time in like bed at all in this run and um, just because we can do the early boss flags to get the mini boss and we can do a boss key skip so we actually don't do the, the bulk of the dungeon i think it's probably the dungeon we do the least in oh a purple friend the purple shoe is called purple, purple friend. nice um and actually we'll do a really cool uh, double lj um, so basically, if you LJ onto the stair handrail um, and then quickly like keep jump attacking, you'll actually just kind of jump. It'll make a lot more sense in a second, because uh, I, I won't do it justice. But basically, um, you you jump really far down the stairs and then really far to the right, and just kind of rather than having to turn the stairs in the like bedroom, 
Um, it is it is uh, very very quick. Yeah, I like bed one is uh, a bit of a LJA kill trap. Well, like bed one's like seven minutes. Like bed two is like four. Like we don't spend a whole lot of time at all. Um, so what I see here is there's two different lineups. So if we target the chandelier and then we target over in this corner, and go one, and we go two, and now we're over on the other side. And you see another interesting one here. So what Nuki is going to do is there's a heart piece over in the corner that we need to get. And basically, we're going to grab the heart piece and then do a, a specific movements. And what that will do is that actually the gate will close on us, causing us to void out. Um, and that will spawn us back up here. So you get the two over there. Grab a pot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to break this pot in a second. Kill our friend. Oh. I'm and so we're going to do a set movement here to break the pot with the rang. So we... Yeah, I'm gonna take the shield doing? bashes first because lately it's yeah. been messing up for me. Yeah, so basically you do a roll, you do two shield bashes and a uh, a roll, two shield bashes and a rang throw, and that basically voids us out there. And uh, but the problem is if you mess up the movement and you break the pot, you're not you're you're stuck there as far as I'm convinced. There are ways to get out, but it is quite a there's an LJ, it is quite difficult. Apparently, I didn't yeah. learn it. Yeah. <laughs> I've not learned it either. I'd rather just, yeah, just preferably not fail it. Yeah. So um, and now what we see here is if Nuki looks up at the roof, um, now we're in the Deku Toad fight. So that's where the boss flags takes effect. So we just skip straight through to, to the big frog. And what we need to do here is we need to kill all of the tadpoles and then... We uh, want a one cycle here, so we want to hit 10 slashes and not a combo. Nice. I went too fast. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> I very much jinx that. So there's a thing in this game that basically if you if you hit combos, it's not always the best play. And because obviously you do four attacks, it's got like a max amount of damage you can do. Um, but what you can do in some instances is you can do a bunch of individual slashes. Um, because then it won't cause the, like, the cycle. There we go. Yeah, the one cycle is a little tight. Um, especially if you do a combo in the first one. But... And now what we've got here is actually we've got the claw shot. Um, so this is quite, it's quite a good item through the run. Um, later on we'll get another one. Um, but the claw shot lets us get to a lot of places that, yeah, we, we should not be able to get to. Uh, and then we just save warp out, and now we're going to go pick up everyone's favorite item of the game. And we're going to go pick up the Uku. Um, and what the Uku does is it lets you warp in and out of dungeons. Um, and so you can, what we'll do is basically we'll, we'll call the Uku, it'll warp us out, and then later on in the run, we'll recall the Uku and it'll warp us back in. Yeah, it's actually uh, a rather very than important item. To... Because of that. It is, it's a, it's a massively important item. Yeah. So we'll, yeah, we'll, lose, we'll use it later on. Um, so I'll, I'll explain the full context. Basically, we're going to Uku out of here, but later on, what we're going to do is we're going to do a frame perfect trick where rather than finishing a conversation with someone, we're going to um, call the Uku and basically warp back in. I did not know that word. Sorry, that was quite funny to me. That was very um, interesting. Yeah, I didn't know if you could just like bonk them with your shield. Um, yeah, so later on what we'll do is rather than um, finishing a conversation with someone, we're going to call the Uku and we're back into Lake Bed. Um, and what that does is it basically stores the text. So it's called Karo TD, uh, TD being text displacement. Um, and so what it lets us do is it lets us basically take the state of a conversation and bring it to another place. So if the conversation's like nearly done and we go talk to someone else, we're at a point of being nearly done. Um, and that lets us get into our minds. It'll make again all, it, a lot of things I explained. It'll make a uh, will make a lot more uh, sense later on. Uh, so now we're going to Uku out, and we are off to Zora's domain. 
I can't see um, the chat. So this part's kind of sorry. I can't see the chat, but I sure you hope can't. everyone posted man chicken. Uh we got we've got three. Yeah, we've got we've got four. We got we've got four man chickens. Or five. Perfect. Yeah, I don't know why that is why that is a, a Twitch emote, but it is. It's a, it's such a, a just a niche a niche thing to have as an emote. Um so what we got here, are you gonna go for human drowning? I'm not. I learned okay, it. So but... it's yeah. There's there's basically a, a fight here with a a, a Karagrok and a Boblin. Um, if you can fight it as a as a wolf. Um, there's a there's a bit of a faster method where you can fight it as human because so Boblins can't touch water. They're they just if they touch water they're gonna die. Um, so what you do is you bait the Boblin on the on the Karagrok's back into the water to try and grab you, but you go just out of their reach. And what it does is it effectively it drowns the rider. Uh, but the problem with it is, if you get grabbed by the cargo rock and it drowns, uh, the game crashes. <laughs> um, so probably not worth it in a uh, in a marathon setting. Because um, the reason it crashes is because basically the game has to play two different cutscenes. So the game has to play a cutscene of um, you getting grabbed, and it has to play the cutscene of oh the rider is, the, the rider has died. Um, and it doesn't know which to do, so it just crashes. Um, so yeah, it's much much safer doing it that way. Uh, but what we do have here is we have a, an out of bounds. Um, so the hitbox on Karagroks are a little bit weird. Um, so what we can do is if we fly up within a very small kind of cavern, uh, we'll be pushed out of bounds uh, into uh, just a massive white area. Yeah, perfect. Um, and actually, that will come into a major effect later on in the run, because uh, we use it to skip um, the bulk of a mini game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have a little bit of downtime just because if it's gonna be run up to Zora's domain, there's not too much. If there's anything from uh, from Zet, there is indeed. Thank you so much. We do have a ten dollar donation here from a uh, new saying, "Yay, Wolf Game." Wishing Nuki the best of luck. She's been a great person to get to know over the past few months. Wonderful person and amazing runner. No, you'll do great. Less than three. Donation goes to White Cat Mask Cause Meow. Thank you so much. So this donation goes as mentioned to the uh, blindfold for the um, blindfolded Breath of the Wild run that we have later. And I want to remind everybody that there's a bunch of... Um, incentives and bit wars open for example for the uh, lunastus run later today you can decide for the graphic style modern versus retro we have a few harvest moon bit wars for example for the bachelorette that you can choose and of course bit uh, of course incentives for the game's hard ha excuse me haters <laughs> where you can choose to uh, have the hardest difficulty on and later there's going to be a step mania showcase and you can uh, vote to have a Brand new Eurobeat remix from Here Comes Plum. I don't think you want to miss that. Thank you. No worries at all. Um, we have here uh, Zora's Domain. Um, so uh, Zora's Domain within Twilight has been frozen over. Um, so what we need to do is we're going to go... There's a meteor that will fall in within Death Mountain. Um, and that will defrost Zora's Domain. Um, and that will basically be how we can complete Lineru Twilight. Um, so the Nehru is, a, it's the biggest of the three Twilights, um, just because there's one bug, so th there's the, still the 16 bugs, the standard kind of uh, idea for it, but there's one bug that is in Castletown for some reason, which is just like a three minute detour, just to get one bug, um, which I think they removed in the HD version, they did. Okay. Um, which, make, yeah, which makes the Nehru so much better in HD. Um, these guys are not liking you. Like that? Uh, there we go. Uh, I guess I, it's something I probably should have noted earlier. Um, with the Shadow Beast fights, um, the way you... So if you charge attack three Shadow Beasts and you tag them one, two, three, it will attack them in three, two, one. Um, so basically it is important to choose who you target in what order. Otherwise you get hit into a wall or whatever it may be. That's a yeah, so right there what Nuki was trying. Sorry. It's especially this wall during the Castle Town one. Yeah, that's very important during the Castletown one because basically sometimes the messages get really close to the barriers as we saw there 
Um, and so what you want to do is you want them to, you, you want to target the other ones and then target the barrier one at a specific time. Um, otherwise you will, you will hit into it. Uh, but here's, here's our meteor. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take it from here and we're going to warp it to Zora's Domain to defrost it. Uh, there is a, there's a one frame side hop at the start of, uh, just after this warp. Um, and if you hit that, it saves, it saves a ridiculous amount of time. It saves like, it's like six seconds for just effectively RNG. Oh, sad. Like it's, it. it's very difficult. Yeah, there's a lot of kind of one framers in this run that you can't really time because it's coming out of like a fade to black or something like that. So you kind of just got to hit and help. It's just how it goes, unfortunately. And now we are down to Lake Hylia. Um, do you do waterfall side hop? I don't. Okay, that's all right. I can I, I can explain it anyway. Um, that basically that waterfall that Nuki just um jumped off of. Um, uh, there is a trick we can do within the twilight, which I believe is a six frame window. Um, and what you want to do is you want to get to the edge of the waterfall, and then. So there's six frames that work for it. Three of the frames will land you on the bottom half. Three of the frames will land you on the top half. Um, and basically, it, it's, it saves like 10, 15 seconds. But if you fail it, it loses like 25. And so, yeah, you should only kind of go for it if, you are, if you're confident you can do it. Yeah, I don't do the super flashy stuff. Not yet, at least. In Hondo, it's kind of like... It is that thing because the category is so long. You're like, hey, do I want to try and save four seconds or lose 25 like it's kind of you, you have to kind of weigh up um risk reward yeah that like there's a bunch of new movement in forest temple and it's it's great if you hit it so it's like two seconds but if you miss it you lose like 15 <laughs> um so that is yeah that's not ideal uh, but we have a messenger fight here um so nuke is going to take out one of them and then try to get two of them to stand really close to each other um because sometimes the messengers don't like hanging out with each other they just kind of stay very far apart so i'll do is get this one and then we want this one and this one to come together yeah. um and also sometimes they just don't detect you i don't kind of know why it works um but sometimes they'll just walk off on their own there's one in elden which is notorious for just looking at a wall um so it's just like it, it, it's it's the one in Death Mountain. He just stares at a yeah. wall, and you're like, he just won't come near you for some reason. You're just nearsighted. Okay. Yeah, I, they, he just chooses when he wants to see you. Um, yeah, but this Twilight is a bit longer than Elden. So at standard Elden, it's probably about eight minutes. I think the Lineiro is more like eleven or twelve. It's eleven. Um, because yeah, because they have a Howling Stone within here, but it is just that Castle Town bug. Uh, so we're going to clear through here. We're going to go down to Upper Zora River and then across the castle town. Um, and the bug is annoying to get, but also the benefit is we unlock a warp portal so we can go to castle town later in the run. Actually, the split right after this, to be fair. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, small. waterfall side hop would happen here. Yeah, sorry. But it is, um, it is, yeah, it's very weird. Yeah, a little close. Yeah, that is always scary. You you travel alarmingly far with them. Uh, so what we've got down here is um, we've got the lily pad bugs. Uh, so there's two twilight bugs that hang out on a bunch of lily pads. Um, they kind of choose what they want to do. Um, sometimes they're really easy to get. Sometimes they're really not easy to get. Um, yeah, it is. It is quite a quite an annoying part of the split. Like right, that one's nice to you. That one. That one not so much. Yep. Because they sometimes just go for a swim, but they just go underwater. Um, rupee count is looking good, by the way. Um, I have no idea. I never pay attention at this point. I, I'm I'm a I'm a huge I'm a huge nerd for rupee rally. Um, so generally I'd say like by the end of the Lineaver you want like 150 ish, and um, which is obviously easier with waterfall side hop because you get an extra five or six. Uh, but no rupees rupees are looking good. 
that that is a benefit in this raft that there are so many rupees that we can get um like they are just they're everywhere um to, to the point now that there is a potential for like a slight reroute where we just skip 100 rupees because we have too many um so it is yeah the, the, the game is quite nice to us the way it's routed and we have our third howling stone nice requiem of spirit Is that actually what the song is called? Yes. Oh. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm unfortunately uncultured with a lot of Zelda games. I just like this one in particular. Um, I guess also while we have a little bit of downtime here, uh, we have the Zor armor split coming up next. Um, so what we need to do is we need the Zor armor to help us uh, breathe underwater and swim really fast and stuff like that. Um, and what that is, is there is a wagon um, that we need to escort past a King Boblin fight and then past a bunch of just Boblin enemies around the place. Uh, we're able to skip the King Boblin fight by clipping into a wall. Um, but we will be, yeah, we will be riding, riding ahead of the um, wagon before it catches on fire. So basically the, the, the enemies have flaming arrows, which makes the, makes the wagon burn. But as long as it doesn't burn down by the time we get to a certain checkpoint, it's okay. So we kind of just leave her alone. Uh, but that will be that will be our next split. And now off to Castle Town. I actually do want to know how long it takes to get there. Are you counting? I feel like the it's multiple minutes. I'm, I'm I'm looking at the timer. I'm looking yeah from around here. I feel like it's got to be at least two minutes. I guess 237. I feel like you're not you're probably not too far off. Um so this this point that Nuki is at here we'll actually come back to later. Um because uh, it's where our final day night cycle ends. Um so the final po that we want to collect is on a bridge just behind her. Uh so we do we go through a lot of areas in the twilight and then when we clear the twilight we come back later for uh, kind of story checks and stuff like that. We also run through here during uh, MTH. Yes, yeah, because he spawned just down the road uh, when Midna's Lament. Lam Lament? Lament? Lament. Yeah, it gets played. Yes. And yeah, we've got a Shadow Beast fight coming up here. So these are the ones that we want to be nice because they are. Yeah, this one, this one in particular, I don't know what's up with it. Do you have an order you go for? I go, I go right then to left. Yep. Yeah. That's what I do. I, it still doesn't work. I don't know what's up with it. I haven't had problems with it since I swapped to this. Name is Lost Roots. I got that one. And then you want to target the furthest. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that was nice. So yeah, what you saw there was that Nuki targeted the one next to the fence and then targeted the one further away so that you would go further away, one next to the fence. Um, and something I mentioned earlier about uh, Wolf Link's speed caps being different in different areas. Um, so what we're going to see here is that Nuki's going to do dash cancelling. So I explained earlier that basically you press A and then within 10 frames you press B. Um, because the dash speed on Wolf Link is really, really capped in here. Yeah, so we're just going to be getting this bug and then warping to... Like how are you? So we have time for a donation. That is awesome because we do have one. Uh, Soft Gnome has donated ten dollars, saying less than three. Thank you so much. And this donation is going towards the uh, Harvest Moon. Choose the Bachelorette option, uh, Popuri. So thank you so much for uh, getting that bid war going. Remember, remember, we do have a couple of bid wars and incentives open for the for the day. So whenever you choose to donate for this amazing cause, we're uh, raising funds for Alzheimer Fonden. Uh, make sure to allocate your donation to a bid war or incentive of your interest. Thank you. Um, so now what we've got is we have there's a bug hanging over here. Um, and then we've actually got another Kargrok flight. So we, we took the Kargrok flight to get up to Zora's Domain. And um, we have to do another one to chase down four of the bugs. This bug in particular is very annoying. Did that get it? Oh, it did. 
yeah, that bug can be quite annoying just because the, the bug can do whatever he wants. Yeah. Uh, but what we want to do here is we want to do, uh, we're going through the flight path and we want to collect four bugs. And then what we need to do is uh, we actually want to bonk and fail the mini game. Um, and what that'll do is add, it'll spawn us exactly where the last bug is, very conveniently. Um, and then we have to fight the boss bug, the, the main big bug. So what you do is actually you go past this first one and you get the second one and the first one catches up to you. There's one and two. And then there'll be two just after this, uh, this ridge. And then, yeah, Nuki's gonna bonk into whichever wall she she wants. Not like that. Nope. <laughs> there we go. That's that's the effort you want. You gotta put some force. Um, and what you actually you, yeah, you gotta, gotta give it some oomph. Um, and so we press no on the mini game repeat. Um, and what will happen is that there is a bug right behind us as we spawn in. Um, so it all works out quite well. There it is. Um, a thing to note with Lake Kanye is just because of all the water and stuff like that, um, the game is quite laggy at this point. Um, so if you look at certain parts of the of Lake Kanye, it'll make it lag. So it's like if you're looking towards just the general Lake Kanye, it'll lag a lot. If you look towards the waterfall, it'll be less. Um, and so there is there is a fair amount of lag within the GameCube version of this game. Um, so this is Derek. This is our our bug. Um, and what we want to do is that Derek will only attack you if you're looking at him. Uh, so there's actually quite a fun thing you can do that if you never look at him, he'll actually just keep spinning in a circle and he'll just go to the bottom of Lake Halia. <laughs> um, yeah, as, as someone found it out, you can make him go really low. Um, but what you want to do here is that we want to uh, do a jump attack to basically hit just below it and then do a second quick re-grab um, and we won't do that twice. Um, and then there's a charged attack afterwards where we want to bonk on his stomach, which will skip a cutscene. It'll skip, sorry, it will skip a, a like the killing animation effectively. That looks good to me. Yeah, perfect. Good fight. So what happens there is that you target the six tentacles. Um, and basically, it has to go through the standard kind of charge attack of going through all six of them. Um, but if you bonk, you basically go through one and then it bonks, so the animation is done. Um, so it's, it saves a, just a small bit of time. Uh, but now we're into a wagon escort. Uh, but we have to get a heart piece, I believe, first. Yep. <laughs> So this here is the Nehru Shrine, which actually we don't use very much. There's a lot in it, but we just don't need it because it's mostly mostly rupees. Never really. And we'll also act it. Sorry. What in the, in the Nehru Shrine? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot in it. There's a bunch of like chests dug around the top and stuff like that. It's just we don't need it. Um, but I've seen in so there's a there's an extension category called 100% plus, uh, which is basically does everything that 100% doesn't do, because we don't open every chest and we don't walk to the corner of like the map and stuff like that. Um, so within this game, when you walk to an area, it colors it in on your map. Um, but obviously, we don't always need to go to every corner of the map. Um, but that's what 100% plus covers and also opening all chests uh, it does all the fishing it does all that kind of stuff um, so that's about two and a half hours longer than this category um, so that is quite cool that OJ was a mailman skip because there's a mailman yes, trigger on the yeah. yeah we'll actually talk to him later on um and so we'll talk to him after Temple of Time, and that's our required kind of mailman chat time. Uh, now we are uh, down to Telma and on to Wagon Escort. 
So as I said, there's, there's two parts to this. There is the King Baldwin 2 skip. So we skip the second King Baldwin fight by walking underneath Epona's neck. Uh, we kind of clip out into a wall. Um, and that just skips the fight because you shouldn't be able to avoid there. So that's what we see here. can be quite a quite a finicky trick. So we go over into this corner, we turn a little bit, and we backflip off, and then if we walk under her neck, that is definitely possible. Yeah, that's just being weird. It, it, as I said, it's quite a weird one. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Um, so that will skip the KB2 fight. So normally what happens is there's that bridge, and we have to fight King Baldwin 2 on it. If I'm being real, I don't know what that fight looks like because I've never, I've never had to do it. That's all either. Um, yeah, no, I'm sure, I'm sure I played it at some point. Uh, but no, it, it is quite a cool skip. So now what's happening is that Telma is in her wagon behind us, um, but we, we like, we can go get rupees. We can kind of just sit around, and because we need her to get to a certain point before we can dash ahead of her. There she is. And so what we do is we put out the flame and we will go up to this um, gate. So it's important to note that when we did King Baldwin 2 skip, it gave us two small keys. Um, so we can open all the gates. Um, and also there is an 100 rupee that's hanging out in a chest over here. That because the way that Telma's pathing works is that there's a cargo rock that comes along which has a bomb on it. Um, but that won't be for a little bit, so we have enough time to come over here and get uh, get this 100 rupee chest for routing. Um, and then we can just leave her kind of on fire and we'll just wander ahead. So there is our cargo rock. To blow up the cargo rock. And we can just, yeah, leave her on fire. We have all the time in the world. So as long as we make it to the uh, Kakariko trigger before Telma's wagon burns out, we will be okay. Um, but when we get through the gate here, there's actually two triggers on the floor. Um, so one of them is uh, the King Boblin 1 trigger, because we haven't actually fought King Boblin 1 yet. And the other is um, the Telma trigger, I believe. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're actually going to do a couple of side hops and rolls and jump around the trigger. And then we do an LJ and if all goes well, perfect. We are into a cutscene. I don't know if um, you noticed. So, sorry. I don't know yeah. if you noticed, but I okay, wanted the opponent slides so bad. I just didn't get it. Yeah, the opponent sides are awesome. So there's a way, um, when you're on Epona, if you're holding R, and then you, you the, a frame after pressing, sorry, at the frame after letting go of R, you press A, you can dismount Epona and like slide. Um, it's quite useful for some any percent routes, um, but you can, you can slide, so you can kind of get skidded along the floor. Um, partially for show, it also serves a bit of a purpose, like it is faster. Um, but that is quite a cool thing to do. Uh, so we actually use that in um, in Zora Armor Route um, because we we don't spawn the bridge. But that's a whole other that's a whole other conversation. Um, what Nuki is going to do here is Karo TD. So this is the thing I talked about earlier about basically taking the state of one conversation and bringing it to another place. Um, so she's going to take her chat with Karo. Um, she's going to bring it to the entrance to Goron Mines, so that way we don't need to wrestle the Goron. Um, it is a frame-perfect trick. It, each time you fail, it loses about 40 seconds. Um, a lot of people like to use metronomes for it. Nuki is not one of those people. Um, so I will just I will just leave her have a crack at it. Uh, but basically, the way it works is that you buy a bottle of oil from Kara. Um, and then you press A to close the text prompt, and then you wait 8 frames, which is quite an abnormal amount. 
and then you press Y to Uku back into lake bed. So that's why this Uku earlier was so important to the run. And so yeah, it's, it's A, wait eight frames, and then Y. Yeah, and without this, this route wouldn't really work. And it's also one try, so if I don't save here uh, and I missed it, my run would be dead. So let's do yeah, that. So we do, we do, we do a safety save here. Um, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't be possible. This is... I'll, actually, I'll wait till after you're done. Nice. That was... Uh, you, that that amazes me. I can't do it without a metronome. Um, yeah, this was... So that's, yeah, Kara TD. There used to be a different one called Yeda TD, which is a lot easier, but a lot slower. Um, where you had to go the whole way to Snow Peak to effectively do what we did there. Yeah, and it looks like nothing happened, but as you said before, um, there's like a text box after that would play, but we pulled Uku and intercepted that. So if I had not pulled Uku, you would have saw or would have said whatever he says. I don't know what he says. I uh, he actually, he tells you to check out Forest Temple, which you've been to about an hour ago. Um, so yeah, it, it, it looks like it looks like not much happened, but basically uh, Nuki Uku'd out and now. Um, into Lake Bend, and then she Uku'd again. Um, so Lake Bend is kind of our hub for the run. It's where we want to. It's we're, we're, go, we're gonna want to end up there at some point, but not quite yet. Um, so what we've done there, that is insane, Iron Giant. Is um, uh, so what we're gonna do is yeah, she Uku'd out of Lake Bend, and then when we finish in uh, collecting a couple of things, we're gonna Uku back into Lake Bend, and that way we'll that'll be our final Lake Bend trip. Um, so this now is climbing up into Goron Mines. Uh, we have to chat to uh, I forget his name, Gore Koron, the big the big wrestling man. Uh, right. We have to chat to him a couple like three times. <laughs> is it Gore Koron? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not great at names in this game because we kind of just skipped through all of it. I found out the name of the um, the guy with the bird in Ordon Village the other, like the other week. His name is Jagger. Chat. Which I had just absolutely no idea. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is the entrance to Goron Mines. We're going to grab this 30 rupees on the shelf up here. The shelf. The shelf. Um, <laughs> yeah, the shelf. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty good for our rupee routing. Because when we get out of... Um, when we come out of Goron Mines, we're going to buy some bombs. So yeah, go up, talk to him three times, and then, so the guys in the back, if you see them right now, uh, they're just kind of hanging out there, but when we finish the third time talking to him, they stand a little bit further apart, and it's just enough distance that we can roll in behind them. So there's like, just the tiniest area that we can roll into. Um, and now we have Gora Mines. Um, Gora Mines, it's quite, a, it's quite a good dungeon, the kind of the only part that some people may not like is the magna floors. Um, so basically, a lot of the dungeon you do upside down um, because you use these magnets to stick the iron boots to the roof. Um, on the Wii version, you can actually skip it. There's a there's a glitch that lets you um, just run along the magna floors. Ah, that guy, uh, yeah, he didn't see you. Um, yeah, the, so that's kind of the only slightly tedious part, I guess. Um, but across the board, it is quite a it's quite a good dungeon. Sorry, I just know something in chat which I, I fully agree with. Sorry. Um, Go ahead. The, so the, every time you talk to Gore Koron, he blinks. And so you talk to him like 17 times and he just keeps frantically blinking. And it just it really puts me off. What are you saying, sorry? I don't remember. I was going to say I'm jealous of the Wii version because I hate the, the magnetic chorus. Yeah, magnet floors are... Yeah, they're they're very very slow. Um, if we could just run past them, that'd be great. Um, what Nuki did there, um, it's a very small save, but basically, she was able to go through those kind of turning paddles um, in one cycle by equipping and unequipping the iron boots. So equipping it so you drop further, sorry, drop faster, and unequipping it so you can still move when you're done. Um, and rather than doing what you normally do in a casual playthrough here, where you pull this the whole way out and you run around, uh, we can actually just fit through this little gap. 
So we do that we do a, a fair amount of glitches within uh within Gora Mines. Yes, this is our first uh, magnet floor example. Better get used to it. Yeah, it's very, it's very slow. Uh, it, it put me off the dungeon, but now I'm kind of I've, I've come around to it. No, I'm so bored at this dungeon. <laughs> it's one of my least favorite, but it does have some cool things. The boss fight in it is pretty cool. Well, not fires, but the Dangoro fight is pretty cool. Yeah, that's um, about so. Yeah, we do the we do the mini boss and the main boss pretty quick after each other. Um, so our mini boss is uh, Dangura, who is basically the massive Goron. And what we need to do is we need to sit, we need to stand on a magnet floor, um, and we have to throw him into the lava. Um, and there's quite a cool there's quite a cool manip strat for that. Um, and then the final boss is Firus, and he's a bit of an auto scroller. There's not really too much too much to him. I don't think I've seen many people take damage to him before. Um, cool little thing that Noof's going to do here is basically she's going to go over to uh, there's a heart piece container over here um, and then she's actually going to jump into the lava uh, because it is the fastest way to get back to back to where we just were. Um, and also you'll see that she is just doing um like a sword combo, that is the fastest way to move across the floors. So if you do, I think it's right, left, right, up. Um, it is the fastest combo that you actually move along the floor quicker than if you just walked in a straight line. Wait, did you mean like hold right, left, right, up? So when you're doing like the actual like stab, like the sword swings, right. if you hold those directions. I had no idea. Yeah, it's. I think it's right, left, right, up. But what you have to account for then is that when you obviously, when you hold right on the controller, he swings the sword in a right way so it can hit the wall. Right. So yeah, it's just, it's it's, it's the small things like that. There are so many small optimizations in this game. Yeah, it is it is crazy. If you watch, um, there's, uh, there's the uh, individual level leaderboard. So basically we have a leaderboard for completing the dungeons as fast as possible. So completing uh, the any percent of it and then getting everything in the dungeon um watching some of them is crazy the the strats that they can do like multiple frame perfects in a row like um crazy there was a thing in city of the sky recently uh, for skipping a key and you have to use like the, the way the person who hit it did it was by using two different metronomes at two different speeds back to back um and yeah it's just it is it is chaos and like people beating Snow Peak in less than seven minutes and stuff. It is it's a very cool leaderboard. Goron Mines is actually really cool. Goron Mines is very cool. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of um something we'll we'll see later on the run is something called moon boots. Um so we have our iron boots on, which obviously kinda of holds us to the floor and stuff like that. Um but if you do a jump attack, but um sorry, if you do a jump strike. Uh, which is a hidden skill we'll learn later on and during the jump strike animation on a certain frame or group of frames you unequip the iron boots you jump really high because the game is like oh you shouldn't be able to jump because you got iron boots but then you take the boots off and it keeps like it keeps your upwards momentum um so it gets us into a lot of places that we shouldn't be able to do uh, but that is quite a cool thing, and then you can time you can time that with bomb blasts and stuff like that, and it is just yeah, the the opportunity is kind of endless with it. Yeah, and fun fact, if anyone noticed, I didn't skip one of those cutscenes in the last room. Uh, it's actually faster to watch it, which is very strange. I don't I don't know why I don't know why that would ever be the thing. <laughs> it's also a thing that if you um if you run over a switch. And while running over it, you perfectly put on your boots. The cutscene plays quicker. Just as, as no way, said, a bunch of a bunch of it. tiny things. It's yeah, it's, it, it's, it's quite hard to time. It's quite hard to time, honestly. Um, because if you run slightly past it, you're like, oh well, there goes that. Um, cool little LJ through this little gap, and um, to get us to outside. So obviously you're not supposed to have like some of the items would be, well, be doing the movement realistically that we're doing right now another small optimization um, 
transforming into wolf or pulling out first person items always going to see up. Yes. Just a yeah. Little faster. So, yeah. So if you you see runners like a, a huge part of the run is actually predicting your equips. So it's, it's you, when you know, okay, in the next in in a room four minutes time from now, I'm gonna need the iron boots. Having your iron boots equipped is always really good. So we want to pull up the item wheel as few times as possible. Um, it actually makes it quite good for remembering how you do stuff. Um, so like here we'll see that Nuki has like her, her boots and her rang. But then like when she picks up the bow, she'll always equip the bow over a certain slot. Um, so you, you get a bit, I don't know if robotic is the right word, but we'll, we'll go with Automatic. that. Automatic. Yeah. Um, so a cool, a cool thing here. Um, we're able to um, make Dangoro go through two cycles as one cycle. Um, so basically, he's not going to land back on the platform. Um, I'll explain that in a sec. That looks good. Yep. So basically, he bounces around and then he can't get back up. So he keeps bouncing around. And so that does two cycles as one, basically. So we can make that fight quite quick. That is a cool fight. It is pretty cool, yeah. I still claim he looks like a character out of Overcooked. Have you ever seen Overcooked? Like the, with, the, with the Onion King? You know, I just played it like last week. And I know exactly what you're talking it's about. It's a fantastic game. <laughs> it is very good. Um, and now we've got uh, the hero's bow. So yeah, the bow the bow is a huge part of the run um, because uh, you can equip the bow with bomb arrows. So sorry, you can equip the bow with bombs to make bomb arrows. Um, and so that is that's a massive part of the run. Uh, so we have three three bomb bags across the run. So we'll get two full normal bomb bags and then one water bomb bag. Um, and this bow and arrow shot, for some reason, no one hits a first try. Um, we're very, the community is very good at this game, but no one sinks this bridge with one arrow, and I don't know why. I'm about to prove you wrong. Never mind. <laughs> it, it, I don't know what it is. It's, I'm, I'm genuinely convinced you just can't hit it on first try. I've never seen anyone do it. I took my time as well. Yeah. That's a good shot. Yeah, I stood a um, little. So what? Close. What we need to do here is basically the um, the boss key. Uh, so the boss key in this uh, sorry in this dungeon is made out of three different shards. Um, so we're going through talking to the different Goron elders, um, and basically when you get this one, which is the third shard, we now have made the boss key, and um, so we're able to go to the boss at the end of the dungeon. Um, there is actually a really cool trick that skips the second shard in um, yeah, for some other categories. That's really cool. Uh, but for us, because we have the boomerang, we just LJ'd over it and didn't even... We actually never got the... We don't get the second shard, I just realized. Yeah, I was about to say, we don't get Cause it. We... Yeah, because the, the game has this thing, as you would kind of expect, that basically if, for example, with a few shadows and stuff like that, or the mirror shards, the game's like, if you get the last one of something, you've probably got the previous other ones. So it only ever checks for the final thing. So within this dungeon, for example, it only checks if we have the third key shard. Uh, we have to get the first for a different reason, uh, but it never checks if we have the second. This is quite a cool LJ. Oh, you don't do it. I don't do it. I'm sorry. I love it. It's so cool. It's so hard to do, but it's really, really cool. I didn't even know it existed until recently. Yeah, it's, it's a very cool LJ, but it is, yeah, it is quite difficult. Nice. Nice fire play. So what you'll see here is when Nuki's jumping off each of these ledges, she's equipping the iron boots to get her down to the ground quicker. And it's actually quite nice for spacing as well. It, it, like, it kind of lets you know how far away you are from stuff. Right. Uh, forgot where the bow was. And now we are into uh, Fyrus. So Fyrus is a bit of an auto-scroller. Um, it's not too, too much to the fight. 
Um, you can make it ever so slightly faster um, by pulling the chain in a certain direction. But for the most part, like we don't really take damage on the fight. There's not there's not a whole lot. You you shoot him in the head with a bow and arrow, and then you pull the chain and he falls over and you hit him. Um, so it, there's not there's not too much for it. It is a cool fight concept though, and it has fantastic music. Yeah, and he looks cool. He's just very uh. Maybe I can right, take this opportunity to remind our viewers real quick that we do have prizes available. So uh, the, accumulative, the cumulative amount uh, you donate to the event um, makes you eligible to win a prize. We have grand prizes of a PSA custom Nintendo Switch or a custom PlayStation 5. You can win uh, hardware, um, an AIO liquid cooler and a Chroma X black CPU cooler as well as various keyboard and mice. So lots of stuff to uh, get in with um, just, uh, you know, doing, donating something to charity and supporting uh, supporting the organization as well as the runners. So keep donations in to win grand prizes. <laughs> I did. I, I sorry. I looked away very briefly. I wasn't sure if this is our third pull or our second third. pull. This third, awesome. Yeah. So that is that is the dungeon done. Um, what we go into now is a, basically a bunch of collection cycles. Um, so the game is going to spawn us in Kakariko, um, and we're actually going to fight King Baldwin one. Um, which if if you've ever fought King Baldwin, um, there's a lot of RNG in it. He he rides around Hyrule Field, and you try to hit him with a sword. Um, but because we have a bow, we can kind of cheese the fight a little bit. Um, and so rather than chasing him around with a sword, we just shoot him from a distance. Um, and then we have to do collect a couple of heart pieces, collect a couple of bugs, and then we're straight into the Morfield fight. So there is kind of this point of just kind of tie, kind of tying up loose ends uh, before we get into uh, the day-night cycles and stuff. Yeah, and the further we go into the run and have less like early game Twilight Story stuff, we're gonna do more collecting between dungeons rather than flag progression. Yeah, I think like we the, between I'm trying to think that between like Snow Peak, like we do Snow Peak and Temple of Time back to back, but then after that, between Temple of Time and City in the Sky, we spend a lot of time doing other things. Yeah, because like, like this game is. Yeah, it's a there's a lot to do in the game before we can actually go to City in the Sky. Um, yeah, they we spent there's a lot of collection based splits. All right, on to on to King Bulbin. Then we got to do the archery mini game, which is just fantastic. <laughs> Lo love the archery mini game. They basically Mallow, who owns Malamart, the the very small child. Um, asks you to shoot three targets with a bow and it's basically supposed to be a way to introduce you the hawkeye which is effectively like having a scope for your bow um but we don't get it till later in the run so we just kind of eyeball it as uh, so we have to hit the third shot it can be difficult it is a lot difficult nothing compares to cat it's mini more annoying though. oh cat mini yeah i can't wait for cat mini game um yeah, there is. It, it's an interesting, it's an interesting mini game to have. Uh, the cats at the end of the run, and um, so basically after we've cleared Hidden Village, um, of all the enemies, it gets taken over by cats for some reason, um, and you have to talk to twenty cats, um, and it's just it's a nightmare. It's an absolute nightmare. So we can shoot them twice, and then we can spin attack the Boglins, and then we can just keep shooting them. He does have some invincibility frames, so basically, like, after you shoot him, he has a certain amount of frames before you can shoot him again. Um, but it is still just ridiculously fast in compared to the normal part. Sorry, the normal fight. Oh. There's I've one. never had that thing and before. He... It is quite weird. I think if you, like, dash from the start and then you just full charge a bow, it always hits. Yeah, but I still never, never understand why he flies why he flies sideways off the bridge. I will never understand that. <laughs> it's a really windy and powerful era. Clearly. 
Um, and so now we're going to go buy some bombs. So uh, our rupee count has kind of led up to this point. So we're going to buy a bomb bag. Um, we're going to sell the bombs out of it. And then we're going to buy the water bombs. So I think we lose, I think it's 135 rupees here. Um, net between the two, kind of um, the buying and selling. I'm not sure why. Um, so the water... Sorry to interrupt you. I don't know Sorry? why I went for the opponent's line. I don't know if you... Oh, noticed. the opponent's side there is great. It's so cool. Yeah, it's it's so good. You just get, you just get shot to the door. It's fantastic. Um, so the water bombs are quite important because we actually use the water bombs sparingly because there's certain scenarios that they work for. Um, so there is a Goron at the bottom of Zora's Domain, which has a bomb bag we would like. Um... And there's a couple of other scenarios that are water related that we need those bombs for. So we only have 10 across the whole run. I think you can miss optimally. You can only miss about one or two. Um, but to borderline soft lock the run, you need to miss like seven. So that's not too bad. I uh I almost bought five. That would have been really bad. That yeah, that would <laughs> that definitely would have been very bad. You could at least you can just buy another five. Oh yeah, okay. The worst thing you can do is um, buy the bombs and then sell them and then buy the regular bombs again because then you don't have the money for, for water bombs. Oh yeah. So now we've got uh, now archery time. Test our sharpshooting skills. Based on Goran's mines, uh, it's not looking great. Look, it, it, it's hard. The first two are okay. It is this last shot that is just a bit rough. There is a shout out to chat in chat to the to the person sitting behind you drinking a coffee. <laughs> chat chat sees you, mate. It's that cat here. That was a nice shot. Um, so now what we're going to do is going to go out the north side of Hyrule Field, and we've got uh, we've got two heart pieces and two bugs to get. Um, and also we're going to spawn a messenger fight, which uh, makes the bridge disappear. So the bridge of Elden, when you start a messenger fight, the messengers come along and they basically take a chunk of the bridge and replace it with a bunch of enemies. Um, and so we're um, it will then head off into into Morfield. Oh, right oh. <laughs> yeah, if your opponent starts moving, it's very hard to, to get her to stop. Yeah, there's like a small delay between one out claw shot where you can move still. Every so often I do that. Yeah, opponent could be, yeah. Epona, sometimes the opponent's mechanics are a little bit weird. Um, there's a whole thing that if you dash and she hits into a wall, she just kind of freezes. Um, so yeah, it is quite a weird one. I love her nonetheless. Well, we actually, we'll use her a lot for the post-TOT cycle. So after Temple of Time, we use Epona a lot. Because it's just an incredibly fast mode of transportation around the place. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is going to rang this bug. And then we're going to dash away to another bug. Um, and basically what happens is if, if you pick up one bug, the second bug will warp to that location. Um, so when we grab this second bug over here, this first bug that's in the boomerang, we'll just spawn at our feet. And the bug flew away, because bugs love to do that. There's one, and two. Neat. Now we go and get a heart piece. In our bug. And start the fight. And we'll close a few rupees as well. Um, so we're down to 58 rupees, which is a fine count for the moment. And we do want to be at 600 by the time we wrap up in. Snoopy? Snoop Temple of Time? Uh, Temple of Time. Temple of Time. Uh, I don't think that would work. So I guess it's important to note with the. I don't think I explained this earlier. Um, with LJAs, with the boomerang jumps, 
Um, they work over kind of three different scenarios. So basically, if uh, the rang is, um, if the rang is on ground higher than Link's feet position, um, if it is out of bounds, or if it is over a void, um, that's what makes the boomerang work. So you can't just do it whenever you want. It has to be in a certain situation. So in that example there, nuking through the rang on top of that like tower. Um, and because that is higher than where Link is standing, that's why the LGA work. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to shoot a bomb out at this pile of rocks. Uh, oh. Wow. Oh. Oh my god. Oh my, wait, did it get caught in the rang? Yeah, I did. I, I've not seen that before. That's I've a new one. I've seen that. Uh, not all that important. Uh, you got five. You got five bombs. Uh, you need one for Sora's domain, and then you've got two rocket links. So you need at least three. Um, uh, and one to open up Elden Cave. So you have one spare bomb. Okay. It's not like the rocket links are vital. No. So um, what rocket link is is basically when you're underwater. Um, if you pull a, a bomb out from over your head, um, and while that animation is happening, you equip something over your iron boots, um, and you press A, you shoot to the top of whatever body of water you are currently in. Um, which is quite nice. Actually, yeah, you're gonna have four here, so you're on the, you're on the, uh, thank you. Yeah, definitely. You're definitely fine because you can just get the goal on one. That's the only one you yeah, I mean, truly care about. Yeah, I mean, the only one I need. Uh... And Elden Cave. Yeah. Uh, yes, and Elden turn. Cave. Oh, yeah, you gotta open it. It's a big rock. Well, like, how are you cute, too? Do we. You have a normal bomb? You have um, normal bombs for them? Yeah, yeah. So what we're seeing Nuki do here is basically um, there we're now going to Uku again. So this is our final Uku of the run. I'm going to save that? just in case. I believe it's our final Uku of the run. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, it is. Off, off, the top, off the top of my head, I believe it is. So now we're going to Uku back to Lake Bed, where we did during Karo TD. Um, and we're going to grab a heart piece and we're going to jump into the Morfield fight. There's a really cool 100% uh, specific uh, bossy skip we can do. So by doing a set of kind of standardized movements from this chest, we're able to roll and clip in. So it's our only bossy skip in the run. Yes. Awesome. It always looks so good. It, yeah, that's really cool. And now we are into the Morphil fight. So basically, that's why we spent so little time in Lakebed in this run. Um, like on the first trip, it was um, the boss frags for Deku Toad, and now that's our boss key skip. So after this, we are done with Lakebed. Um, so... Morphil is actually, thankfully, very straightforward for when you have a Zora armor. Um, within our any percent run, we actually don't have Zora armor. Um, so we have to use this whole thing about using bombs to manipulate the, um, uh, to manipulate our oxygen meter. Um, but thankfully in this run, it is quite straightforward. We can just, um, we can just kind of dismount re and then reattach very quickly. Yeah, and any percent is a huge uh, RNG fast. Yeah, it is. It is brutal, and um, it is a massive run killer with a name percent. But thankfully, in this, what what Luki's going to do is she's going to chuck on her iron boots when she's up there, attach onto Morfeel, and then dismount Morfeel and quickly reattach. Uh, so it, it goes by very quickly.
And so what you see all her do there was basically she equipped uh, the lantern over her boots because she's going to need a lantern in the next split. Um, and by doing that over the boots, it made her dismount off Morphil at that time and then she quick grab back onto it. Um, so the Morphil fight is very, very quickly one of the faster bomb fo uh, boss fights, sorry. Awesome. So that is all of our few shadows collected, I believe. So that's our first kind of uh, hundo requirement. You have to get all of the boss, uh, the few shadows are. That means we're half um, done, so right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so within 80%, we have to fight Morphil. Um, and the reason we have to is because, because Morphil is the final few shadow boss fight. It's the only one it checks. So the thing I was explaining earlier about, oh, if you get the last one, it presumes you've got the other two. Um, so Morphil is mandatory in 80% and City in the Sky is also mandatory because um, Morphil is the last few shadow and then Argorok is the last mirror shard. Um, so those two will effectively always be in 80%. Um, and now we're going into MDH, which is a 9.5, 10 minute uh, collection cycle. Uh, we got a mini game in there. We got a we got a uh, one of the star mini games, um, and we've got a yeah. Then we got a lot of a lot of being wolf link. Yeah. So since we have master sword, uh, we can transform a free will during MDH, and it's really silly. It, it is. It is so good. It is fantastic. So, oh, the. From uh, like a, a storyline perspective, um, the reason MDH is so after this cutscene that Nuki's about to skip, and um, basically Zant appears and then makes Midna really weak and ill, um, and so what we do in the speed run is we go off and collect everything while she is in pain on our back. That's kind of how it works. Um, we basically run off and we go and collect a bunch of po uh, some pose and we collect some bugs and we do a mini game and kind of everything else apart from go straight to Zelda. Um, but it, it, the reason we do this is because um, time of day doesn't move within MDH, so the, the day-night cycle hasn't started yet. So when this split finishes, from that point onwards, that's when the day-night cycle is, and so all the movement within that time period is very important. It's quite funny. I, um, on a right note, uh, I think you just activated my Google Assistant somehow. <laughs> I was just staring at that while you were that talking. Is, that is very impressive. What's the trigger for it? Like, is it is it like an Alexa? That I don't that? know. I have no idea. Very impressive. That is, that, that is very impressive. Um, so what you see here also on the side is we have the sky, the statues. So basically, when you get um, the Dominion Rod and you get it powered up, you're able to move statues in the overworld. Um, but we actually don't do that at all in this run. So yeah, we have no need for the sky characters. So we actually don't. I oh know we use we the power dominion rod once. Yeah, once in um, Farron. Um, but that that is literally it. We don't. It doesn't serve much of a purpose in this run. That's so what Nukes can do. Is oh, I thought you're gonna transform. She's gonna transform now, and basically what that'll do is that it will let her start the uh, the star mini game. Oh, is that faster to transform? Um, so. It is, yeah, but it's 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 negligible. Um, so this is I'm gonna guess his name. I think it's I think it's Parlo or Parlo or something like that. It's Parlo, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and basically he has two mini games for us: so Star One and Star Two. Um, and what they do is they upgrade our quiver for us. Um, so we get the big quiver and then we get the giant quiver. Um, and actually the benefit of getting them within the run is that it also refreshes our, um. Our arrow count. So if we have no arrows, we get a full arrow count just out of this. Um, but this is like a like a 10 second mini game. It is very quickly. Yeah, I think that was sub 10. I think so too. Wait, um, so we got the big quiver, and we'll get um we we'll get the giant quiver later on when we do star two, which takes it takes a bit longer. It's like 35, 40 seconds. Um, and also, actually, this is our first introduction of um, Agatha. Um, so Agatha is our, our bug lady. Um, 
Should we basically give her 24 golden bugs throughout the run? She gives us a bigger wallet, a bunch of money, and then an even bigger wallet. Um, so this is our first of three visits to her. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to give her six bugs? Six, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Um, and what that'll do is that we'll... We're at 88 rupees now. So by the end of it, I, if my maths is correct, we'll be at 438. Um, so we're going to get a fair amount of rupees from her. Um, which is really good for later in the run. I think my maths is correct. I'm proud of that. It's 150 and then 200, so yeah. Yeah, so the first the first um, bug will always give you the bigger wallet. So now we can hold up to 600 rupees. Um, and we're going to give her two sets of pairs. So the first of a pair gives 50 and the second of the pair gives 100. Um, unfortunately, there is no way to skip this. Um, if there was anyone who plans on finding an exploit for skipping this that would be fantastic because uh, we spend an annoying amount of time in the run talking to her about her bugs i'm actually curious how long it is i think beast timed it it, it is quite long like i'd say it's a, it's gotta be 10 seconds per bug even 10 to 15 seconds and there's 24 bugs like. mm -hmm. so it is it is a fair amount and also, the menuing is surprisingly difficult to do perfectly. Oh, it's so hard. Yeah. The The menu is very, like, almost overly responsive to your inputs. Um, and now we are finally off to help uh, to help Midna. So we're going to go over to Telma's Bar, which we did the wagon escort from. Um, and they're going to kick us out, and we're going to talk to this cat called Louise. Um, and Louise is going to open up the sewers for us. Um, and also in the sewers, we're going to find uh, Giovanni, who is the reason we need to get Poe's. So Giovanni is our Poe guy, and then Agatha is our uh, our bug lady. Um, so you t Louise doesn't serve much of a purpose in the run. You talk to her now, and you'll talk to her once later on. Uh, but she is Telma's cat, because um, for some reason in the storyline, it's a big thing that, about the fact that you can talk to animals, because you are an animal. Uh, but it really doesn't play much of a role. I just see someone in chat writing all caps, FAT CAT. Yes, that is, yes, that is, that is the purpose of it. We love Luis. Yeah, there is a, um, there, there is a slight glitch you can do there to, like, to glitch out the cutscene, um, but it's yeah, it's not worth consistently trying. I think it saves. I think it's like five seconds. It's something like that. It it basically the camera angle gets fixed in a location because we uh we made a glitch out. Um, so down here we've got Giovanni. So Giovanni would like us to um to capture all the pose because uh, he's trapped in something. And when we give him 20 pose cells, uh, he gives us great fairy tears, which basically fully re heal you, um, increase your damage to make your damage quite strong. Um, and we can actually use it for um, killing bosses in fewer cycles. Um, so there's a way you can do it for Argrok, you can do it for Beast Ganon. Um, it's, it's really cool. Unfortunately, and now we are down. Uh, oh, yeah. Argrok 2 cycle. You don't go for Ragnarok 2 cycle. It is, it is very, like, it, it is surprisingly difficult. Um, I believe it's two 10 frame windows. But if you fail it, it's a big issue. Yeah. It only saves about 20 25 seconds. It is one of those really cool things. More style. Yeah, we have a. Yeah, we have a we have a fair amount of that within this run. There's a, there's a fair amount of like twenty to twenty five second skips. Um, so like Argrok two cycle, we have um, Darknut, which is the big the big soldier guy. Um, we can skip some of them. Um, we can skip Death Sword. Um, they all kind of save about twenty to twenty five seconds. Um, but they all look really cool. Like the the Death Sword skip looks insane. Like it it just it looks like something that shouldn't be possible. Uh, and now, basically, we are retracing our steps that we did earlier in the run. Uh, so we're going to go over to Zelda again. This is our second time seeing her. Um, but when we're on the rooftop, there is a wind cycle. So basically, you want to—you're running against this wind that 
works every couple of seconds and to get across to the other side. But, the, but ropes in this game are very, um, they're very finicky. Very interesting. Yeah, they're they're quite hard to walk onto. A lot of the time, like you try to get on it, and you'll just walk next to it and run off the edge. Um, so it can be it can be quite weird. And so this is uh, the outside area. So yeah, you can see the wind is kind of running. And there is a cycle you can get, um, but it is, you've got to basically play it perfect for this point. Um, and also the bridge you jump onto is weird. You can just randomly clip through it. Yeah, and sometimes whenever you jump, you just don't jump. Or something yeah, like that happens. That, yep, that, that's a perfect example. Yeah, that it's 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 a moving it's a moving kind of object. So the just the hit particles on it are just very very strange. It's tempted to go for that, but wow, I didn't get a jump. I'm just gonna run across. This yeah, is why it's, I don't like MDH. <laughs> it's just this singular section. Yeah, great music though. Great music. That section. Where tries the charm? And now we will be heading into our first day night side. Um, so what we're going to see Nuki do is she's just going to spend a bit of daytime um, collecting a couple of things. There's a very interesting uh, mini game where we collect a lot of fruit. Um, which will make more sense when you see it. Um, and basically, by the time we finished our second mini game, and um, we want to, we want it to be nighttime, or approaching nighttime if you're speedy, if you're very fast. So we got a po we got a, a po we got a bug here. We got a bug uh, on the other side, and then we've got another golden wolf. Um, and this golden wolf will teach us backslice. So this is the trick that I said, although it serves very little purpose combat wise, it is really, really good for movement. It'll get us over railings and stuff that we shouldn't be able to go over. While you're going through backslice stuff, is it cool if I just be quickly be right back? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and it's just backslice and then some. We're gonna do a normal mailman skip and do some Castle Town stuff. So if you have any announcements or anything, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, I would like to remind everyone uh, that, well, while we are having this wonderful event, is a Winter 23. We are raising funds for an amazing organization, Alzheimer Fonden. We've been supporting them for quite a couple of years. And um, I mean, we're currently watching a really, really long run. Uh, if you ever have, like, uh, imagine having seven hours of your day time to uh, perform or watch a full speed run of this, this amazing uh, game. Um, but maybe you have six and a half hours of your time and you want to listen to a music album called Everywhere at, the end of Everywhere at the End of Time by The Caretaker, which is an absolutely great um, and also very scary depiction of uh, dementia. And Alzheimer Fonden is fighting Alzheimer's and uh, dementia-related diseases. And um, we want to support them in their quest, because if you've li listened ever to this uh, quite scary music album, uh, you will know that. Uh, and also, if you have had a relative or a friend going through this, uh, you know that this is uh, something that you want to, that you want to be part of um, helping uh, get out of the world. And a researcher at Uppsala University, actually funded by Alzheimer Fonden, has discovered an antibody that has the potential to become the first disease-modifying drug against Alzheimer's. This could be the first step towards a cure. So um, with that information that there are breakthroughs in the research and uh, we can actually make a difference happen, 
Um, I think this gives us hope that uh, Alzheimer Fund and are on a great way uh, to make the world better for all of us. And we appreciate all of your support. Um, don't feel bad if you can't donate much. Every single dollar counts. Uh, and it's, it's a great progress towards fighting this uh, quite scary and um, horrible disease. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so not, not, my, not much going on. We're going to go to South X, then I'm going to pick up a bug and then get a hump sweater. This is the first use of backspice. I didn't actually have to use it, but I felt stylish. Have returned. Welcome back. Yeah, that's what's cool about backslice there. So backslice basically lets you, if you side hop, you can do like a rollout of it. So even if you don't do the B attack, it lets you side hop onto a railing and then roll over it to the point that you can jump to the other side. <laughs> um, and now we're about to learn this helm splitter. So this is the one that's kind of a second part of um of shield bash so basically you you shield bash to stun him you jump over him and then you hit him in the back um this can be used in temple of time for a really cool trick uh, where basically you front flip over an enemy to um to jump over a uh, like a railing yeah and we'll see that in about hmm. no no even not like an hour and a bit an hour and a bit. Isn't hour and a bit, like, probably. Like two hours, isn't it? I'm not yeah, sure. yeah, probably. It's in, it's it's definitely starts with the four. Yeah. Yeah, I know that much. Yeah, it starts with the four. Um, so what we're gonna do here is there's actually a hundred rupee chest hanging out under here. Um, so that's really good for our rupee routing. Um, and now Nuki's gonna jump off, and we're going to do um, the plum one mini game. Um, so Plum is a bird that hangs out in Lake Halia, um, and um, Plum would like you to collect a bunch of different fruit uh, in this minigame. Um, so the way the minigame works is that there's all different fruit. There's like oranges, watermelons, strawberries, stuff like that. They each give you a different amount. But if you chain together fruit of the same kind, it multiplies. So if you go like, oh, if it was a, F a five a five point fruit it'll go five ten twenty and so on and so forth um so what we want to do here is we want to just focus on strawberries 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 are the one to get um and so if we get i think it's six of them seven of them we clear ten thousand points which is the amount of points we need um and actually we'll use this mini game later not to do the mini game again but actually to um to skip a different mini game uh, so there's a fair amount of mini games in this in this game for a, quite a uh, darker game, I guess. Um, the, the mini games are quite goofy. <laughs> I think it's, it just feels so out of place. Like, <laughs> I think it's ten strawberries actually. Oh, that time. would make sense because because ten times uh, something times. starts with the ten. That yeah. does. Yep. Yeah, so now Nuki's got enough, so she can collect all the fruit she wants or none of the fruit. Um, but what this is doing is, so when you start, after you come out of MDH, I believe it sets the time to midday. And so um, the way the way the game works is that our morning starts at 6 a.m., our evening starts at 7 p.m. So that is your window of time to do either daytime or nighttime things. So MDH set it to midday, so we have to waste seven hours in game um, before before we get to nighttime. Uh, so what Nuke's gonna do here is she's going to go into um, after she uh, gets a, a warp portal, and um, she's going to do fishing. Um, so with fishing, uh, it's effectively a coin flip. Uh, earlier we had rock paper scissors, now we have heads or tails. Um, so it is a 50 50 on whether or not you pull a fish or whether you pull a bottle um, and we wanted to pull the bottle 
Uh, but the interesting thing about the fishing pond is that time of day moves twice as quick. So if the bottle goes badly, it's twice as bad for the day-night cycle. We do also have the whole setting up is a one skip part right before that. Oh, yes, true. Yeah, so what you'll see here is um, you'll see uh, New King's going through. So this is this is Isa, or Isa. I don't know how you say her name. Um, so this is her, and basically this is her shack where she has like canoes, effectively. Um, but there's a bunch of rocks within it. Um, so what you're going to do is basically you blow up the rocks. So she's like, oh, cool. Can you go down the rest of the path and clear the rest of the rocks? Um, and we're going to save warp. Um, and then later on, we're going to clip out of bounds and skip the whole mini game. Um, so that'll happen not 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 too far in the distant future. So we clear that first rock, and then she's so stoked, and she would love to send us down there. And we're just going to save warp and go the other direction. Yeah, that's too much but work. We, we will be back for her. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Isa 1 is very, very boring. Um, Isa 2 is just... It's way better, but it is quite difficult. It's annoying. Um, yeah, so Isa 2 is basically you go down that path and she has a bunch of pots and you need to shoot 25 of the 30 pots. Um, but if you fail it, it can lose you like two minutes. Um, depending on like in what scenario you failed it. Yeah, because you have to redo the minigame and then also it affects your day-night cycle. Yeah, it is. Um, it can be quite brutal. Uh, so what we're going to do here, a weird thing, which I actually didn't know until I started speedrunning, you can claw shot within the water. I think on the Wii version, you can actually claw shot underwater. Oh, really? Which I, I was not aware of. I was not aware of that either. No, yeah. I'm pretty sure they, they just hang out underwater and just pull the heart piece underwater with them. <laughs> um, so Nuki here in this little kind of pond uh, off to the side is looking for the bottle. So there's a really small time that you will see the bottle at the bottom of screen. I don't think that's that. So basically, um, it'll be a fish or it'll be a bottle. And the bottle is quite easy to... Sorry, it's quite distinct to see it. One thing about this pond is that if you pull... We're just going to pull a fish. But if you pull, I think, I think it's four fish, then that... Uh, four fish, yeah. You can't catch anymore. You effectively soft lock yourself from getting the bottle. Yeah, you need to save warp and re-enter. Uh, sorry, you just need to reset because you save warp outside anyway. That's the bottle. That looks like a bottle. Yeah. Is it a save warp or is it a hard reset? Uh, it would be just a hard reset because you save warped out of Isa 1 anyway. Cool, so now we've got the bottle because there's four bottles we need across the run. Because um, that is part of our item wheel. Um, so as I said before, yeah, we don't do fishing within this run. Like we don't do catching every different type of fish. And um, that is in Hundo Plus. Um, and it is like a 15 minute RNG just chaos. Um, so it is thankfully not not part of this run. And now we go to. I don't think we've seen the mailman yet. This run. This is our first time with the mailman. Yeah, and we'll uh, we'll see him after Temple of Time as well. I did a mailman see skip up after, face. um, after, what is that? Backslice, but I'm not sure you have to, if you're getting it here. Uh, you, you don't, yeah, that was part of the older reroute. So on the, on the older reroute, you would get... Uh, you would talk to the mailman after backslice and then not get it here because that way you can run as wolf to the to the flowers or sorry to the horse call and so the, we only have to talk to the mailman once in a run um just to get a letter um but the reason we talk to him twice is because um by talking to him at a certain spot it'll disable the later mailman trigger which would be more costly so that's why we talked to him after Temple of Time. Alright, I'm not gonna shoot this arrow. Yeah, I don't. Uh, nah, because if you don't shoot arrows, yeah, you're good for rocket links. 
Um, so there are um, two very dark caves in this run. Um, if you can't see it very well, I'm, I trust me, don't worry, neither can Nuki. Um, it is quite, they can be quite hard to see through. Lake Harley Cave is a nightmare. That was one of the first things I tested whenever uh, setting up. It's the brightness. Yeah, when I've done a marathon run, I forgot to check it and I couldn't see. Oh dear. And so I kept bonking, I kept bonking at the walls. And so uh, there's a Poe at the end of this cave. And what we can actually do is mid backflip off the Poe. Uh, we can save warp and it'll just count because we pulled, we pulled the soul out so it doesn't care about the rest of the animation. So when we release, we can then just do it and we have three Poe souls so we know it's in the good. And now it is uh, time for Oh, uh, we got the we got the hard pieces, but then we've got Eyes of One Skip, which I know you're not a huge fan of. No, not at all. The current Eyes of One Skip to me feels like a lotto pool, but we'll see. Yeah, it's oh, uh, oh, quite actually. a. Oh. That was the first time I've talked to a Pona ever. I, I'd say I've definitely done it. Um, this is quite a cool LJ. So, um. What we're going to do is we're going to do an LJ to a spot and also target another um, heart piece. And so when we open the chest, we're going to get that heart piece and then straight away get another heart piece. So we got one. And then straight away we got two. And now it is eyes of one skip time. So basically, um, the fruit minigame from earlier, um, we're going to reload that. But instead of actually collecting the fruit, we're gonna we're gonna clip out of bounds, and bonk, and basically what that does is it lets us just swim up the river, which would put us to the end of if we did the eyes and mini game, which takes way longer, um, because you have to go down the whole river and blow up debris and stuff like that. Um, so I will I will be quiet for a second. It is, it is quite weird. The margin for it is quite small. That's alright. It doesn't lose a whole lot of um, day-night time. Yeah, at least it's less than it used to. Which is... That's good, at least. Gun. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, that is so cool. The fact that you can bonk and uh, clip out of bounds on the same on the same movement. And now what Nuki can do is she can just swim up the river, and the game will basically put us as if we have just finished the Eyes of One mini game. So it's gonna it's gonna put us in a boat. And then we go straight back into another boat to do Isa 2. So Isa 2, as I said, yeah, can, can be quite uh, can be quite annoying. Um, we spend a fair amount of time on it, so it's if you fail it later on, it can be quite costly. Um, but there is like a set path that we take. We take certain sides of rocks and stuff like that. Yeah, so that um, that Isa 1 skip, that bonk setup, that only got found, I think, two three months ago um just by i don't i don't even know if the person was a runner i think it was just a random member of tp who found it um and it saves it, it allowed a reroute which saved up to 12 seconds so it is it is quite cool yeah and you had mentioned earlier that lhs was uh found by what a reddit user someone from reddit feels like random people find stuff yeah. more than we do yeah, that's the thing. It comes like just that's the whole thing with like trying to find like glitches and exploits and stuff like that. It's just it, it like nothing works until it works. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of people just try random things, 
um in the past just over a year ago um there was a there's a, a, a trick for any percent called stallard skip so the main boss of arbiter's ground is called stallard um and it was seen as a tas only trick um and then a member of the community uh, found an rta viable setup for it which saves a minute 40 basically on any percent so that kind of changed the world record in that for the first time in a while yeah and that's such a cool trick if you haven't seen it i would it is an awesome recommend trick. I'm so happy we don't do it, but I would recommend people watch it. Difficult minigame, but very, very good music. Oh yes, the, mu the minigame music in this game is so lovely. Yeah, this and the snowboarding music is definitely up there. Nothing will get me to like snowboarding after what it's done to me. Oh yeah. It's a bit, of, a bit of SSX tricky. I do want to be holding the bow out for as short time as possible, because you can't row while you're holding it out. Yeah, so the golden like... number here is 25. Um, Pretty good. Yeah, right with now. 25, it doesn't matter as long as we, as long as we end on 25. Yeah, you've gotten I think two of the backups, so you are you are cruising. Just gonna skip that one. Yeah, if you get like any of like these three, and then you get one of the backup ones, or even if you don't get a backup one, you're cruising. Sorry. I was gonna say, yeah, that's kind of punk. There's, there's nothing you can do about that. It's just weird. Yeah, I forgot to turn. So there's like a very set move when we do for this mini game. So basically, we want to, um, like on that, on the second last corner, we want to like chuck a sharp left, um, and it's just kind of the the way the water pulls you can have a massive impact on how it goes. Yeah, this is quite fine. Yeah, this is this is perfect. So as you can see, it's now just a little bit into uh, into nighttime, and uh, we can see a Poe in the distance on Isle of Riches, who's hanging out. Um, and what's convenient about this mini game is it puts us right next to a Poe just in the corner of Lake Hylia. Um, so that is that is quite nice. And then right after this and is then, uh, the silliest warp of the run, you could say. We're at Lake Hylia, we're going to warp to Lake Hylia. Yeah, it is just like, I, d I don't know what the difference in time is, it's probably only a few seconds. But it saves day-night time. But basically where we are now is just across the water from the rest of Lake Hylia. So it makes sense to just warp across the water. And then we've got Lake Hylia Cave, which is basically this very long cave with a lot of chests in it. Um, and we go through it because there's a Poe and a Heart Piece at the end of it. Um, it is quite dark. Um, and also the idea is that, um, well, the problem is if you fall during it, you get put back to the start. It has so many chests in it. They have a special name for it in Randomizer. I can't remember what it is. It's Hype Cave. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, because in, in randomizers, uh, randomizers of this game, if you go through Lake Hylia Cave, it has something like 20 checks in it. And all you need is a way to blow up rocks and, uh, like, I guess a lantern. Whereas in this, we go through it to get a Poe and Heart piece. So yeah, it might be quite uh, a little bit dark on the re on the restream, um, but you're you're just you're missing out on a bit of rolling. Rolling it and both electing. Oh, that's right. Uh, if you have a donation, you can read it. 
I certainly can. We have received $100 from uh, a member in the audience. Kataref sent that amazing amount. Thank you so much. And says, you and Teabag are doing fantastic and I'm proud of you. Thank you so much, Kataf, for this amazing donation. And this also goes to the Hades Dash Only Extreme Measures 4 incentive, which currently sits at 290 out of $2,000. So uh, keep them coming, and I can only confirm you really are doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you, Kadi. Nuki is playing. Nuki is playing. Um, playing very well. This is a good run. Thank you, Kadi. Yeah, this is, uh, there's some people talking in chat just while you're kind of going through the auto scroller. Um, there's people talking in chat about how it is crazy that this is a seven hour run and you're just going through it. Um, I, guess, I guess for you it's a very short run. Yeah, this um, run is not very long for me. <laughs> like, yeah. nowadays I consider anything under 20 hours to be uh, relatively comfortable. It is it is the thing for this uh, for this category that ooh, I'm fine. Um, it is the thing for this category that um, kind of PB attempts of it can be quite difficult because if 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 you're doing a full run, you can let's say only do one run in a day. Um, you kind of want to cherry pick the early game because you don't want to um, you don't want to kind of commit to a really bad early game and have that cost you six hours later. Um, so it can be. It's it's a it's a very good category. It's pro it's my favorite category in kind of any game, um, but yeah, sometimes you do have to kind of cherry pick which runs you want to commit to. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've run all the 3D Zelda 100% as we talked about before. Um, this is probably my favorite. A lot of cool stuff, and it's not, I like, guess, much as we talked about RNG is a lot more bearable and a lot less affected than um, some others. Yeah, RNG in this game is like, it's it, it it can be annoying, but it's not gonna it's not gonna ruin your run generally. Bow can, but like in general, it's like oh, a 10 second time loss here or whatever. Yeah, bow is a special case. Yeah, bow is bow bow be bow. I guess it's worth knowing that also the so the the kind of the penultimate boss of this game, the puppet Zelda uh, fight, is also entirely RNG. Um, but rather than being like rock, paper, scissors or anything like that, there's just nothing you can do. Um, it just, it just goes how it goes. Um, there are seven, uh, there are seven cycles you wanted to do, uh, but you're kind of just at the game's mercy at that point. Also, Wolf Link decided to shake ass. So proud. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what caused that. Um, someone would like to know, can you put on the lantern and the iron boots for when you finish Ganon? Sure. And, and uh, uh, oh wait, no, these stats you can put on magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So, if you've never seen uh, the end of a, a run in this before, when you do the ending blow on Ganon, you can equip your iron boots. Um, and basically what that does is that you then keep on the iron boots during the cutscene, um, which can, can make... Uh, Quite a funny cutscene. And it, it is quite good to see. It, it makes a, it makes an interesting amount of noises. Uh, but now we're into kind of the probably one of the bigger heavy running splits. Um, so basically, we have to get a Poe up here. We have to then go over to Gerudo Desert, um, and Gerudo Desert is very big. Um, and all we want in it is a couple of pose and um, a few other little bits and pieces before we get to Arbiters. But that will be the end of our day-night cycle. So that will be when we enter Arbiters, we're 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 good to go on day-night one. Tell you what we got coming up after that. Then we got a bit more running around. We'll we still have a couple of dungeons to go, so we'll have Arbiters first. And then we also have, we have Snow Peak, Temple of Time, and we've got City in the Sky, Palace, Hyrule, Cave of Ordeals. we still got a, there's a lot of dungeons in the latter half of this run. Yeah, it's definitely more dungeon rushy. There's like quite yeah, a bit well, of time I, I, between now and Arbiters, but then, then we do like 
no peek immediately, and then temple time is right after that. And then there's yeah, snow peak and temple time is minutes apart. Like, um, and then we go through. That's really unfortunate. Okay. That is that's like a borderline frame perfect like <laughs> item wheel pull. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to climb up, but it wouldn't let me. I'm gonna turn the camera since this is right at the waterfall. It's very laggy. Yeah. Very, very laggy. So a lot of times when you're swimming, it's quite laggy. So so side on camera is a good way to do it. And then also what you'll see in Gerudo Desert is that because the the whole zone is quite laggy, uh, Nuking is going to run in C down. So basically just tap C down, like the camera stick down, um, and it just gives you a wider view, and that's a, that's a good lag reduction. Um, and then we actually get to learn my favorite hidden, well, uh, top two hidden skills. Uh, we get to learn uh, Mortal Draw, um, which is basically if your sword is put away, um, and you press A on an enemy, you pull the sword out and basically like, mega hit them. Like it's, it is very, very strong, but you have to have your sword away to do it, um, which is the, the only kicker about it. Yeah, that's like, that actually reminds me about OHS. I need to remember not to mortal draw whenever I'm rolling behind the... Oh, oh, trying, oh, trying to roll? Yeah. Yeah, if you take your rang out before. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I did, I more drove someone yesterday, and I was like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it is, it is a quite run-heavy split. Um, we have the bugs here that sometimes play nice and sometimes don't. Um, so bugs can kind of do whatever they want. Um, they fly at different directions and different heights. They stay within the same kind of general vicinity. Um, but they they kind of owe you nothing. Like they can just kind of. If this bug up here wants to stay on the wall, the bug can stay on the wall. This one is infamous. Yeah, this one's shocking. The ones in the late, the last day-night cycle are shocking for flying away from you. That looks good. Yeah, that looks like it. Grab. No. Oh, no. oh, spoke too soon. No. That's fine. That's my fault, though. It is just that thing that the second it gets away from you, it gets so out of hand so quickly. So this um, piece, uh, piece of Bridge of Elden here, so earlier when we had that messenger fight, when they took away the bridge, that's where this has ended up. Um, and actually underneath that is where Cave of Ordeals is. Um, so we will we will be coming back to Cave of Ordeals just before Hyrule. So we do it between Palace and Hyrule. Yeah. Not happening. This area is also really laggy. Yeah, incredibly laggy. I don't think there's any way to avoid it. Um, and now what we've got is... Um, there's actually three Poe's in very quick succession over here. Yeah, so we have devs... a Poe outside of Grotto. Go ahead. Sorry? I was going to say the devs got really lazy. Yeah, they did. I think they just put, they must have put these in last. They're like, oh crap, we don't know where to put them. So they're like, oh, we'll just put them all here. But so there's one Poe outside the grotto and two Poe's in the grotto. So you get literally a 20th of the Poe's within about 30 seconds. Um, and then we get to go steal a boar from the Boblins. Uh, which we unfortunately don't get to use enough of in this run. Okay, this oh yeah pose so when we attack our pose what we want to do is we want to we want to not be in senses and we want to charge up our b attack and so that way the poe comes down to us and then we want to quickly turn on senses have it target and then attack them and um, and it's just a it's a much faster way of um did that not hit him i'm not sure i guess not that is very strange Yeah, lots of pose very quickly. Um, as I said, when we get to 20 pose, uh, we go back to Giovanni to get great fairy tears. Um, but we actually never need to go back to him with 60. 
I can't remember what he gives you, but apparently we just don't uh we just don't need to. Maybe it's just I think a, he gives you more fairies. A kiss on the cheek, maybe. We can dream. I think he gives you more fairies. So you can put like a bunch of fairies in bottles or something. I see. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's not part of the run. We, we talked to Giovanni twice and that's good enough for us. Uh, but there can actually be a problem there if you um, if you walk into that light before you get on the board. Um, it alerts all of the uh, kind of other bobblins. And um, it can actually get really out of hand that they they start running around on the boards and you can't pick yourself up on. It can it can get very like it gets very difficult. And also you're wearing Zora armor, so you're basically one hit. Yeah. Yeah, because fire and ice do ten times to Zora armor, which something like Armagoma, where the laser from Armagoma does ten hearts, like that. Yeah, I think if you go, I think if you go to Goma, it, you can get one shot. Um, but what's actually a strange thing is that, so yeah, it's it's a lot of damage for Fire and Ice, but within the Snow Peak dungeon, um, the boss's attacks, even though they are icicles, don't count as ice damage, they just count as normal damage. Um, Makes sense, right? For some reasons. Yeah, Blazetta, so Blazetta's tiny freezers are ice damage, but her big icicles are normal damage. So we actually keep on the Zora armor from the point we put it on until Cave of Ordeals. And this is a bottle draw, so we have to put the sword away, and then it's just a, a huge hit. Um, and actually now we're going to see uh, quite a cool trick, uh, which I haven't seen in the run so far, um, called Map Glitch. Um, so basically, within Map Glitch, uh, if you... If you call Midna on the same frame you pull up your map, you can warp away to an area, but because you've talked to Midna, it actually won't make you warp, but the game thinks you've warped. And so what that does is it bugs out all of your load zones so that you can't go through any. So Nuke isn't do it here, so she's going to unplug her controller, plug it in while holding the buttons. Uh, Keypad hands. Um, going and then she's going to... She's gonna pick a place, and then Minna says, "What are you doing?" And now, the loading zones do not work. So if if Nuki went back to the area that she came from, um, it she wouldn't be able to. She would just fall off the edge of a map. Um, and what this lets us do is because these load zones go um primarily downwards, uh, she's actually able to enter the King Baldwin three fight through the underneath the uh through underneath the fight. So she just jumps attacks, and now we're going to end up in the in the fight. Uh, it's not very good. He can he can be a bit weird. His hitbox is a bit strange. Um, yes, that's quite cool because yeah, the the loading zones keep going downwards, but um, we'll see them later on when we get to Snow Peak. So basically, when you're climbing Snow Peak Mountain, you're normally supposed to get a Reekfish, which leads you up through the blizzard and you're able to do it. Um, but if we use Map Glitch, we can actually just run up Snow Peak as is, um, so we can just completely by bypass the blizzard. I think those are the um, only so two cases cool. of uh, map glitch, right? Uh, yes, run. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it can it can be quite cool. Um, if you just want to use it for whatever reason, just it, the the only thing is that it is very easy to soft lock if you do it. So if you if you use map glitch and then dig into a grotto, for example, um, you've soft locked. Because you'll just be permanently in a state of climbing into a grotto and it will never load. I've never actually seen that. But it sounds funny. I did it in a rando. 
I was like, oh, I'll be so smart. I'll go up Snoopy Curly in a rando. And then I went to dig into a grotto and then <laughs> the run end. <laughs> so what's interesting about um, the Bulbling Camp is that, and this is for, uh, I don't think it's a thing in the rando anymore. I think it was a thing in the earlier stage rando. Um, when you when you burn down the camp by fighting KB3, uh, King Bulbling 3, sorry, um, all of the chests open. Um, so I know there used to be a thing on the rando that if you don't open all the chests within the within the camp before fighting King Boblin, you can soft lock a run if something good was in that chest. That's so funny. I would I imagine think, that's I think fixed it now. Yeah, I think I think that was an early an early thing. That Poe is almost out. Awesome. And now we're into Arbiters. Um, so Arbiters is it's quite a quite a difficult dungeon. It's probably the um, most difficult to optimize. There's so many. Yeah, it hits. is. It is a crazy dungeon. Um, we have to collect. There's basically in the main room there are four poses um, that we have to collect the souls of to open the Poe gate. Um, but we can do a trick called Poe 1 skip, which effectively we still get Poe 1, but we can get to Poe 4 better. Um, and we'll see that. We'll see that in a little bit. Okay, it can be quite difficult to optimize. I still find it so funny that it's called Po One Skip, but we still get Po One. Yeah, it's it, it's all for um for any percent. Right. Oh. Um. But actually, what a, what a weird thing about Arbiters is is that um we can skip both fights in it. So we can skip Death Sword and we can skip Stalor. So for some reason, it's the only dungeon that we can just skip both fights, but still get like get past them. Um, but both about, are very, uh, very hard tricks. One of the most infamous spots in uh, low percent is the gate. Yeah, this is where you do the uh, the rupee slide. Um, so low percent is a category extension we have. World record is like 14 hours. Um, and basically the idea is completing the game with as few items picked up as possible. Um, and what you can do there is that when you get a... When you get a text box from uh, picking up a rupee, like a blue rupee, and that text box pops up saying, hey, you got a blue rupee, um, Link actually moves like fractions and fractions and fractions of a, a unit. And so what we do is we take a pot and we put it over by that big po gate. And at a very particular angle, we, uh, we get that text box by spin attacking the rupee. Um, and what that does is if we leave it for like nine hours, we can actually clip through the gate to the other side. Yeah, so you just uh, so it is, it is quite cool. Yep, go go AFK, do one of these runs, like you can do whatever you want during it. But it is it is a very insane trick. Yeah, I think world record is like a 14 hours and 8 minutes or something. Uh, I'm just gonna claw shot up and get the next pro uh, if you have any donations. That would be good. We do have one! Albatross has sent $10 and says, Greetings from Portugal, old viewer but first time donating to this wonderful cause. Watching Nuki Dog speeding through one of my favorite Zelda games while chilling at 4am is a must do. What took me more than 30 hours to complete is nothing compared to what she does. P.S. Shout out to Blue Hoodie Guy and crowd. Give Jet a wave. Well, he has just, uh, you mentioned it is 4am, so crowd has gone, uh, 
Too bad, however, this does not mean that this run is for now. You are all still watching, you're all still donating, which is awesome. Also, this donation goes towards the name of um, uh, Harvest Moon of the dog name, and the name is Trans Rights. So, thank you for picking the donation, and I will let the blue hoodie guy know tomorrow that you gave a shout out. Thank you. He knew, he knew you'd be asking for him. Chat, chat is very obsessed with Blue Hoodie Guy. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got two of the Poe's now. Uh, so we've got the one in the main room and the one on the side. Um, and now this is where we're going to do Poe 1 skip. Uh, so if we do a uh, an LJA over, we can walk through the sand and climb on this little piece of a pillar that's propped out. Um, and roll and jump and grab a, uh, a little ledge. Uh, so it is quite a cool trick. Uh, yeah, very, uh, bombing the Moldrums is a, is a very smart play. Uh, let me start. Yeah. It's, quite a, it's quite a weird trick because you need to you need to sink a certain amount but not too much. It's a very, it's 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 a fairly precise amount. I think I just turn my camera too much than what I'm used to. A little bit of a hard time. Oh, that should be fine. Okay, nice. Yeah, it is quite a, a quite a finicky trick. Um, it's used in eighty percent, so we can skip. Well, skip Poe one. Um, so now what we're gonna go over is to Poe four. This, I, I honestly, I debugged this. Well, Beast debugged this the other day. That bomb is just very weird. I just had a brain blast during the inputs for that. That's right. It, it is five That's... a.m. Oh. <laughs> Didn't need the bomb anyway. Um, so the next room has Poe 4 in it. Um, and basically Poe 4 has um, has some RNG based on how you apply to it. So, so the Poe does something um, and you will respond to it in a certain way depending on which which um, Poe it is. So it's like, oh, if it's the front Poe, you need to do this. If it's the left Poe, you need to do this. Um, and that's to help with the RNG. I corrected myself, beast. All right. They can also just kind of choose to spin around as long as they want. Yeah, that's what they're doing. That is insanely unfortunate. I thought I saw the right one. And I know exactly why, because me and Beast got the same RNG twice in a row, which was right, right. My brain was like, wow, three times. Uh, so now we've got one more Poe, and then we do quite a cool trick, actually. We get the boss key in this run, re sorry, in this dungeon, way earlier than we should. Um, we should have to wait till we fought the mini boss and all this kind of stuff. Um, but we basically go backwards and get it the other way, which is quite nice. Can we get a B attack here? I never remember. Uh, I hold L and mash A. Oh, I see. Or do you mean out of the Because it fixes the, the camera. Time. Uh, for the, for like, after cutscene. Oh, I see. I then just press L and A. Because it fixes your camera and also goes somewhat towards the chandelier. Right, yeah. Oh, 
always a weird room. This room definitely just does what it wants. There is there is method to the madness. There is a way it's supposed to go. Right. Um, and basically, if you if you're taking into account the way that we do the whole one two three three two one for charge attacks, you basically want to go um the re dead one left one right, and basically you hit through it for the first one across and then hit back to it. But it is it can be quite annoying to to figure out. Yeah. So good night, beast. Awesome, and we have gotten our pose. So now we are through the through the pose door. We do have the human movement coming up, which is really cool. If I get it, human movement is very cool. Do you go for the ESS on the second half? Yeah. Yeah, second half human movements, I, I'm awful at it. But people who've run, what, like, Wind Waker and stuff like that are just insane at ESSing. Yeah, so this here is the early boss key. So we're able to just slightly clip behind this and climb up here, and now we've got the boss key. Whereas what you normally need is you need the, um, the spinner and all that kind of stuff. Definitely worse at this first part than I am the second part. Yeah, this is quite cool if it pay if it works. Yeah, nice. Uh, a little awkward. But it works. Let's see if this works out. Thanks. Yeah, awesome. That movement is not as easy as Nuki made it look. Now we have the death sword fight. So as I said, there is there is a way to skip to skip this, um, but it is it is quite difficult. Um, so the way so death sword flies around in a circle, um, and so what you can do is if you set up a charge attack, and he flies around, you can then basically aim at him and launch yourself over the wall. But it is very it is quite specific. And there's a lot that like, you have to take into account camera and positioning and stuff, so it is quite difficult. Yeah, if you remember UMass, that's kind of like that, but just a little more uh, complicated. Yeah, it's like a very harder EMS. During DSS, awesome. he also just likes to get stuck a lot, and I don't know. DSS is just super finicky. Yeah, I, I don't do it. It is very weird. Um, but now what we get is we get to get our um, our very big Beyblade, so we, which we need for the Stalage fight. So we get the spinner, which is, I think is one of the I think it's one of the coolest things that Edith's been in as Zelda game. But it's really cool. I, it's such a sick concept. And the good thing about this now is that because we've already got the boss key and we've got the spinner, we can just go straight to the Stalard fight now. So we can just save warp, run straight through, and then we're uh, we're there.
You're making good time, by the way, if you're just kind of curious of overall. I think I'm... I was a minute behind my PB entering Arbiters. I don't know about now because this hasn't been super good. But it's not bad. Given how unkind the early game was to you? Yeah. That's what I was thinking about. I had like a 630, 640 slingshot, which is like a minute on its own. Yeah. That, that split, like, if you have to no reset, it just can go so badly. And also, like, start of run nerves and all that. Yeah. Get our squats in. That includes everyone at home? Yep. <laughs> Ma mandatory participation. So within the Stallard fight, Stallard has two phases. Um, so basically, he's got one phase where you can go around the outside of um, outside the arena, and you basically he sits in the middle, um, in the sand, and he will spawn in a bunch of uh, little skeleton troopers, and basically you need to avoid them and make it to him in the middle. Um, and then he has a second phase where he raises up. Um, like a platform and you basically have to chase him around the place um but what you can do instead is if you do a certain amount of rolls and a piece of movement you can actually do a fast knockdown which saves like 27 seconds i think um which is quite cool it, it is a it's quite a cool way to do it i could have sworn it was more than that it always feels like more it might be more. I think I'm. I think I'm timing 27 seconds off failing it, and how long it took me to back it up. Oh, I see. So it could. It could be. Yeah. It could clear 30. Um, but yeah, as you said, in 80% and stuff, there is a setup to skip this, but it involves metronomes and bombs and words that I don't really understand. So it is quite difficult. Thankfully, we need a uh, need a hard container. Yes. Yeah, that is the whole reason that we fight Stallard, is because we have to collect the heart container at the end of it. Wow. That is... That could, that was nearly perfect. I just wasn't allowed. Yeah. Yeah, so Stallard has notoriously large elbows. Um because and it just blocks us off from being able to to get around him. I cannot get a good bounce. I'm struggling. It it is it is so difficult. Oh my god, that was so that's the work. <laughs> that would just be really slow. Yeah, that's fine. It is, yeah, it, it is a boss fight that can get out of hand quite quickly. If you miss it once, it's very hard to back it up. Yeah. I'll just blame it on RNG and call it a day. That's the way to do it. Let's be running 101. <laughs> one. So yeah, this is um, how the, the second phase goes. Um, so all the sand goes away and we're going to raise the platform up um, and I don't want to spoil anything for you he might not be dead um, T-Bag he's asleep he's sleeping thinks he's loud um, and so he's gonna he's gonna knock us off the edge and basically he's gonna do five rolls wait a small fraction of a time and then uh, go for a fast knockdown Oh, unlucky. I think I went slightly early. Yeah, it, it is that thing that's like, oh, you can go too early, you can go too late.
That's all right. As I said, 27 seconds. It it is a quite a uh, a cool a cool trick. And um, so the problem with it is, if you miss it, the backup for it can be quite annoying. It involves ESSing very heavily and stuff. Uh, but the benefit of having Master Sword is that we can one cycle him. I can shoot goals like Master Sword here. Well, that was Arbiters. I'm not. Arbiter Arbiters was Arbiters. I got human movement, that's all that Oof. counts. Yeah, that, that's the main thing. Spinner, the, like. I don't, if I don't lose 30 seconds in the spinner segment, I'm I'm stoked. Like I'm so happy. So it's just how it goes. Um, and now we're on to another collection split. So basically, our plan is that we want to clear out Zora's domain. We want to free a Goron, get a bomb bag, um, and then we're gonna climb Snow Peak Mountain um, and do a couple of story checks. So if you've ever played this game, the way that you get to Snow Peak is that you um, you catch a fish called a reek fish, um, and that will guide you up Snow Peak. Um, but to do that, you need a sketch from a person called Ashai, who's one of our mates. Um, and you also have to go find Prince Rallus, who will give you a um, like an upgraded uh, fishing rod. But first, we need to raise the mirror. Can't forget that. Yeah, I don't know what it causes. I think I think you would never forget it because I think then you have to warp like any percent, like zoom in, portal, zoom out. This also has my favorite cutscene. The cutscene in between raising the mirror and skipping is the first time we find uh, we find a Ganon exists. Um. And it is my favorite cutscene in the game. A lot of good ones. Yeah. I remember watching it as a kid when I was like eight. And I saw it and I was like, oh my god, again. And I was like, I freaked out. <laughs> um, yeah, now we're off to, off to Zora's Domain. So, um... In Zora's domain, there is a Goron hanging out at the bottom of bottom of uh, the water for some reason. Uh, so we're gonna go we're gonna go free him, um, and then Nuki is going to do what I explained earlier called rocket linking. Um, so when she pulls a bomb out from over her head, she's then going to press A after unequipping the iron boots, and it will um, it'll shoot her to the top of the water. It's quite cool. It only saves a few seconds, but it's quite cool. Got slopes or slopes. Slopes in this game are very interesting. Why? That's about to say, that's too late. Uh, that's fine. That's alright, at least you're wearing Zora armor. I'll get to show it off next time. Maybe. Yeah, we got a we got a, a bit of a, a bit of collecting and pose and bugs and stuff like that. Um, so if there's anything on the admin side, happy for that. If not, I'll keep talking. Should get the blue. Oh. I tried to jump into it. It's quite annoying because if you don't do it, you end up talking to you end up getting the text prompt and it's like yeah. I just lost four seconds for a blue or whatever, like it's not. Yeah, and this is where uh we'll do this again that glitch after some across and through the wooden sign. 
Yeah, so this is, as I spent earlier with map glitch, it basically deactivates loading zones. Um, and so Snowpeak is going to have a blizzard at the moment, but because we deactivate the loading zone, um, it's not going to make us void out. Instead, we can actually just run through the snow. So we're not going to be able to see very far ahead of us. Um, but it is, yeah, it's it's a lot faster than actually doing the intended route. And now we get to talk to Ashai for the first time on the run. I believe this is the only time on the run you talk to her, and then she rocks up at the end with like a like a rocket launcher. <laughs> I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, what you'll see here is sorry. Yeah, it's a very strange cutscene. Um, so what you see here is basically when Nuki crosses over here, and there's going to be a flashing kind of hey talk to Midna. Because Midna is trying to tell you, hey, don't go ahead. You're going to vote like you're going to struggle in the blizzard. Uh, but we're just going to run straight through and it will be OK. So the Midna text will pop up. Yeah, or, sorry, the Midna nowhere. prompt. Yeah, so we're able to just run through the blizzard and we have three pose we need to get. Um, but the problem is at the end of the um, at the end of climbing Snow Peak, there's a dig spot. Uh, I went too high. Got it. Yeah, it's there. Um, there is a dig spot, and the problem is that with map glitch, we can't load zones. So if we dig, we actually soft lock. Um, so what we need to do instead is there's a howling stone at the top of Snoopy. And if we howl, it will deactivate our map glitch because it's saying, oh, you've howled, you're clearly here in the game. Awful, though. It's very awful. There's the one after uh, this and the third one. Snow Peak. I don't like that. I don't oh, like yeah. that one either. No. Uh, we do have to get the house stone anyway for 100%, but I know any person uh, just like house once and then leaves. Yeah, so they get the they use the howl to get rid of Maglitch, but they don't how to actually get the golden wolf. Um, also, if you're wondering why Nuki is running in senses mode, um, so when you do map glitch, um, as I said, it messes up your loading. Um, so the thing is that when you turn on your senses, uh, you actually can't disable them. Um, because you can't reload the world, or reload the map, sorry. Um, so we're just kind of stuck in this two feet in forward view, like two feet in front of you, uh, view. If you get hit, it does. Uh, but now, that... yes, true, yeah, if you get hit, it, um, it clears. Uh, but now that we've done the Howling Stone, we will, um, yeah, the map list should be gone, and we can go up to get uh, the Snowpeak portal. And then we can do a bit of snowboarding, which is very exciting. It's the second best Howling Stone, in my opinion. This Maybe the best. Good. I'm not sure. Very torn. There are there are like some of them are very good. Hidden villages is great, but it goes on forever. Yeah. Yeah, so we got this, um, and actually what's gonna be weird is that we even though we're gonna get to the top of Snow Peak and we could just go snowboarding now, we're actually gonna have to go pick up a story flag in the form of uh, the Carl Earring from Prince Rallis, because if we actually don't do that then, Prince Rallis will disappear and we won't be able to collect it, so we won't be able to 100%. So we have to do it there and then. Because um, Prince Rallis disappears if you do Snow Peak. So it's stuff like that that makes um, it makes routing so, so interesting to try and figure out. When does the, the new route get out? Because I know it's earlier, right? Uh, when do we get... Carl Earring? The, yeah, Carl Earring. Um, we do... Off the top of my head? Um, we get Snow Peak Portal before Isa 1 and Isa 2. Um, we get Coral Earring at the same time. 
but because we can just warp straight to Snow Peak, it all gets kind of messed around. Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we get Snow Peak. We get Snow Peak Portal, and then we go and do Eyes of One. Or Eyes of One Scoop. Alright. You can see there how much damage it does in um, in Zora Armor. Yeah, even just the keys. I bet Nuki will skip the cheese. I'm sorry to tell you, Nuki will be skipping the cheese. What is the cheese? There's there's uh, there's Ordon cheese in Snow Peak. Mm. In one of the rooms. So the thing in Snow Peak is that we actually we we skip a lot of Snow Peak. Snow Peak is another dungeon that we skip a lot of it. Um. So we actually, I'm, I'm gonna ruin it for you. We actually don't shoot a cannonball. Uh, it's actually not a, it's not in this, not in this run, unfortunately. Yeah. In the Wii route, they have to get this, they have to get the stuff. Um, but in this, in this route, we get ball and chain within like two minutes. Um, and then we actually do a very cool trick called a, a key super jump. And it's basically like EMS in the way that like you charge on an enemy and manipulate it. But we jump from the floor onto on top of a chandelier. So it, it's quite a um Yeah, it's quite it's quite a cool jump. Definitely one of the most flashy cool parts if you've never seen. Yeah, it lo it looks so cool. If you've never seen if if you've never seen a speedrun this game before, the King Super Jump will look ridiculous to you. Yes, now There's a couple a of those like too. um. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, sorry. No, it's a um, good time I was just gonna say strike. yeah. The... Jump strike, yes, cool. I can't do that. Um. So jump strike is what Nuki is learning now. Um. So basically. If you hold L and A, you basically charge up a effectively like a fancy jump attack, um, which for fighting it kind of sucks. Um, but what we can do is if we put on our iron boots and then charge up a jump strike, and then uh, on the third frame, um, when we release the action, we unequip our iron boots, and we can actually jump really high. Um, because the game is saying, okay, like you need a certain like upwards velocity because you're wearing iron boots. But if you take off the boots, your velocity stays the same. Um, so it is it is uh, quite a cool trick, and we'll actually use it to do effectively human EMS to get back into Grove. Um, so yeah, no, it's a it's an awesome trick. It is very cool. I don't think you'll use it. You'll use it in TOT. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You don't have to, but you, yeah, you can. I'm used. I'll use it on Angel Grove. Yeah. I'm gonna jump to slash. Uh, I'm gonna use it for the the scale. Ah, uh, scale room. Yeah. You'll use it on Angel Grove as well. Um, yep. And for Angel T O T. Do you do Dark Nut Skip? It's all. Okay. Someone in chat asked if you can. Uh, I want to see how you beat the dark nuts. I was like, "There's a chance we don't." Well, you still have um, um keep it ordeals anyway. Yeah, we have um, we have a double, we have a double, um, dark nut floor in cave ordeals. Um, but there is a way within template time that you can skip a dark nut. So you do that moon boots thing I was talking about, timed with a a bomb blast, and it will shoot you high enough to grab to the top of the gate. Uh, but now we have snowboarding. My phone's doing it again. <laughs> oh. I, I don't know what I'm saying to trigger off your phone. Maybe it just is likes you. Is it something that sounds like Google? Is it like, is it a Google phone? It's Samsung. Oh. I'm not sure. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we've got a bit of snowboarding now. Um, there later on after Temple of Time, we're gonna come back here and we're gonna race Yeto and Yeta, um, in two different snowboarding races, um, to win a heart piece. 
And so that'll be after Temple of Time. Nice. So you'll see here that Nuki is jumping a lot and also spin attacking midair. Um, the reason for that is that your speed actually builds more when you're off the ground, when you're not on the floor. So by jumping and spin attacking, we're prolonging our time in the air, um, which is, yeah, which is faster. It is 5.36 a.m., I believe, at the venue. Uh, that's, that's the time in the bottom right, so I'm going to assume that is local time. That would make sense. Not too bad. I'd love for her to have a time on this one. Um, so yeah, now we're going to see Snowpeak. So Snowpeak actually, you can complete the whole dungeon in about 10 minutes. But about 3 of the minutes are uh, cutscenes. Um, so what we're going to do is the first thing here is we're going to do, um, basically get the heart piece backwards. Um, so by going through this left hand room and doing an LJ, we can actually just jump the gap. So we never have to break out the floor. So normally in a casual playthrough, you have to break out this floor. We can just jump across. And then because we're on the underside of a, a floor that's supposed to break, we can just claw shot through it, because why not? Um, so now we need to grab a, a, a small key. Uh, do we? Or is it this hard piece? Small key. It is a small key. I thought it was. That's good. Um, and there's a cool trick here. There's an um, ice block skip. So basically, there's a block of ice here, but if we go down between the like uh, the footpath and the block, we can then transform um, and backflip out the other side. So just like that, we're nearly like we're nearly at freezer. Um, and then there's a freezer skip. <laughs> um, so. If you go over on the right hand side of Freezer um, and you bonk on a wall, you can actually attack in behind it and have him clip you in. There we go. And open the door from the other side. Nice. And we're into the uh, the Dark Hammer fight. So we really, we, we cut through this dungeon very, very quickly. Yeah, very, that was a nice ball and chain. Yeah, so that's that can be quite a hard split. That's effectively the first half already done. Yep. Yeah, just like that. I think it takes two and I think like two and a half minutes or something. It is it is crazy how fast you can do it. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to save warp so we can go back to the start of Snow Peak and we can uh, work our way through to Blazetta. So Blazetta, we need to get a boss key and there's a Poe. And we need a heart piece from above the main doorway. So where Nuki spawns here, there is a heart piece chest above her. Also this skull with a hundred um, rupees on it. Yeah, skull with a hundred rupees and a pearl. Um, which always can be a bit weird. Where's the orange? Oh, there it is. I don't want it to spawn, but okay. Let 
This is the Wolfus Super Jump that we're not Wolfus. The key super jump. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. So by ranging down the keys um, and transforming, and by starting up a charge attack, when the keys flies up to above the chandelier, we can jump up. I can confirm I've changed your lineup for that. Um, I was just thinking about that. I'm glad. Yeah. So what you'll see there is that Nuki is um she's buffering her her um oh oh slip uh, she's buffering her LJs um and so the reason for that is that uh, so as I said before your LJA it has to be out of bounds but Snowpeak's texturing is kind of weird that even though it's a wall there sometimes there are um. That textures behind the wall, which cause the LJ to fail, um, and that can be that can be quite annoying if that happens. Yeah, it's on a Wii, but it is the GameCube version. You know that my PB lost like four minutes in here, so making good pace. Yep, that is a certified snow peak moment. This LJ is a bit. Bit of an odd one. Yeah, and the reason that LJ is so annoying is because, um, well, there is a backup to it now, um, but there used to not be a backup, so if you failed it, you would either have to die or to save warp. Yeah, it's a pit of but shame. Now there is a, a frame perfect, and then a, I think a 20 frame um, window trick. Wait, what's the, uh, what's the backup? Um, uh, it's called... Um, ladder something climb. It's basically you climb up and then just as the um, freezer goes to breathe. Oh, I've seen that. You yeah. drop. Yeah. So this room is faster with bomb arrows, but uh, I didn't learn it. <laughs> and apparently cooler. It, it is very cool. I forgot what direction to hold for this. I'm going to hold left. I believe it is left. It was left. Yeah, so there's a midnight trigger after getting the bedroom key. Make sure not to mortal draw the, the freezer. It's like a rite of passage. Everyone has to do it at some point. I don't think I've done it. I if definitely have wants. multiple times. Alright, and now we are able to get um we're able to do a fast Blizzetta fight. So we go through the first phase and then we're able to do a very, very fast second phase. Yeah, so the 10 times damage happens on those mini freezers. Um, but these big icicle things, they just do regular damage for some reason.
Maybe they just forgot. Pro uh, honestly, probably. <laughs> Alright, and then this second that cycle, we can have one cycle. Nice. And now we've got about uh, about two minutes of cutscenes. There is one cool thing about this cutscene, if I get it, which is the one frame where I can input a backflip. And instead of going backwards, I will go forward. It doesn't save time, but it's cool. Yeah, and then we have a, a very wholesome cutscene. Um, and then we're going to get into all of the moon boots. So what I was talking about before um, with the iron boots and dismounting them. Sorry, unequipping them. Um, so there's basically two back-to-back -back splits where that is the kind of key mechanic. Ah, oh, no, no backflip. No gainer. Uh, is it just um, hold up, throw ball and chain? No uh, you walk left, and you're going to take one step and throw the ball and chain. Okay, cool. Um, so, actually, Twilight Princess on uh, the PAL version of it uh, isn't actually 480p, just in reference to someone's question in chat. Um, the PAL version of this game isn't in 480p, it's in 480i. Um, so for runners, you have to run it through a, a program to force it into a 480p resolution. That's why we have to run Swiss. So we're gonna get one pole outside of Snow Peak, and then we're gonna warp to what is that? It's North Baron. Yeah, reminding myself. I've definitely warped to South Baron. Oh, uh, we all have. Yeah, they're so close together on the map. <laughs> this jump attack is not worth it. Yeah, it's not. I'm just not. I don't know what's so special about that one. I don't know. You can do the one in um, Lake Kali on the way up to Aru's Memo. Like 10 out of 10 times. The second is this one. I don't know if it's the snow. I don't know what it is, but... I think the wedge is just a little yes. higher. It might be, yeah. That could actually be it because of the snow. Yeah. I don't know if the hitbox is the same. Um, so this here is where we'll see Moon Boots. So basically... You want to charge up your jump strike, and then it's on the third frame. Now you want to, uh, you want to unequip it. And if it goes correctly, we will be on the patch of grass above us. This is warm up. Yeah. That's it. That's um, unfortunate. Just bad position, maybe. That's nice. Awesome. So it's like a human version of EMS. So we, we came here literally 25 minutes into the run. Um, and now that's unfortunate. I don't think I dashed. I, it, it didn't fully recover until just after you left. Yeah. Seems wrong. Which is just. I, I don't know if second frame worked for this one or not. Here we go. Nice. Yeah, I think the spacing out on the dashes here is quite weird. I remember go with dash and then I do a dash cancel. Yeah, I'm just gonna... And then a dash to make sure I have one. 
it is quite weird spacing. So unfortunate, but it's all good. So I'm just I'm, I'm I'm reading chat while we're going through um, just while you're chasing down Skull Kid before you do Grove Two Skip. Yeah. Um, good. it is quite interesting in chat that they're talking about um, the Wii versus the GameCube version. Um, so the GameCube version of this is quite limited uh, in terms of how many copies there is, uh, because uh, this game was a like a title release for the Wii. So what they did was they released very few copies of the GameCube version to encourage people to play the Wii version. Um, so the GameCube version costs about 100 USD, I think. I think it's like probably a, a full, fair like ballpark. 20 for mine. Yeah, because it is quite it is quite limited. Yeah, whereas the Wii version sells for 20. Alright, so uh, Grove 2 skip? Yes, yeah. So basically, um, so we've seen the Moon Boots already, um, and what Nuki's gonna do is a thing called Grove 2 skip. Uh, so basically, um, we're currently in Grove 2, um, but the thing is that when you complete Grove 2, um, it sets the time of day, which we don't want to mess with because it'll make it impossible to get some bows. So we're gonna do a thing called Grove 2 skip, which is basically, it's a frame perfect. And moon boots mixed with a frame of a bomb exploding and basically what happens is there's this ramp up here and if it goes correctly Nuki will be hit into the air on top of this ramp and be able to backslice her way up um, and this lets us never impact time of day um, and we'll be able to go over to temple of time just gonna wait maybe I shouldn't have waited That is how you do it. Okay, there we go. That is a perfect example of how to do it. So there are different, um, there are different frames that work. Um, so basically, if you use if you use an earlier frame on the moon boots, sorry, on the bomb, you use an, a different frame on the moon boots. Um, so there are just a, like the frame combinations. Um, but yeah, so it is quite a, it can be quite an annoying trick. They were released simultaneously, but the Wii came out at that time, so that's why they released them at the same time. Um, but the GameCube just has less copies. I believe they came out at the same time. I would imagine so, yeah. Yeah, so the main difference between the Wii version and the GameCube version is the Wii version having no LJAs. Um, and actually for Hundo, on a certain... Um, uh, on an NTSC 1.0 copy, I believe, you can actually skip all the floors in Cave of Ordeals. So what you can do is that in, in Cave of Ordeals on every floor, they have um, a bunch of F, they have a, a like a flame lit on every floor, and you can actually put the flame out with your rank, which it it saves like like 13 minutes over GameCube or something. Because we have to fight 44 floors. You said it has no LJs. And also the Wii version is mirrored. It has no, uh, you said it has no LJs, it's just no boomerang LJs, right? Uh, yes, yeah. So th there's a bit of a, um, a clarification. So an LJ is just stands for a long jump attack. Um, which, if you can do them with enemies, if an enemy is excessively far for some reason, you can do an LJ on the Wii version. But we're talking specifically boomerang LJs, which gets shortened just to LJs. Um, but it should realistically be BLJ. It's 
this fight is always so awkward. Um, and yes, also the Wii version is inverted, um, so all lefts are rights. Okay, one last moon boots, entering double time. Yep, so same way as we did in the way into Grove. I'm in the wrong spot. So it's wrong. It's amazing how I struggled on the easier ones, but the really hard one. The first try. That's always how it goes. I always mess up that one, but I'll hit Grove 2 skip first try. Cool, and now we are into Temple of Time. Also, I totally just took that bug out of lore for no reason. Or from out of nowhere, rather. Oh, yeah, there, yeah. <laughs> there is a bug below that floor. Um, but, um, yeah, Nuki pulled it through the top because we're going to go into the post table, eh, post table, post Temple of Time um, cycle after this, so we want to get the bug out of the way before. Okay. Temple of Time is probably one of the hardest to uh, do optimally, but it's also, well, I, one of the hardest I'd if you're doing seven. the hardest strats. One or two, yeah. yeah. I'd go Arbiters then TOT. Yeah, that makes sense. But it's really cool. What is quite a cool thing about Temple of Time is if you've ever played it casually, basically you get the Dominion Rod, which lets you control all the statues, and you walk the statues around the place, and that um, that's how you kind of get through the game. Um, but what we do in this run is after we get the Dominion Rod, we do a thing called Door of Time Skip. So that door in the background there, that really big one, uh, we're going to clip through that in about 11 minutes. Yeah, that um, trick that Bubsio did blindfolded like nine hours ago in Ocarina Time. Uh, we have one too. Also, I skipped. I, I can't tell if our. Yeah, no, very nice Uku skip. I can't tell if Ocarina of Times is easier or harder than ours. Uh, I guess I, I guess doing a blindfolded is definitely, definitely harder. Um, so these gate things here, again, are kind of optional, as all gates are in TP. Um, so basically, if you I'm if you claw shot up to this, and you wait a few frames, and then just press A and B, you can jump over them. This room's a bit chaotic. Yep, it's absolutely nuts trying to hit the, the claw shot while getting pushed around. Uh. This um this room can also be a bit weird because um of the Lizalfos. They can just kind of be quite annoying. And so what do I know? I, I have not had to do this in so long because I've been doing LHS. I forgot how annoying those statues are. Oh, you can do LHS here. That makes sense. Yeah. It only saves like two to three seconds though. And if there's multiple dogs, it gets really annoying. I did not think about this. And also try that works. Amazing. Hey. That worked out. And also trying to step on that stat like that um switch as wolf is impossible. It just doesn't work. It's so annoying. I'm really sad that the uh, the spinner skip here doesn't save time. You can do like two OJs up to this statue. I think I timed it to be like a few seconds slower. Yeah, so it's cool. it's a weird one. It's good. It's good for rando. Also, I cheated the game. 
And so something else here in the casual game, you would normally get uh, your dom rod and you would come in here and you would um, you would control these statues to walk them down to the switch. Uh, we can actually do really quite precise throws um, and just throw it over onto the switch. little too fast it is always tempting just to give it a go i'm surprised that one didn't work i am also surprised that didn't work having the time of my life you're uh, the way you're like your starting position is a bit more left than what i do but that if if that gets stuck on the top half I, of that and doesn't fall down then there it is the worst thing ever that's a wall all right This room was a little unfortunate, but we got there. It, it is a very tough dungeon to do, like, very fast. Oh, we have LHS coming out. Yeah, so the thing I've been hyping up for four hours, um, that basically there is a room where you normally have to... Uh, hit a switch a couple of times and it'll open and close doors. Uh, but what you're able to do is if you bring a Lizalfos over into a corner and you throw a Rang in the air um, and then very late on before the Rang comes back to you, you do a Helm Splitter and you can actually just front flip over the gate. It is very cool. Yeah, I just take my rang out when I do the little jump here. Yeah. early on the helm on the helm sir. If you do just as the rang's about to touch him. There we go. Here we go. Nice TP time And TP loss. time loss. Yeah lovely. Extra style points. Uh oh, wait I don't need to hit this. I so I, I wasn't sure what you were doing. I was like, go, go do your own devices. That was the whole point of doing LHS. Oh well. Coach teabag. Give me a chuckle. This is really annoying. They are really loving you. Wow. Um, and actually another moon boots coming up in the next room. Um, so normally you have to climb onto a scale, um, and throw the the statues to change the weight of it. Um, but you can do a moon boots and land on a railing and skip it. It only saves about four seconds. It like going for it kind of breaks even. Uh, oh, nice. Are you in the cutscene and on it? Oh, wow. That. I've, I've never seen that. I've not seen that before. That was quite interesting. <laughs> 
be fair to myself, I did learn both LHS and that Moon Boots yesterday. Yeah, it's a, it's it's a style points. I just had to. Nice. Wouldn't it be nice? First L slides. Yeah, so what you can see there is um while the um while the thing that's being claw shot is coming back towards Nuki, what she can do is she can basically um hold L in that direction and you can start sliding to get you closer to the thing. What? How was that? Huh? Oh. Wait, is this Give it a love tap. How oh, is that on? Ah, <laughs> uh, th those the the shells are weird. That's a small key or a heart piece? It's a... It's a small key. Uh, I think it's a heart piece. I don't know why we would need a small key. It must be a heart piece. Because the only thing left is boss key. Oh wait, you're right, yeah. Oh sorry, but... Oh no wait, no you need a small key to open the door. Yeah, you're right. That's what I thought. Yeah, no, you're right. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I was like we're at mini boss, not big boss. So yeah, we're just gonna make our way to uh, mini boss. You can read any donations. Sorry, no good time. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, cool, uh, awesome. Yeah. Because we do have a donation of twenty-five dollars by Big L, saying seven hours of my favorite Zelda game. Sign me up. I've probably put the most playtime into Twilight Princess than any other game, but nowhere near as much as Nuki. Watching this is so impressive. Thanks for showcasing your skills for such a great game. I totally agree. And this donation uh, goes, gives $5 towards the um, Black Penguin blindfold for the upcoming Breath of the Wild, and any percent blindfolded run. And also at $20 go to the uh, Breath of the Wild any percent BLSS showcase. With that, I'm signing off my shift and handing it over to Metaco. Thank you very much and good luck with the rest of the run. Thanks, Seth. Thank you. I was not paying attention to what way. That's right, we've got here you know, we've got our Dark Knight fights. This is actually the first Dark Knight we've seen in the run. Um what you can do is basically when Dark Knight dashes at you here, uh, you can quickly pull the ball and chain and kill them very, very quickly. Um which is which is quite nice. Yeah, nice. So someone I don't even know how, I don't know how to do uh, that's how Yeah, I don't know how to do that one. I just do the slashes and stuff. Uh, it's just roll forward, hold up a little bit longer, not too long. Cool. For that and now we have our Dom Rod. Yeah, so which is good for the dot skip. Door time skip. Yeah, so basically dot skip, uh, door of time skip. Um, what it is, is it's a very, very precise lineup. Um, and what we use is one of the little statues to clip us into the corner. Um, and then that'll bring us straight to the Armagoma fight, the main boss of uh, Temple of Time. Um, so yeah, there's a very very precise lineup that you're looking for. Um, and you get given one of two angles from, it. and if you get a good angle, it's very fast. If you get a bad angle, it can be kind of slow. Um, but I'll let Nuki concentrate on this for a sec. I don't have a heart. Uh, that's good. It's really not good. Alright. 
I might have clipped down on my angle. Be very bad. You clip down to. I think brushing against the door changes your angle. I'm not really sure. This looks good to me. Do I have time not having it? Nope. Might just be the wrong lineup. I usually have a heart here. But it looks good to me. Oh, you use second from bottom heart. I use second top row heart. Yeah, no, I use that. Uh, uh, yeah. One of these is bound to work, right? I think this is one pixel left. That's what I thought, but I was trying to... I don't know, I'm just innovating now. Um, this looks fine to me. That's, yeah, that looks good to me. a co-op speed run now. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so when it clips in, that means I get a frame for a roll. I'm trying to... Okay. That was just random. Go. Yeah, so that was an example of when you get... So when Nuki was um, doing the two rolls, and the reason for that was if you get a bad angle, you have to, you have to roll twice, but if you get a good angle, you can one roll. Uh, so what that does is... Um, it skips basically the rest of the dungeon. So now we can just go straight to the Goma fight and be done. So even though like, it wasn't first attempt, that will still save you so much time over casually doing it, where you have to walk around with the statues and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so it, ideally that split is like 40 seconds. It's, you can get it really quick. Or yeah, something like that can happen. It is that thing that if you fail at once, you start questioning if you know the angle at all. Right, yeah. Also, this fight is um, pure were... RNG. Yeah, basically. Just you kind of pray that Goma, Goma will walk a certain amount of times um, around uh, around the outside. Like, choose a corner. Um, and yeah, there's nothing we can do to change that. I can show off my uh, green box. Break sliding skills. Break slide stuff. So with the um, with the door of time skip, um, there was a setup that someone came up with that was a buffered angle setup, which I personally couldn't figure out. I think still have a bug in your feet. Yeah, I did, but it's okay. It just it just it just left you alone. That's so good. It's my old path. Yeah. I've never seen that before. And yeah, when we get out of them, um, when we get out of uh, Temple of Time, the splits kind of come very, very quickly. But it's just constantly going. There's not really much downtime until you complete the day-night cycle. Right. That's silly. Sometimes with a hammer, if you swing, it just doesn't hit Armaguma for some reason. I don't know why. I'm not sure it's, if anyone um, knows why. If you, yeah, it, I, it, it, it's kind of weird. It's like if you hit Goma with your Dom Rod, it will make the statue miss with its hammer. Oh, I see. It's very... But even then, that's not even a consistent, a consistent reasoning. But that was Temple of Times. So that's another dungeon down.
Uh, I've only got a few more to go. Um, now the main thing will be uh, day-night cycles and collection splits. Um, so basically, when we leave Temple of Time now, the time will be set to midday. Um, and what we have is we have to do a bunch of stuff by uh, 7 p.m., so seven hours in game time, which I think, I, I, I won't quote me on it, I think one minute of in-game time is like half a second or one second. Something like that. Um, and then we have uh, the nighttime cycle. So the nighttime cycle for this is is fairly tight. Um, it can be quite difficult to hit. Um, but if you do fail anything, you can just collect it. You can just do a cleanup cycle at the end. Uh, but we got to start with double snowboarding after we get these uh the bug in the chest yeah if you miss it it's like uh like two or three minutes it's nothing too terrible yeah it's like you basically do what you can and then if you can't get it all it's like it's not it's not the end of the world what's the time of day it does not pass in here yeah, that's a good point to explain. Um, time of day doesn't um, pass in a couple of places. So it doesn't pass inside dungeons. Uh, it doesn't pass inside houses. Um, and also, for some reason, it doesn't pass in Kakariko. Um, so when we're in Kakariko, we're kind of just... Like, you can get speedrun time loss, but you can't get um, in-game time loss. Because if, if, if time moved in Kakariko, the route would be so different. Yeah, definitely. It also doesn't move in grottos, right? Uh, yes, yeah. Grottos, houses, shops, um, Agatha. Quite, like a fair amount of places, a surprising amount. All right, time to do some snowboarding. I think you need like three rupees or something. Oh no. Three whole rupees. I do like risking it with snowboarding, needing like 150 rupees going into it and guarant like requiring treetops, but it is quite sketchy. Yeah, you need five rupees. Yeah, I'll just get the red. Also, the music. So, great. what I've got to do here. Yeah, some great music. Um, and what we've got here is we've got uh, racing Yeto and Yeta. Um, so Yeto is pretty easy. I don't actually know what his final time is, but it's not fantastic. Um, Yeta can be a bit close. Yeta gets a one time, um, I think. Yeah, They're like re unless you like bonk and fall off your snowboard, and even then you may still win. But it is fantastic music. Uh oh. Okay. Uh oh. Oh. I know people like to do jumps here. Um, I'm scared. So I will not. It is a case of like if you fall off the edge during snowboarding, um, it's kind of GG on the day night cycle. Um. Because like you've lost a minute of day of daytime. Yeah, and the day night's like only has like thirty to forty seconds of leniency. Yeah. <laughs> the new one has even less. <laughs> it's crazy. It is it is I've never hit it, I've not even gotten close to it. It's built for beast and no one else. <laughs> Isn't it like twelve seconds or something? It's something ridiculous. I, I've not been within like 20 seconds of it. Yeah, I asked Beast about it and he says he loves a good challenge. That was all he's up. Pretty much. Which I respect that. Yeah, the pro I respect it. It's just like if, if you miss it, it loses you a fair amount of time. And it's like the bugs in post TOT can be so RNG focused. Like, they can just choose not to come near you because they don't want to. 
That's almost the bonk. Oh, I thought you were going to go over the railing. <laughs> Also, um, when Nuki finished the first round of snowboarding, you would have seen her LJA over the side. Um, uh, the reason for that is to just get back to the top to do the second round of snowboarding. You can warp, um, but then you waste time, more time warping and you have to transform afterwards. Uh, but it does save you in-game time. Yeah, I've always considered doing it, but... The LJ looks too cool. But I said I won't do LJ it. LJ is pretty cool. You would normally do it again. Go up and get the heart piece in Connection Cave, but I am going to skip it. You're just going to do Connection do Cave it. post. Post Cave post ordeal, ordeal. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, smart play. So, what you can do is basically, if so, what Nuki's talking about there is that normally you LJ over that fence and you go. To connection cave and get another Poe, um, which is a fair amount in game time. But what she's going to do is she's not going to do that now and do that outside the day night cycle. Um, and that will allow her for a bit more leniency to try and hit the cycle. And it is time to donate. I might need your help just to make sure I do the right thing. So this is donate 600. Yes. That Goron is named Donate 600, SBA. we'll go away and do... We'll right. go and do some things, and then we'll come back and give some more 600. Right. Where's the 400 in the Highland and Chillin'? Yeah, yeah. So what Nuki did there when she shot that bomb arrow is, um... When you blow up a rock in this game, there's a cutscene that plays with it, and it plays like the Zelda jingle. Um, but by shooting the rock and entering Malomar, uh, sorry, entering the sanctuary um, during the cutscene, um, the cutscene doesn't play. So when she goes outside, now that rock will be exploded, but we didn't lose an extra like four seconds, five seconds. Actually, maybe we'll get Rocket Link. Maybe. Time for a second Rocket Link. Yeah, so this is the invoice split. Um, so basically, uh, Renato just gave you a letter there. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to take that to Telma's bar. And then at Telma's bar, she's going to give you an invoice. And then you have to take that to the doctor. And it's it's a very walking around who's who in the zoo kind of split. Um, you kind of just got to go around and meet all the characters. It's, it's basically the storyline split. Uh, there you go. Yeah, there we go. So that's an example of Rocket Link there. So she pulled the bomb and then she equipped something over her iron boots and pressed A. And she shot up to the top of the body of water. I want to touch the snowman quicker. Yeah, we have to talk to him here. Have a quick chat. If we skipped him now, we would hit him later anyway. So I think the mailman has 16 letters, um, but we only need to get one just so we have a like um, a letters folder on our pause menu. And the reason we don't get all the letters is because I'm pretty sure there's a random chance he doesn't give you one of the letters. I'm pretty sure there's just a random chance that he just doesn't give, like, one of the letters doesn't exist in the run. I didn't know about that. Wait, what yeah, category it's, it's in they... Hundo Plus. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, they don't, they don't get every, um, they don't get every letter. The requirement in Hundo Plus is to get 15 of 16, or at least 14. Very interesting. Alright, more buggies time. Eight, eight more bugs. It's an eight, four pairs. So 
so we give eight bugs here and then that will get us up to 600 rupees so then when we go back to kakariko in a couple of minutes we'll be able to um give more money to malamart uh, and buy the hylian shield um but if there's anything on the donation center or anything like that during buggies that would be that would be cool we've certainly got things that we can talk about <laughs> So, I mean, of course, we're raising money for Alzheimer Fall at this wonderful event, ESA Winter. Um, so things that we can talk about. So um, there was a researcher at Uppsala University who discovered an antibody, which is the, the potential to become the first disease modifying drug against Alzheimer's, uh, which is absolutely huge in the way towards a cure. If you want things to donate towards, just give us money. We're, we'll take it very happily. Uh, but there is a bid war coming up for Lunastus, which is coming up very soon. Uh, for the graphics that you can watch with, whether you want the, the high crisp HD or, or the, the old scan line -y, um, CRT stuff. Uh, and then after that, with uh, we've got Harvest Moon and there are a few incentives to name the Bachelorette, the dog and the farmer. So there are lots of things to, to play for, lots of things to donate towards and lots of incentives coming up. So, so check the tracker and give us lots of money. It's going to be a great cause. That was, that was fantastic. <laughs> I'll be here for the next four or so hours. Perfect. All right, so we are done with our buggies now. So um, Agatha will let us know that um, she knows we have some bugs, but we'll be we'll be back later on to give her the rest of them. Um, so what the plan is now is that we need to do, um, as I said, the storyline. So the way the story works in this game is that Ilya, who was the girl in Kakariko, has lost her memory. Um, and so basically you have to go on what we call Ilya's memory quest um, and go through and kind of put all the pieces together so she can remember who she is and who you are and all that stuff. Um, so we need to go into here and we need to give a um, uh, the letter to Renato. Uh, Renato will introduce us to our people who we will see later on in the run. Um, then we need to go to the doctor to get a scent and what the scent will do is let us... Um, it will lead us to the wooden statue eventually, which is um, a toy that Ilya had. Um, so this this is all just around clearing the story flags. We do it in one split because it all kind of feeds A into B into C. Um, I will also have the Springwater mini game. Um, so there is a Goron sitting on the outskirts of Castle Town who is uh, tired and would like some hot spring water. Um, and so what we do is we carry a, a barrel of water um, across Hyrule Field and throw it at him. Um, and that way he, he actually gives us a heart piece for it. So that is going towards our 100% uh, our collection of heart pieces as well. One thing about Castle Town is um, it's really annoying to navigate. Like you want to always be rolling because in game time and also just going fast. But like... There's a lot of NPCs to talk to, and then if you're taking your time and not rolling, then you're wasting in-game time. So it's just a weird balance yeah. of things. It, it, it is a weird one, and also you get very strange camera angles because you go down like side alleys and all this kind of stuff, and p things have strange um, kind of like bonking corners. Um, so it, yeah, Castletown is a bit of a nightmare to go around, and talking to the people is definitely, yeah, that is that is a nightmare. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to hop out of Love a Good Analog Glitch. Um, yeah, I don't know how to prevent it. Um, but we're going to go out here and we're going to talk to this Goron um, and go back to Kakariko. Um, and then uh, because we have bought Malamart for a thousand rupees, uh, they'll let us do the hot water mini game, and then it will turn to nighttime. Um, and then yeah, there it kind of yeah it does go kind of quick and fast at this point. Um, we just have to kind of tidy up everything before we want to go to a uh, city in the sky. Uh, so city in the sky will be our next dungeon, and then you kind of go almost back to back to back in dungeons. Um, we'll take a small break to do final collection stuff, um, but then it is just uh, Palace of Twilight. Straight into cave ordeals, a five-minute detour straight into Hyrule. Um, so it does get it does get quite dungeon rushy towards the end. Yeah. So yeah. 
what we're going to do here is we're going to give 400 to Gorubizo because he wanted a thousand to hold up. Uh, it's really important to not give 500 here. Um, it can completely ruin the run. Yep, I mean, um, right. And then we want to buy the Highland Shield as well. I've accidentally bought Hawkeye there before. That was not great. Yeah, you have to... I think the way to back that up is get 100 rupees in City in the Sky. Yeah. I, I gave Gorbizo 500 on second trip the other day, and it just killed the run. I am having a fun time. I've got Sheesh Goron, whose name escapes me. And now across Hyrule Field. Um, so, normally there are enemies here, and basically if the enemies hit your um, barrel, that is quite a problem, because you have to warp back to Kakariko and um, let's start the minigame over again. So what we do is we stay around the outskirts, because that means uh, enemies won't spawn. So there's the levers, which are the little grass things that spawn in a circle. Um, as long as we stay near the perimeter of Hyrule Field, they won't spawn. Uh, because they would fall off the edge. Uh, so it's just the best way to do it. It's not that much slower than beelining it across. Um, and also that Karagrok will never catch us. He's actually just there to make you feel kind of uneasy. Um, but the Bulblins can shoot you if you get too close. I don't know why the Karagrok can't hit you though. I don't know why it came through early either. Yeah, it's very strange. Um, and then we have an annoying long, annoyingly long cutscene because uh, the Goron goes off and gets us a Harpies. Um, but it's like a 30 second cutscene, even though it shouldn't be. Yeah, we're just gonna get the Harpies and then go through to Castle Town. So if you have a donation, you can read out. Maybe not. Um, it is turning to nighttime here, which is cool. Um, so that's what we want. So there's right on the way back into Castle Town, there's a Poe right on the outside. So we need it to be at least nighttime before that point. Um, and then from there on out, this will be the last kind of nighttime we care about. Yeah, with the way I do things, it ah. is definitely possible to get here early. I've done it before. We'll see yeah, it and it's there. that thing of you almost don't you almost don't want it to. I presume it's there. Yeah, I just spawn as Yeah. Yeah. But that's what you want. You want it to be just there when you rock up. But you don't want to be just waiting around for a Poe to spawn. Yep. Yeah. Um, then we've got more dash casting through uh Castle Town. Um we've got to go see Giovanni again. So Giovanni who was our mate earlier who had, who wanted the post cells. Um, he will give us a Great Fairy Tears if we give him 20 post cells, um, which comes into effect later on if we need it. Um, so that is quite good. He hides out behind the cats. Um, and then, yeah, it's kind of just, it, it gets a little bit chaotic, honestly. The po this this cycle is just way harder than any of the other ones. Yeah, towards the end of it, it begins to become a bit of a handful. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is after we're done, um, after we're done collecting everything within Castle Town, we're gonna go to Kakariko, um, and to Kakariko Gorge, and basically we have to fully clear everything from Kakariko Gorge through to uh, Lanero. So it, it's just a lot of dashing on Epona, picking up Poe's bugs, and we have to get a couple of heart pieces. It is just, it just keeps going to be honest. Um, the reason we have to talk to the cat there is because um, otherwise the Stalhounds outside won't spawn. So what you'll see out here is that when Nuki goes over to uh, the end of the footpath, there's going to be a bunch of Stalhounds. Um, and when you defeat the Stalhounds, the uh, wooden statue will spawn, which is what we're what we're actually here for. Okay, 
This is quite cool movement. So just to give you an idea, Beast had told me that if you mess that up, the new cycle and the new route is probably dead. I would believe it. So yeah, it is. It is shocking. Safe. Yeah, when the, when these are defeated, the uh, the wooden statue will spawn, and also these drop us a bunch of different rupees. Um, so we need to get about thirty rupees from it. It's not it's not very precise because there's a lot of RNG in it. Um, but by the end of the night time, we're gonna need six hundred rupees again. Uh, waiting what to pick up? Yes, that's fine. Yeah, one thirty is fine. What do I need uh, before warping to Gorge? I don't remember. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember either. <laughs> I'd say you're fine. Worst case scenario, you get um, you know, one of fires and you would also dig in the cannon room. Yeah, I think I'll just pick up two on Deathman Trail, two rats. Yeah, some cool movement coming up after this. Um, there's a Kakariko has a bell in it, um, which has a 200 rupee stuck at the top of it. Um, and basically, if you delay your rang by targeting on a bunch of different things, um, you can add, you can actually rang the 200 out, which makes our rupee count a lot nicer. But as I said, time of day doesn't move. It doesn't move in Kakariko, so it's not actually an issue if you if you mess something up. It is an issue. Is this crow? Or bird or thing? Yeah, this this crow is shocking. is deceptively hard. It really is. I, I'm never confident if it's going to work or not. You can usually tell after with how long the boomerang takes. Because the boomerang takes a lot longer whenever it's holding an item or a bug or just an object, I suppose. What I don't like is this. Uh, I waited a little too long. Um, you're coming with me. <laughs> oh, I got to go take that one. Yeah, that, that is, um, that jump is annoyingly specific. That is a way to do it. Yeah, it's running from me, so I figured why not. You know, you can turn your camera when you get the chicken. But you can't hold forward. Yeah, I would. I like, don't hold believe a you need direction. to any. I don't. I don't think you need to hold forward when you're holding a chicken. Oh, you when don't. you're in midair. Uh, I believe so. Let's try it out. I think you can. Do, I think you can just turn the camera sideways. Huh. Why not? I always overthink that. <laughs> Probably the main reason. It is very out. scary. Yeah, like you said, at least Kakariko isn't a part of the day, the day night time. Yeah, yeah, th that is the only benefit of it. And like, yeah, it loses time, like speed run wise, but um, in game time wise, at least we're okay. Time of day will pass in Death Mountain, which we're about to go into. Are you gonna get three or four of the reds? I wish I knew how much I need. Uh, I'm gonna do probably oh, just three. Is there two on the way, right? I, I think. And then the one yeah, by the. Uh, 
Yes, depending on what movement you do, yeah. We'll figure it out. As I said, there is, the benefit is, like, there's so many backup rupees in this. So, like, fire, who, who, um, fixes your cannon for you. He has 60 rupees just sitting around his cannon. It's good, because I'm next to the red. A lot of day-night cycle, like, learning it is figuring out the smaller optimizations, like, like, finishing a Poe, facing the right direction, like, flying off, it really makes a huge difference. Yeah, that's the whole thing, so, like, when you, obviously, when you kill a Poe, you backflip off of it, so, it normally, it is worth to run around to the far side of the Poe, and then backflip onto it, um, because then you'll end up facing the right way after you've killed it. So, as, yeah, as, as Nuki said, there's a bunch of tiny things. Um, if you don't do them, it's not make or break, but it's always it's always nice to give yourself that little bit more leeway. And now we're into, basically, there's no t break here for the next kind of, I don't know, eight minutes. Um... Yeah, this is just, this is where it gets chaotic. Oh, hello. Oh, there's twice. All right, really. So basically, what what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop on Epona, um, and then ride her through. Sorry, one sec. Okay. Um, we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, ride it through different parts of Hyrule Field, jumping off, getting pose and bugs, um, and then we're gonna finish at the Flight by Foul mini game. And uh, there is literally the second, uh, sorry, the first pose that we're gonna get here is literally at a tree that we call Cluster Tree because it is just chaos. Like it is, it it never goes smoothly. because these these bugs can sometimes be nice and you can grab them instantly or they can do that that's okay yeah, yeah it, it can up. be a lot worse so this is this is cluster tree that actually went okay yeah, that's quite quite good when you target like three bokos like the bird and the Poe, you just end up flying around the place. It's a great joy to watch, not to uh, be the one playing. Yeah. This Poe, and then we've got uh, two more bugs, and then flat by fell. I think Ruby Cow is looking good. Uh, there's 50 in here. Uh, I'm sure it's fine. to roll but I was gonna mortal draw if I I was yeah I was expecting it yeah 
This bug. Oh wow. That bug. That bug is never nice. No opponent slides to run. It's quite sad. I think you're still fine on day night time. Sounds good. We'll see. It's just this, and then we warp to uh, upper resource river, and then yeah, that'll be towards the end of it. Not too much after that. Wow, I got the whole. Yeah, brought three of them with you. This can be a little odd. Yeah, that can be quite sketchy because if you miss the platform and you land in the water, and that's the cycle gone. Did I clips wrong? Oh, because you need rank. Yep. Because there's uh, another pill up here. Uh... I don't know where all the chickens were. I don't know where they were. I'm going to miss the cycle to. What is... Why are they all there? Oh my... I still think you're fine. I think so, but... I'm not sure. You were far too confident that that wasn't too low. I was like, I thought you dropped too low with the boots. having a low fun. I keep doing out. Uh yeah, that's a small nerve optimization. Uh I zoom out and then tap because like when zoomed out and toggling warp portal is it doesn't like freeze the cursor, but it does whenever you're zoomed into a region. So my natural instinct is just to zoom out and tap. But it doesn't save time if you're warping to a nerve poison in the same region. And one more pro to go. I'm pretty confident you're fine. Uh, a little tight. Should be okay, I think. Do I skip the what's alphas? Probably not, right? Uh not sure. I'm just gonna skip it. I should not have skipped it. Oh. Still got it. Fair play. I wasn't sure then. I should have skipped it. Like, no, I was definitely you, not sure. If, if yeah. you, even if you land on the Poe and like you do the animation, if, if it disappears before the text prompt appears, it doesn't count. Yeah. Like it can disappear in midair. <laughs> yeah. It's very annoying. Also, like that little jingle goes like a good maybe five seconds after, which means I was seconds away from... Missing that. And that's definitely like a few minutes time off. Do so have to work back to Upper Zero's River and do all that again. Um, I don't know what I need. Oh, 
puzzle time. Surely I remember this. The puzzle is fine. It's when it goes off of like the track. Oh yeah. It's when you mess it up that it becomes awkward. Uh, haven't done this in a while. Okay. Oh, little optimization is, um, I want to, like, be close enough so he grabs the ball again like that instead of it falling to the floor. Yeah, I forget the reason that happens. I think it's because you effectively, it's if it, you would have done a double hit. Usually try to not think during these because if I think and start analyzing the blocks, then it gets really bad. Yeah, just, just like that. Go. Um, yeah. Wait, how bad is that? I, th uh, I think you just gotta kind of reset it. Uh. Don't know how I do that. Um, yeah, then put oh, uh, okay, top okay, right okay, one okay. back to the bottom, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um. <laughs> I'm blanking so hard. This doesn't look right. I think you messed up. I think you're going to have to make a line of three. Oh, okay. So I think you're going to have to put them all there just to get the middle. This is really gonna mess me up. But I'll see what I can do. I want this over here. We're figuring this out together now. I've never had this happen. Yeah, my brain's spinning. So I want. I don't know what I want. This looks right. No, it doesn't. Uh, then I think you move the top one, the second one over. So not that first one, the second one in the corner, you want to get rid of that. And you want to loop it around to hit it off the other one. I don't know what you mean. Maybe I should just reset the puzzle. Just leave and re-enter. Does that do the other ones? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do it. I don't have the brain for I this. believe it just... I think it resets the whole thing. Or maybe it doesn't reset at all. I don't think, I don't know why. I I don't know. We'll figure it out together. Shall we do a donation in the meantime? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go. Ahead. Actually, that's great. Thank you very much, Cindy. No one, no one will know. We'll just we'll we'll, we'll splice it together. It's gonna be beautiful. We got fifteen dollars from Zet, who says I just counted and found that the mailman actually only has ten letters. So I'm a bit confused. And that's going towards our Hades dash only. Extreme measures for incentive. So that's coming up in a few runs from now. Um, and that took us over 300 out of $2,000 to meet that. Um, so if you want to see the boss fights made, quote, extreme, um, keep donating for that. We've got lots of things coming up. Um, and that Lunastus bid war, that's closing at the beginning of the war. And that's literally two runs away. So if you want to see that crispy high definition run and not the CRT liney thingamajiggy run, then absolutely get your donations in now. I actually don't know what I'm doing. Um, hit hit because, that that way. Yeah. Well, that's not good. I put that other one back where, in the corner. So that that back far one. Put that on the left. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know. Hit that end one into that one. No, 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 no other way around. Huh? Oh. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's I now move the other ones around the perimeter. So leave that one there, 
And then move the other ones around the perimeter. You land like this. Yeah, and do the same with the other one. You want me to move it all the way around? I want to move that one in the corner. Yeah, that's what you want. This is right. Now what you want to do? wrong. So now you want to... No, no, no. So now this one. Hit that to the far side. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'd say no. It's all coming together. My master plan. Wait. This is how it goes. That we we have an idea of how to do it, but the second we fail the puzzle, we, yeah, we exactly. go clueless. Yeah, exactly. Let me hit this over here. Um, I've lost track. <laughs> you really are my coach, huh? Uh, my br my brain is melting. My brain's melting too. Because. Are you sure this is right? I'm losing confidence. Um. I'm losing confidence too. You could, you could reset the puzzle. Okay, so see the two, see close left. Close Hit that left. across. Yeah. I don't even know what okay. the puzzle looks like. And now the one to your now. left. Now the one to your left. Hit hit straight along. Yeah, hit that way. Okay. Now go to back. Go to the second one in. Second one in. And, and this one. The second one in and hit that across. <laughs> okay. And now the puzzle's reset. This isn't... No, this is wrong, is it not? No, it's not. So you hit the one on the left, down to the end. I have and lost move all it across right. in how I do this. Okay, this makes sense. And then... And then no, no, and, no, and then no, the far one. Back... Back left. Pull that down. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That, that one in the corner. It doesn't matter at this point. I got it, I got it. Do I? Yeah, I do. Yes, you do, yeah. That took a lot of brain power. It is so hard. I'm used to the muscle memory doing everything. Why do I have to think? I will also like give you credit, it is 7 a.m. and you've been going for five hours. Yeah, let's pull out the jet lag excuse as well. I just got here from America yesterday. There we go. Back on track. Yeah, there we go. That That's what the applause is for. How long did this take? Well, any chance of feeding, uh, whether that's relevant or not, not there so much anymore. I hope that was fun. <laughs> I had fun. I had fun. Alright, cool. So what we're doing now is basically we're wrapping up the rest of the, co uh, the collection cycle. Um, so there is, there's a bug over here. We've got a grotto with two poses in it. Um, and then we're going to go to Hidden Village, um, which you can't access until you get a bunch of different story flags. Um, so Hidden Village has an uh, Impa in it. Um, and basically it is... Uh, it's covered by ball balloons, basically. So you have like a like a shootout, um, where you need to uh, shoot twenty ball balloons. Um, so it's kind of like a mini game, but it's also not. Um, and that will be kind of our the last part of our storyline. Um, and then we can go and wrap up the rest of the game. What is this bug doing? Uh, did I hit the rock? Someone wrote Tass in chat. I, nice. just, I just want that acknowledged. Thanks. I think they're talking about the puzzle. I'm going to assume it's the puzzle. Yeah, of course. Guess what? I was in Nightmare. There's a good strat for getting that double pow, but I forgot it. Yeah, it the the timing on that is quite tight though. Yeah, it is. Cool, so how many rupees are you at? You're at four nine one. Just three yellows. Yeah, here. you'll be 
Yeah, I'll be good. Yeah, so that's 570. Yeah. You okay? So getting to 600 on this cycle is really important. And because we have to pay 300 to fix the cannon to get to City in the Sky. Um, and also we have to uh, spend 300 in Malamart. So it's like we can't really progress the run any further unless we have 600 rupees. So it, it is very important that we got it. And that's why there's so many backups in it. This is always a cool one. I wish they did more heart pieces like that one. Putting the fun in spinner. It's the only time you do something cool with the spinner. We almost got a Zen Village boss down. It's coming up soon. The the Howling Stone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hidden Village. Yeah, we got Hidden, Hidden Village is cool. I did. I generally forgot it existed until I started speedrunning. Yeah, that's kind of the storyline wrapped up for the most part. Um, when we get out of Hidden Village, we can go straight to City in the Sky, and then when we finish up in City in the Sky, we can do a couple of collection things, and then it's just kind of three dungeons back to back in that game. Uh, it's just that the, some of the later dungeons are quite long in comparison to the rest of the game. I don't know if you saw it, but I almost just dashed straight off because I thought the camera would be in front of me. And not inside yeah, the, the camera glitch is real there. Yeah, so what I want to do is we go to Hidden Village twice. Um, so when we go now, we want to be human to do the shootout. And when we go later, we want to be wolf so we can do uh, the cats mini game to talk to the 20 cats. And then also nighttime because there's a Poe. Yes, yeah. Uh, this is a different bridge than the title screen. So that was Bridge of Elden. The one the title screen is... Um, Great Bridge of Elden, I believe. Sorry, Great Bridge of Hyrule or whatever. I believe it's a different bridge. Wow. I am... This one is so hard to hit. Thanks, Ben. Let's check on. I missed one. As a one more. I think I missed. Yeah. Oh, the one inside the first room? Yeah. First house on the right. Oh. Wait, how did I miss this one? Since there's just one in the window. I think you, might, you may have hit the window and not got the. Um. Oh, not got the bubble. So we get a we do two quick chats to Impa. So Impa's gonna give us um the uh the horse call, which is um is the what we can use to call the opponent whenever we want. And I'll also help Leah get back her memory. Sorry, Ilya. Um and then we've also got um we'll show her the Dominion Rod and she gives us uh the book, the ancient sky book. Which lets us get into City in the Sky early. And then we have a unskippable one minute cutscene. 
You mean showing Grandma a rod? Oh no, I meant when Ilya gets her memory back. Oh. Well. <laughs> There is a weird thing here. Um, so for some reason, you can't transform within any of Hidden Village. Um, but what you can do is you can... Um, on this tiny ledge, if you kind of half step up to it, you're able to transform. I don't, I don't know why, but... It's, uh, it'll be fine. So it's quite wrong. No, that's right. That's okay. That is the hardest Howling Stone. The notes are just held for so long. Yeah, just keeps going. So about this, we gotta go back to Kakariko and give give a bit more money. But I think yeah, you could Oh no no, you still gotta get the backup rupees. Uh I buy Hawkeye give two hundred. Uh yeah. And then get fire twenty or more, and then you can dig around for some in the cannon room if you wanted. I think that's better than digging around the cannon itself. The cannon just has greens. I don't remember how much I need. It's 25. I think 27? 29. I can get two boys. Yeah, and then we're going to Saiyan Sky. And Saiyan Sky is quite... Uh, it's quite difficult because a lot of the time saving it goes down to like aim so i can't underestimate how sorry i can't overstate how important it is to get good um full shot aim during city in the sky if you want to save time um yeah it is it is it's massive for it yeah i don't do fan tower of bomb arrows but that's really aim intensive and also really fast also really cool yeah, it's a cool strat. And also there is um you can skip the mini boss um by doing a pixel perfect shot. Which is an odd one because it's sort of on a time crunch as well. Yeah, it is yeah. It's pixel perfect and also you have to do it before a Ralphos attacks you. I thought you could walk between them. Yeah, that is a weird one. And now we can get to give Ilya her memory back. I never actually get to watch this cutscene because I'm always going to the bathroom during it. It's not a bad cutscene. Epona's in the background dancing, which is always a bit weird. But yeah, this is one of the uh, the recommended bathroom breaks for people who run this game. It's probably because it is. I think it's fifty-two seconds, fifty-four seconds, some of that. Yeah, I think it's one of the last ones as well, if not the last one. Uh... Uh, yeah, you can risk it with Aragrok, but I wouldn't. Oh, and Squidna. Oh yeah. Yeah, Epona in the background of this just always gives me a crack. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Near, so nearly funny. there, Nuki. Yeah, almost there. The hiccup between Ice Cave to now was a bit... Sent me back a little bit. It's just like a freak. It's a it's a it's a, a certified marathon moment kind of thing. It would never happen until you're doing a no reset. Yeah. Like when I've done one, like I I got hit on the way up to Zora's domain. I got hit by the falling icicles. 
and I was just like, this would never happen in any other scenario apart from right now. And I can't kind of, I can't state enough how difficult this game is, especially in 100%, um, because if you make any mistakes, it generally has roll-on effect. That. So it's like, oh, if you have a bad day-night cycle, you lose the time because you played bad or got unlucky. And then also you have to fix it up later on and lose even more time. So it is just, yeah, it's a it's a brutal run. I honestly don't remember the last um, time I continued to run past day-night cycle or like post-TOT one because it's just, yep, that's, it always goes so terribly the or has gone so terribly up to that point. That's just not the right thing. Um, so what we're doing here is this statue behind, um, the one of the sky character statues. Um, we actually don't need to collect it uh, or like gather the sky characters. So what we're going to do instead is basically, if you stand in the corner of the statue and shimmy a little bit right and transform, you can actually clip through the statue as Wolf Link. And what that will do is it will stop us having to go collect all the sky characters across Hyrule. So it's pretty, it's a pretty good time save. Um, yeah, it's a really easy trick, but just a massive time save. That's... If that worked, I would have been so impressed. I would have... I don't know. This should work. So that's weird there. So we get a prompt up that says, oh, do you want to warp? Um, if you just say no and then warp through the map, it's faster for some reason. So are you just going to get back up fire rupees? Oh, uh, I don't know where the other rupees are. I only know where the red is. If you stand on the back right railing and do a jump attack, I think there's 10. Jump attack in which direction? Uh, so run to the back right. So first get the 20. Yeah, first. And then that railing on the right hand side. If you stand at the very far back right of it. That's... They may have gone stuck up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stand at the very back right. And then jump attack towards the rest of it. Gotcha. I've never had this back up before. Or had to back this up before. We're full of all sorts of surprises for new things today. Down there. It's a learning experience. For all of us. I actually only know that because of any percent. Because any yeah. percent rupee routing is a lot tighter. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, for those who don't know, there's actually 60 rupees around Fire's Cannon. Um, so if we ever, the worst case scenario, we can be 60 rupees shy and still have enough to fix the cannon. It obviously just takes time and effort to, uh, to tidy it all up. Um, but now we get to go city in the sky, which is a, uh, there's a lot that happens in city. It's a, it's, it's, it's one of the longer dungeons, um, but a lot happens in it. Um, so because it's obviously in the sky, there is a lot of voids underneath us. So that lets us do a lot of LJAs. And um, so we kind of just boomerang jump around the, like around the dungeon. Yeah, it's very um, LJ heavy. Very LJ heavy. Um, and also what you'll see is near the start of the dungeon, you'll see Nuki do a trick where she gets in front of a door and she will transform into wolf just to open the door and then go to the other side and then um transform back into human and the reason for that is basically the wolf link can open the door from uh, further away than human link um and it will skip a trigger uh so what that means is that when when you skip the trigger that's to turn on the fan in the main room so that means we can actually skip straight to the top of the dungeon if we want to
All right. Yeah, so we'll do a couple of LJs through here, and then I'll show you uh, when we get to the fan trigger. So basically the fan above Nuki now hasn't turned on um, and we will use that during the second half of City. I don't want to freak you out Nuki but there is a vacuum cleaner behind you. Oh no. I keep that fingering. Let's just do that. I don't do that, LJ. I don't. I don't understand it. I thought I did. Why is wrong? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> LJ is an actual equip, is it not? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it saves less time in Hundo, I believe. I can't remember why, but I feel like I had that chat with Beast. Um, so what we'll see here is um, Nuki do a little jump around a cutscene uh, called Argrot Cutscene Skip. Um, so normally in a casual game, Argrot comes along and... Um, hits into the bridge and cleans the bridge out um but if we jump around the trigger by either jumping on the wall or using a p-hat um what we can do though so exactly as shown um what's good about that is that now when we do the second half of city in the sky um we'll spawn in the small key room we just left rather than at the start of the dungeon um so that it saves about a minute and a half over starting at the start of the dungeon. You PB'd with failing that, right? I did indeed. 629. Crazy. Yep, two free, two free minutes of time, I'm just sitting there. Sorry for bringing that up. That was like trauma. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I haven't done it since when I did a marathon run. That was the last time I hit it. And then obviously when I'm on the run of my life would be the other time to hit it. We're just gonna sit here for a bit. Um, we get to do some Uku manipulation, so playing around with the chickens. Um, so we're going to use them with a the fans uh, to do some faster jumps than you would do in a casual version. Um, you're still kind of limited to the layout and the structure of the dungeon, um, but we can do it quicker. That's kind of the main part of it. What am I doing? I just zoned out. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> it very much happens. I've definitely done that. Oh, 
Oh, I'm just getting punished. Definitely a city in the sky moment. That, just... that is the thing. So with with our um, LJs, we obviously we need to use um, a jump attack. But the thing is, because we've learned Helm Splitter, um, I mean, we sometimes accidentally charge. Oh, sorry, jump strike. Um, we sometimes charge a jump strike, which makes our LJ shorter. So sometimes we can mess it up just because it's Hundo. We have to wait a few seconds for the fan. Um, so what we're going to well. see after Nuki gets through here. Oh, sorry. I was going to say this room is cool um, as well. Yeah, this room is very cool. Yeah, so rather than turning on any of the fans, what we can do is if we jump at a particular angle. I'm so curious as to what you're locking onto. I don't know. Anyway, let's go ahead. Um, oh yeah, so what we do is um, we're going to do a thing in the next, and the mini boss that's coming up, and basically we're going to do a certain stab combo, um, and what that will do is it will let us uh, have a pixel perfect lineup to be able to, to shoot a claw shot over the fight um, and get the double claw shot earlier. So we want to do three, three slashes and a stab, and then yeah, it's a pixel perfect shot. And also, you have to do it quick enough before Eralfos, um attacks you. So it is kind of, there's a lot to it. I do do Iron Boots method, though I don't do a uh, combo. Oh yeah, nice. Same concept, though. Nice. That is a an, an annoying trick. Yeah, I guess like no matter how much you practice it, your thumb is gonna feel it different. It mostly comes down to nerves. Yeah, definitely. It's like if you're on PB pace and like, oh wow, I need to hit this trick, and then the music starts building, and you can hear a Rufus's wings flapping. Like it is just it's it's a nightmare. And now we've got City 2. So City 2 is basically taking all of the kind of back areas um, and uh, getting some heart pieces and getting some pose. Um, and then it's just a lot of aiming and movement. This is quite a cool one. LJing around the corner rather than killing the Deku Baba. Unless I can skip. Uh, Alright. My mind's blanking. That is the thing. Endgame, endgame to me is such a blur because by the time you get here, you're just so tired. Yeah. This room is really cool. If it goes well, it can also be a pain. Oh. Yeah, so what we need to do in this room is we need to manipulate that giant barber so that he doesn't hit us off. And um, But the manip is kind of 
blurry as to how it works. Outside. The outside bit is on a really tight cycle, which I probably will not hit, but I have a good backup for it. The outside cycle? Yeah. Yeah, so basically here there's there's a bunch of P-hats that are on a cycle right now. Um, and what we want to do is we want to get to the heart piece and back before um before they go too far away. I wonder if I should have re-entered. up here. See if I can get it. Aiming. There's also a thing I don't think that we've explained so far, and um, that basically if you hit the furthest, like the furthest most pixel of like a vine, um, it's called a dead pixel, which basically means when you grab it, it'll it'll cause it to look like you have two claw shots, even though you don't. So what you have to do is you just have to drop off. Um, so that is that can happen there quite a bit for very very specific shots. Yeah, and in that case, I would avoid. Yeah. Um, so now we've got an outside Po, um, and then Bosky, and then um, there's actually some cool, some cool movement coming up. So basically, because we haven't turned on the fan, uh, a lot of the like fan paddles that aren't moving. Um, so in the outside area, you're supposed to like cling onto a fan, and then um, you have it spin around, and then you shoot to the next one, and so on and so forth. Uh, but because they're never moving, what we're doing instead is we um, just shoot at the very, very top of them, and we can grab onto them. And uh, that'll make more sense in a minute when you see what Nuki does. Uh, That's a 50 rupee chest. It is. Did you need 50 rupees? Uh, pretty sure. I mean, I've always seen Beast pick it up, so I pick it up. For oh, a good reason. Maybe he doesn't do that anymore because, uh. Extra, like, how you get? Not sure. Maybe I'm. Oh, yeah, that'd that. be it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that the the outside lag there is unavoidable. It is shocking. Uh, but this is what I was talking about with the top of fans. So what you can do is as long as you shoot at these fans from a higher position, so shooting down, you will be able to grab the top of them. Um, and then we're able to do a really cool double LJ here.
Or not. I'm pressing B too early now. There you go. It looks so good. It's one of the best it's ones in the game. Coolest. Yeah, one of the coolest. Yeah. Ones. Um, and now this is Fan Tower. So basically, um, what you want to do is you want to trigger the fans and you want to make it on a certain cycle. Um, there is a strat where you shoot a ball marrow up and you start the cycle earlier, but it is, it's fairly difficult and only saves a couple of seconds. Um, so we just get to ride it around and then we're into the Argrok fight, which is the end of City in the Sky. Um, and that's honestly, that's a bit of an auto scroll. There's not a, there's not too, too much going on in that. Um, I'll explain the flame manips when we get there. Uh, but it is not a fight we generally mess up. Not too bad. Fan Tower is a weird one. Yeah, it really puts you to the test. Anyways. Uh, what we see here just to get up to Argorok is going to be, uh, it's not pixel perfect, but I think it's two pixels. Um, to get a shot up to the vine to climb into the Argorok fight. And then I'll explain, our, we have a lot of downtime during Argorok because there's like a minute cutscene when you first start fighting him. Um, so I'll be able to go into stuff then. Wow, that is insane aim. This guy was like instant. So with this fight here, there's two phases to it. Um, so I, what normally happens is if you stand in the middle, Argrok will uh, swing down and try to attack you. Um, but if you just stand on the perimeter of the arena, like what Nuki is doing right now, um, he just doesn't do it. He knows you're not there, so he doesn't attack you. Um, so he just goes straight to the middle of the arena. And what we can do here is out of this cutscene, we can do a uh, quick two claw shots. So one up onto a pillar and then one up onto its tail. And get a quick two cycle. Yeah, because nice. normally Argrok yeah, cool. so that fly around the outside and then he'd okay. go and stay up at the top. You have to claw shot out. Yeah, it's a, it's a nightmare. That is a lot faster getting that done. Um, so what you'll see now, so basically now that we're going into second phase Argrok, uh, where he breaks off the armor and he starts breathing fire. Um, so at the start of the fight, Nuki is going to uh, throw herself off the edge of the map. Um, because it makes the cycles line up a bit better. Um, and then what happens is Argrok will only shoot flames at you if you're at a certain height. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a manip with the iron boots that when we claw up to a P-hat, um, we're going to uh, put on the iron boots and as Argrok starts to breathe fire, we're going to drop really low on the uh, claw shot. And what that's going to do is it's going to reset Argrok's flame cycle and stop breathing fire. And that'll let us go around the back and attack him very quick. Um, so it'll make it'll make more sense when you see it in a sec. So normally we use an audio cue for this. So normally when Argrok goes to scream is when we will claw shot up. So we see there that because Nuki did that, um, Argrok stopped breathing fire, and now we can quickly go around the back and get the first cycle in. So there is a two cycle setup for this, but we won't be seeing that today. Um, that has two, I think, 10 frame window tricks, um, which can be quite costly. Um, so she's going to do that again a second time, and then a slightly different manip on the third cycle.
So on this third cycle here, um, what she's going to do is she's not going to manip straight away. Because um, what Argrok does is he breathes fire, then turns around and breathes fire again. So what Nuki's actually going to do is she's going to um, go around and then when he says breathing fire at a particular point, drop on her boots and then take them off again. Then we go through four P-Hats. And we duck the fire. And we take off our boots. And then our work will stop breathing fire. And that's the fight. Nice. As I said, it's a bit of an auto scroll. It's not it's not a fight where you get very um we very frequently mess up. Um Yeah. It, it's it's not the it's not the, the greatest fight in the in the game. Argarok is very cool though. It is a very cool fight. Yeah, I, casually awesome. Yeah. So after this, we're going to do our final cleanup. We'll start with South Baron. We'll get a heart piece, a pow, and then warp castle turn. Yeah, so when we when we leave City in the Sky, um, normally it throws you into the water. Um, but if you put on Iron Boots into the cannon, um, and you have a four frame window to get a B attack off, it'll make you land on, well, land. Um, and that will just save us a little bit of time. And then we just go through our cleanup. We're gonna go um, and get a Poe. We're going to get some, uh, do the rest of our bugs. And get the giant wallet. Um, and also, we're going to go to Malamar. Which has probably the best music in the game. Sadly, it's or the very catchiest. short. It, it, it is just a bit of a banger. Um, this is actually where we use the Dom Rod in the overworld for the only time in the run. Um, just to be able to get... There's a heart piece hanging out in Farron Woods, which is very strange. We have time for a donation. We do have time for a donation, probably. Outstanding. All right, we have got $5 from Senor Tape here. He says, good luck, Nuki. You're an inspiration to many, and I can't wait to see all the amazing things you will be able to accomplish. Looking forward to seeing one of your runs in person one day, and good luck on the rest of the run. That donation is going towards the, the Breath of the Wild, another Zelda run we have later on tonight, uh, and that is for the, the blindfolded bow lift smuggling side glitch, so it allows Link to fly anywhere. Um, there are plenty of incentives in the tracker. Keep the donations coming. We've got, we're closing the bid war for, um, for the Lunas this race coming up. Um, very, very soon, two runs from now. Um, it's all going to a great cause. Help us support Charity Alzheimer Fund and, uh, and let's keep going. So much to appear. Thanks a lot. That, that chest is shocking. It's an interesting one. Yeah, so when we go to Castle Town, we'll also actually get to do the Star 2 minigame. Um, so we saw Star 1 earlier during MDH, um, which is uh, was like 10 seconds, and now we've got Star 2, which is more like 30, 35. Um, yeah, that's pretty. That's a pretty good one as well. And that is to get the giant quiver, which holds a hundred arrows, which we will want for cave of ordeals. I haven't done Star Two in a good minute, and it's definitely uh, there's a lot going on in terms of color on the screen. But yeah, 
Just keep, just keep going right. Just follow the lines, so. Yep. You literally just keep going right every time you see a color and it ends up at the top. Got it, class. I'm feeling, I'm feeling a, a 32. 32, huh? Yep. Speaking it into existence. It was a 34. I, I was, it was not far off at all. That's all right. Okay, we're gonna finish off the bugs now. Bit of, bit of buggies. Uh, I'm not so gonna the benefit of this now. Sorry, I'm not gonna equip anything, sorry. but I am going to. Oh, if I gotta roll, I'm supposed to roll and then D pad up. Open the item wheel because if you open close the item wheel, you can open the door a little bit faster. If you don't do that, we'll probably talk to this thing. It's not very fun. Yeah, it, I I don't know what it is in this game that for some reason when the um card is in the top left, which tells you where you are, talking to what you want to talk to is very very difficult. Um, so every time we go into Agatha, we just open and close item well if you can do an equip then great but if you can't it's still it's still better you're gonna say something before i cut you off oh no that's all right um yeah so basically what the money here is gonna go towards so we're gonna get to 600 rupees um and then we're gonna give her the rest of the bugs anyway um and then we're gonna go and spend 598 of them uh on the magic armor um so if you don't know what the magic armor is it's basically uh, it's armor that if you have rupees, uh, it ticks away at your rupee count while you use it. Um, and if you take damage, it takes a chunk of rupees away. Um, but if you have no rupees in your inventory, uh, it basically works like iron boots. You walk really, really slowly. Um, and we don't actually use it in the run. Hmm. Um, but uh, it's use part it. of like, collecting, basically. Uh, 100 plus use it, yeah. I'll use it too. Forget it. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, Hundo, Hundo Plus uses it, um, which is quite cool because they use it in Cave of Ordeals to guarantee that they don't take damage so they can keep their great spin. Uh, but we rely on Rupee Collection within Cave of Ordeals so it doesn't work for us. Yeah, now that I think about it, getting that 50... Doesn't make any sense. I don't want to say it, <laughs> but but uh, that's all right. It, 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 like it lost you. You had to transform there anyway, so it makes very little difference. I could have sworn Beast picks it up too. I that would that chest there would be the backup if you bought Hylian Shield and Hawkeye in the wrong order. Right. Yeah. All right, now off to my favorite song. We're almost there. Love Malomar. You have to deal with the annoying noise of Agatha just to hear the absolute bop that is uh, Malomar. But no one actually knows what they say in the song. First, you got to get the, through the lag fest. That is a uh, central castle town. Yeah. And for some reason, there's always just a small wave of people blocking your uh, your way in. It's just so good. Maybe I should just sit here. 
This is where I, I'll say I wouldn't be I, like I would be okay with that. Uh, I'm sorry. It's such it's such a good bop, and they use it nowhere else on the run. I think that's what makes it so good, short and sweet. Yeah. If you get it, that means um, you're and so. Run. Yeah, exactly. Um, but so what we're doing here is, although it would be, it would make more sense to basically just go up here when we're entering Hyrule. And what this golden wolf is going to give us is called Great Spin. Um, so Great Spin, which I've explained before, basically is when you have full health, your spin attacks become uh, much larger in range and also a lot stronger. So basically you can one hit quite a lot of enemies. Um, and that is really, really beneficial for when we get into cave of ordeals. Um, so cave ordeals, we have to go through, uh, 44 floors and there's 50 total, but we only need the Po on floor 44. Um, and so having great spin there will make life a whole lot easier. So the, so the idea in cave ordeals is to, um, is to take damage as late as possible. So you keep your great spin because there's limited backup parts. Um, so it is it is quite intense. Um, it can, for PB intense, it can definitely decide your run. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's also quite a cool. It's like an just a enemy rush. The floors get gradually harder. I'm not sure from a viewer perspective, but I know among runners, it's like one of our favorite bars to grind, just because it's just it's just really fun to optimize and go through. I feel like I could spend hours just practicing another one. Um, I'm going. I think from a viewer perspective, it's really cool to watch, but I think from a chatter perspective, it's really bad because no streamer talks during it. Everyone just goes quiet. Uh, like some sure. some streamers like put away their microphones and stuff like that. And it, it, it is it's so the, the the best the best cave ordeals is just under seventeen minutes. That's a sixteen. So it's like fifty eight. Well, in a it, run. Yeah. Yeah, in a, in, yeah, sixteen fifty eight. I think sixteen fifty five in practice. Um, so it is just about seventeen minutes of just concentration. Um, yeah, because so basically, you you know what floor you're gonna be on, and then, um, whatever floor you're gonna be on, you act in a certain way. So you'll jump attack to a certain side, or you'll bomb arrow, or whatever it might be. Um, so we're into palace now. Um, so palace is pretty linear. Uh, we can't we can't differentiate too too much from the casual rep. Um, so we've got the we got the west um, the west wing and the east wing, um, and in both of them there is a phantom zant fight, which is basically like a hologram of zant. Um, and we've got a sol, which is this white ball twilight thing. Um, and basically, what we need to do is we need to make it to the two ends of the to, to the two ends of the dungeon, uh, put them in a in a, in their slots, and that will give us the light sword. Um, and what the light sword does is it will clear twilight, and it also one hits anything that is made of twilight. Um, but it is it is quite linear in the way that there's there's three rooms on either side. You have to go through the three rooms. And you have to do everything in those rooms, and we can just do it a bit better or do it a bit quicker. So this kind of twilight um, that's there, um, that's what the light sword will be able to clear. Um, so there's some vertical parts of that with like a curtain, um, and we'll be able to clear that later on. Um, the Phantom Zen fights in Hundo are quite different to the Phantom Zen fights in Any Percent. Uh, so in Any Percent, we need to um, basically do three cycles of a jump attack and then two stabs. But because we have Great Spin, we can actually just one cycle him. Uh, so we hit him once and then hit him with three Great Spins and he's done. So it is it is very quick. Um, so that just shows how, how good Great Spin can be for you. Yeah, I mean, not just for Cave Ordeal, it's uh, Great Spin, it's just a, such a quality of life thing. Oh, it's awesome. If you could get it early in the run, I would, oh, I'd love it. 
chết rồi It is disgustingly fast, that fight. Compared to any percent where it's like slash, start, like spin, spin, and then you gotta wait for them to spawn in a different location. Yeah. So these here are our souls, or souls, I don't know how it's supposed to be, supposed to be said. Um, but basically we need to bring these with us uh, through the dungeon. That will else find as well. I was sliding with swords is pretty, yeah. pretty common. Sliding with swords is great because because we're holding it for the whole time. We're quite limited in terms of how we can move with it. So when we're waiting for the claw to retract with it, we we L slide at a diagonal angle um, to make a make it a long way or make it as far as we can, I guess. I guess the main part about this segment is just knowing where um, the slots are for it. So knowing that that is going to be there is a, is basically as far as it goes to be honest. Right. Um, should be able to get a heart. I'll get the heart piece, it doesn't matter. Not oh, true. I missed the else thing. It's fine. So these splits are identical to how the any percent uh, version of these splits go, except we have to get two heart pieces. So there's a heart piece per wing. And we have a great spin. This is heart piece number one. That was a pretty clean first half. Or West Wing, sorry. Great. That was a pretty good West Wing. Yeah, sorry. Right. That is West. Yeah, I, I, my, yeah, yeah. My brain it's West. The gears in my brain were turning. Yeah, it's left from our perspective when we walk in. Right. I believe that's. Yeah. And look at the map, yeah. I've never looked at the map for Palace of Twilight before now. I looked at it as I was entering West. I felt like it was my first time too. I just thought. Up the ledge. Nice. Are you? Text box skip? Oh. <laughs> I would have loved to test skip the text box. Yeah, so, um, this room us, uh, here. We just LJ. This, uh, this, this first room here is uh, known in the speedrun community as Stupid Room uh, because it is what it says in the 10. Um, there's basically a bunch of different platforms here and Zant's head can spawn in between whichever it wants um, and you just kind of got to hope that it doesn't knock you off because if you do fall it is quite an issue that's very friendly that is very friendly it heard you yeah well you don't want yeah exactly yeah you heard me talking about him what you don't want to do is basically you don't want him to be at the end or like sorry to be like halfway um, because if you fall there it is a it's a royal pain to try and uh, to try and get back up. Falling sucks and getting hit sucks. Getting hit to fall sucks. Something tells me you've been there. Yeah, I feel like we, I feel like we all have. Um, so the purpose of that rang there was to stun the shadow beasts. Um, so if you stun. They basically, the way Shadow Beasts work is that they lock onto a location and they charge off in that direction. Um, but by stunning them, it effectively resets their navigation, if you will. Like, it'll cause them to turn around and start going towards you quicker. I don't know where I landed. Surely go for Spidey Shot. I don't. I've never tried it. I could go for Spiny it. Spidey Shot is, I don't understand it. Oh my god, I got it. Oh my god. Yeah, there we go. That was awesome. It looks so cool, this but I don't understand how it works. 
I don't care for the LJA though. I don't like it. If I don't, I don't like, like it, it I mean I don't get it. <laughs> it's weird. You have to go earlier than you think. It's very, very strange. I'm so stoked you got Spidey Shot. It's so cool. Yeah, I've never gotten it. It's so, it, it's to the point that I'm just like, I won't even try going for it. Very difficult. So fast. What's actually a cool thing that can happen is that um, if, if for some reason you're slow um, and the enemies come over to Zant, it's this weird thing that if you hit Zant, then hit an enemy, you can hit Zant twice within the same spin attack. Um, which is quite weird. Uh, did I get the song? I will say across across the run, apart from the ice cave, you've actually like this. You played really well. Like, you were borderline PB pace for the first what four and a half hours, five okay. hours. I can't believe ice cave is the make or break for this run. Yeah, it can honestly. The second it messed up, my my head started spinning. It's that kind of thing of we know how to do it optimally. We don't know how to think. Yeah, I practice set stuff. I'm not good at um, improvising. No one told me. It. No one told yeah, me I, about I, this part. I don't think you're alone in that. I think uh, I think no one's built for understanding that puzzle. Yeah, I mean that's the thing about Hunter though is you always have to be ready to improvise. Backups are just as crucial. Yeah. Oh, especially when it comes to like day night cycles and rupee routing and stuff. This could be really good palace if I went for um oh what am I doing? I was <laughs> I thought you were just really scared of the hand and you were like I need to hit the hand. No, for some reason I thought that platform raised, I don't know why. That was a pretty good split, like you didn't really make any mistakes. That spidey shot. Confirm gold. Yeah, it's pretty good. Probably I actually would have golded if I didn't sit there for a while. So now what'll happen is that um when we get to the other side and Nuki puts the second soul in the slot, um she will get the light sword, and that will then make us very, very, very strong for fighting um anything Twilight related. So behind us at the top of this ramp that you can just see in the background, there's a big wall of twilight, which you can see there. Um, so we're going to be able to cut through that because we have the sword now. Nice butter sword. 100% should have right. made an incentive to, um, to recreate the twilight noise. I know that would have been fantastic. Too shy for that. You can do it. No. Ah, uh, no, I don't want to hurt people's ears. It's early in the morning. That's fair. So this now is our split leading us to the Zan fight. Um, so the Zan fight in this game is basically a boss rush. And um, what it does is actually quite cool. Um, it you find Zant in different environments that we've already fought within the run so he fights you in a um in like the deer the forest temple phase and he fights you in a Gwar mines phase and a lake bed phase and basically he warps around and uses 
forces you to use the stuff that you've got from that temple to defeat him. Um, so like in the in the forest temple phase, you have to be able to use the rang. In the lake bed phase, you have to use your iron boots um, and claw shot. So it is it, it's quite smartly done. It is literally a, like a very cool boss rush. Yes, there you go. It's also kind of hard to do. I'm, I, I'm definitely uh, not very good at it. It's quite, it's quite a hard one in Hundo. It's also a bit weird because you want great spin, but sometimes you take damage. Yeah. Uh, but the cool thing is, after that, we have Cave of Ordeals. I don't really know if I have much to save during Cave of Ordeals. <laughs> just leave it to your own devices, just concentrating on the floors. I was going to say you can calm where the next floor will be, but I'm not sure if you know the floors by heart. Where's my spreadsheet? <laughs> do you do you have a list there? I do, yeah. I think I have a fair understanding of it, off the top of my head. Yeah, off the top of my head, I have a decent idea. I just wanna. Oh, you want to double check? Yeah. The last thing you want is to like go into the like, Deku Bar before and jump attack down or something. I did this out of order, just realized. It's a safer order. That's true, yeah. I know you can do an LJ here, but it's, from what I know, it's very finicky. Never tried it either. It is very, it is very weird because the angle you go at, you're basically diagonal to that right hand wall, so you can clonk your sword off of it and it'll push you over the edge. That's funny. Um, so the reason Nuki voided off the edge there is because we need to come back to this side to fight the Xantads. Um, and rather than running around, uh, it just makes more sense to avoid. Uh, I got distracted because Google tried on my phone to search coming back to this slide. So I can definitely hear you. Your, your phone's, your phone's Google is loving me. I'm surprised it can like I understand what about. you're saying. I know that's what. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I think I've set it off three times. So this is um, this is quite a cool room here. Uh, so there are a bunch of platforms that we need to need to ride around the room, um, and you basically can do them on cycles. I don't um, do very fast. So cycle. there's you do. I don't. Uh... That's okay. It Sorry. it saves <laughs> like four seconds, I think. Oh really? I thought it was more than that. I don't think it's much time. I've never tried it, but I know you like do a really cool LJA from small platform to small platform. It's really cool. Yes. Yeah, so, so the platform in front of you that just appeared, you would do an LJA over to where that platform is. Yep. So so you effectively jump into nothingness, but the platform spawns when you get near it. Yeah, it's terrifying, but it looks so cool. Yeah. It's a cool room. The room's like this, like this fan tower and stuff like that, when done optimally are really really cool yeah exactly this game optimally is just it's a narrow level of cool for sure yeah top level top level tp is nuts Next room is the room before uh, the dance room. Which yeah, I they just drop it. Because there's like. There might be a fairy in. The yeah, there's front a fairy and there's a million shadow bees which drop hearts. Yeah. Yep, 
yeah, in the last room, they put um, a bunch of different Shadow Beasts. Um, which is all well and good, apart from the fact that we can just one-hit them all. Which is just a little bit, a little bit weird placement. Yeah. I like it, but... I, it's neat, but... Like, oh no. I'll quick spin. Quick spin some more. There's one. Force into into the boss rush. So we're gonna start with the Diababa phase, and then we go, which is far simple, um, and then we'll go at Gora Mines. After that, there's actually two forest temple phases, which is quite, which is quite weird. I never thought about that. Yeah, right. they don't, they don't just do different temples. They do forest temple twice, and then like they don't do, um, I don't know, like I don't know what they would do for temple at the time to be honest. Just spiders and. That sounds terrifying. But that does sound do absolutely that. traumatizing. Yeah, I don't know why they do they do Ook and then they do Diabala. It's a really cool one cycle you can do here, but it's a tight frame window. I haven't really given it much try. That's cool. It's a two frame window. That's what I thought. Yeah, so what it basically is, is that um, you get Zen down to quite low health, and then you delay your third hit and so that he attempts to warp away, but you interrupt the warp. Um, and that's what causes it. So you go either one, two, and then hold three, four, or one, two, three, and the hold for the fourth. But yeah, it's a two frame window. It saves a little bit of time, depending on RNG. And he caught on. This one's for beast. Just shoot dance. Uh, yeah. I respect the fact that you went for you went for the no scope. Oh, I tried. I didn't know if it was even enough ground, which I assume it is. On further inspection. Right. Hey, you know, nice hearts. Uh, where is that spawn so we consistent? It's always the one that. Furthest away. Yeah, Zan will always be the one furthest away, um, but it gets determined at a certain point in time. So if you go too early, then obviously a different one will become the furthest away. That's just... Hello. Who put that pillow there? Uh, do I need a heart? Yeah, I do. Now nah, you get a million in Snow Peak? Yeah, yeah. If I can get it. You can do it? <laughs> I guess this is pretty terrifying. I don't think spider sand would be all that much worse. Yeah, there is like a giant sand trying to step on you. Like, I don't know if when climbing up walls is too far different. Uh, 
And now we've got a castle courtyard phase. This phase in Hundo compared to any percent, <laughs> it's the difference is insane. Yeah, so in any percent what we need to do is we need to um so we only want to hit Zant with the fourth attack, so the end of our combo. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to slash three into the air and then turn for the fourth. But in Hundo, we can just great spin. Yeah, it's such a joke in Hundo. All right, cave ordeal is time. Yeah, Don't forget that. That is important. It's very important. So yeah, as I said, cave ordeal is 44 floors. Um... There's a Poe on Poe on floor 44 that we need. Um, and that that and another Poe on floor 20, uh, 17, I think. Um, those are the only reason we go to Cave of Ordeals. But what Nuke is going to try and do is to... Um, to uh, take damage as late as possible so she can keep her Great Spin. But because you don't do Aragrok 2 cycle, if you get the rare chew jelly, you'll have two backup health things. Yeah. You can have a rare chew jelly and a milk. Do you do B scan 2 cycle? Yeah, of course. Alright, so then, yeah, then you, then you got two. So, good luck. Thank you. Yeah, this is about 20 minutes of just sort of attacking <laughs> waves. Uh, yeah. Trying to focus and not make too many mistakes because it, it has a long, long term lasting effect, specifically here. I'll, get, I'll give a 10 floor summary. Just as a reminder, you may want to change your armor and shield. Ooh, yeah. Thank you. That's... That's right. Very good idea. Okay, that was stylish. Yeah, I love doing it like that, even if it's probably not the best. It works. I guess it's also worth noting, um, Nuki's trying to get 800 rupees by the end. There is a floor that will give us 200 and a floor that will give us 50. Wow. Did you say... Standard attack threats. Did you say 50? I thought it was 100. Uh, I think it's 100. I don't know. You could be right. I think you are right. Oh yeah, I see it's a hundred.
Um, just for a question in chat. Uh, yeah, it's hard coded that there are no um, heart drops. Yeah, but there basically, some there's a couple though. of floors that have hearts. Yeah, I go. But, but, uh, but like, let's say, oh, uh, if there's a floor, in, sorry, there's a heart on floor 18, and you take damage on floor nine, you don't want to wait nine floors time worth of it, so you would heal as Nuki did there. Uh, but it is hard coded that they will always drop green, blue, or yellow rupees. Um, which is why we use this as such a kind of money farm for the end of the run. Um, it's also on the Wii version. They skip a lot of these floors because they can actually just put out the light on each floor and run through it. I don't really need this. Earlier rendition of the route used to have to get 8.50, but it was sometimes a little too tight. Yeah. You can go as low as getting 7.50, but you don't really lose any time going for 800. That's... So annoying. Honestly, chew worms are the worst. I'm trying to do the double, just annoying sometimes. That guy over there is just hanging out. Great floor. This floor is slow. I didn't really want to get hit. I felt like I would several times. Sometimes they're worth playing it safe, just to guarantee. Yeah, that's true. Speaking of playing it safe. That is so unfortunate. There's a heart in two floors. It's fine. Yeah. It does suck for this next floor, actually. So basically, you stay Wolf Athos. I think it's under the where you jump off. Yeah. It's never the hard floors as well. It's always the easiest floors. It is. The amount of times I take it to the giant chew jelly. Oh yeah, I've been there. Too many times. Uh, do I want to be Wolf for this though? I don't really. You just wanted it to dig? Yeah. I don't know how that would have gone. Um, trying to dig with weavers. For Sando run, I grabbed the yellow chew jelly instead of the gold one. Ah. Oh. How'd that go? Uh, it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I realized um, yeah, after so I drank what Nuki... 
Go ahead. What a, what a Nuki just picked up there is a rare chew jelly. Um, so you don't have to get that, but basically what it allows her to do is it allows her to take damage one more time and be able to back it up so she has another drinkable item. Um, because we already have our great fairy tears for to two cycle beast cannon. So now this is just an extra like portable backup health, if you will. I think there's a floor that I most take damage on. It's that one. Because the ghost rats just ruin you. Yeah. Progress though. For the most part. Yeah, rupee counts looking good. For show. Goblin just fell asleep. They're all asleep. What's happening? Yep, the rave guy. It's not. Yep, I was gonna say. Yep, I've seen that be to too many people. Yep. Guilty. Pretty good though. I arrived at that tech type, which was entirely like not your fault. Yeah, pretty much. Tech type floor is ridiculous. You can you, when you're jumping down, you can land on top of the tech types, and that can be just so unfortunate. Just puts it down on the run. Taking damage like that is such a mental... Like... I don't know, it just puts you down. Especially when yeah. you're on a good round. Yeah, so let the game's out to get you. You are loaded, you don't need any more rupees. Oh, yeah, you're right. 200. That's just a random spot. That's cool. The worst. They suck so much. Uh, 
I think this is better. Maybe I should just bomb air at them. Yep. Hey, bomb arrows. Yeah, I'm good. Do you have another bag? Yeah, I do. Yeah, by this point in Cave Ordeals, it's kind of like you're expected to take damage. Um, a lot of the floors, kind of after here, we don't actually care if we have damage or not. This is a cool floor. It is a cool floor. So what we do is basically we um, intentionally get ghost rats on us so that they hold us down so we can just spam jump attack. He is, he is schmoovin'. He was just kind of silent on me. Breaking my ankles. <laughs> Alright, this next floor is just chaos. That's quick. Honestly, you've got a chill post I'd call the win. Going too late. I should probably just do swings at this point. Let's see, this is the annoying part when they're together. Yeah. Let's go over this one now. Just a big mess. This is sanity. Oh, I'm what worse than that than I remember being.
it is that kind of floor that like if you if you do anything out of order then it's very hard to recover from it because when they get close to each other it's just yeah yeah that's a tragedy it is quite frustrating overall i'd still call the win i don't know what time you enter cave board deals but it's not sure. like a 20 slot thing. My goal is like 18. Hi. This is the last four before the last foe. I mean, this is like the last four. And the whole reason we came in the first place. Well, half of it. Po po fifty. I could tell you that that was a twenty. Okay, ordeals. Is what? Sorry. A twenty minute and thirty second. Really? On the dot. Yeah. Also, we're taking damage twice in the dark floor. But... That's not bad at all. Way worse than that, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, you started at 6.20.41 and you came out 6.41.11. Uh, I, I said that to Beast. Go ahead. You go. There you go. Um, I was saying to Beast that I feel like Cave of Ordeals is the ultimate, oh, that felt really bad, and then you realize it's actually not that bad, and the other side is just hard. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, just getting that Poe that I skipped earlier. And we'll go... To, to the cat. Of Elda. Yeah, to the cats. Hope people are excited for cats. Love a good, love a good cat. I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember this OJ. I have a very weird setup for it. I look at like the patterns on the bridge. I might just trigger the mailman. You have a chat. Then, like, that means you won't have to skip it on the way into Castletown. Yeah. Let's like transform anyway. Sure, it's not that much. That's not a horse. I also think you, um, you may be coming in almost bang on estimate. I think so. Or maybe it's slightly ahead. I think it's a little ahead, but I can't tell. We'll see. You have so many rubies. <laughs> 
It looks like I got the 100 and uh, connection cave. I didn't. Is one of the last heart pieces. I think third to last. Uh, yes. Our last brother. Uh, we have this cat mini game and our web. Are there bones? Oh. I didn't even see them either. I think they were hiding in the grass. Alright, it's time for the cat's minigame. Um, if you haven't haven't seen this before, basically, as I said earlier, after we cleared Hidden Village, um, there are 20 cats hanging around in Hidden Village now, and our job is to go talk to all of them. Um, and if we do that, we get a uh, we get a heart piece. Um, but they all have their spawning positions, and then they sometimes fall off. Um, they're, so they're hanging out on like the second story of a, of a building, and sometimes they fall down. Um, so you got to keep track of what cats fell down and which you need to go back up. But it is a, it can be quite fun. And we get the vibes again. The, the vibe music. Definitely good fun. Fantastic music. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> That one already fell. Two. I want to recall. Dash. It's like an orange one. Fair amount from the fall. Good now. Let me up. Perfect. That is a lot of cats. A lot of meows. At least twenty. Let's say it's actually twenty, maybe. Uh, there's a po hanging out in the corner here um, that we don't want to climb up top to get. So we're going to try and get it from below, and it is so finicky. That's whether or not it wants to come down. Morning. Want breakfast? Hello? Yeah? 
Oh, hello. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It's just not behaving. There you go. No? Oh. There we go. There sort you of. Go. That's just fine. That's. Uh... It's not doing anything. Oh. <laughs> uh... Hey. <laughs> I've never had that many issues with that. It's awful. It messes you up at random times. Awesome. Now we have a donation simulator. We need to give 800 rupees in chunks of 50 to Charlotte, um, which is just a very uh, interesting minute. Um, and then we have Edward into Hyrule to wrap up the run. He may not like you as a wolf. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, wait, you got this. <laughs> I, I need to leave. Can I go? Oh, I have to go at this entrance. Yeah, because I'm never wolf here. <laughs> God. Yeah, normally you've done mailman skip. Um, and then, yeah, we're into Hyrule. Um, and then in Hyrule, there's not too, too much. It's mostly the standard stuff. And there's no heart pieces or bugs or pose, so it's really just getting through Hyrule. Um, and then just on to the final boss fights. So we've probably got about uh, yeah, 15, 20 minutes left. Probably slightly underestimate, depending on how it goes. Um, but there will be a two minute cutscene in a minute if there's any uh, last minute donations and stuff. Um, just after we finish up all this part. At least in this, you can afford to give him 30 if you need to. Wait, what? Sorry? You have like enough backup rupees that you can give him 30 extra. Oh, uh, yeah. And you get down to your last 100 and you give him 30. You've actually low-key like, screwed the run because you have to go and get um, backup rupees. Alright, we're full of health. I have to bonk, right? It's a requirement. It is a requirement. There you go. Beautiful. Yeah, awesome. There is a um there's a two minute cutscene now, if there's any um admin stuff or donations. Yeah, I can go plug central on this. Um, so okay. more reasons to donate. Is that what I'm hearing people say? Did you know you can get prizes if you donate money to the wonderful event and the cause? Um, we got some grand prizes. You can win a Nintendo Switch, a PlayStation 5. Um, you can, there's a there's a Lego block with with, with Super Mario 64 and stuff. Um, so all, all the grand prizes are between 100 and 200 dollars. These are cumulative donations across the event. So just keep plugging money, keep donating to us. Um, Prizes.esa, marathon.com. There are lots of other um, ranges of things that you can put towards the bid war for whether we're going to have the crisp HD display for the Lunastus race or the CRT is going to be closed off at the end of the next run, which is Wings Club. So if you want to snipe that and get it, you've probably got about 45 minutes to make this a really exciting race for it. Plenty of donation incentives that are coming up and bid wars coming up afterwards. Um, and then, I mean, this run's coming to an end. Show some love to, to Nuki and the wonderful work um, that, that her and Waterproof Teabag have done for us. And it'll be wonderful and really nice and amazing. Thank you, that was great. You're really good at this. <laughs> Your check is in the mail. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that is a, uh, the Midna cutscene, um, if you haven't seen that before. Um, so basically, it's kind of all of the storyline coming together of we've got a few shadows and it makes uh, her helmet and she takes out the barrier. Um, no barrier skip found in this game yet, but maybe, uh, maybe someday. It is something that a lot of people are looking into. Um, and now we've just got Hyrule, 
Um, so Hyrule is basically, there's a couple of different barriers um, as you work your way through the castle. Um, and we're going to skip some of them and not skip other ones. Uh, we have another King Bulbloon fight coming up, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's a Dark Nut and a Ralphos, and then just a bit of tower climbing. Oh, you're going for barrier one skip? Yep. Uh, I don't think that'll work, actually. Uh, I don't know. This is oh. best, so. Um, so what Nuki was going for there is this barrier, so this yellow thing. Um, this only spawns uh, when you land in the area. But if you get something like a yellow rupee or a blue rupee, um, the text prompt, in terms of like the ordering queue, it goes the rupee, then the barrier. So if you get a text prompt on the rupee, uh, the barrier actually won't spawn. Um, so you can just run straight through. Uh, thankfully, that's the best one to miss. Yeah. I guess, as long as I yeah, don't that one, one they, instant. They, uh, that kind of sucks. Yeah, the one you just did there and the one inside of the main the main two that you don't want to miss. If you do in both of the cases, I think it's just to save work is probably the play. Yeah. And then we have our old mate, King Bublin, for our fourth time. Maybe not our fourth time. But... Yes, true. Yeah, <laughs> we did skip one of them. This might be a little slow with a great spin. Right. That went through him and hit his weapon. His hitbox is very, very strange. For a big lad, he has a very, very small hitbox. We have a, our final one framer of the run. Um, so after this, this text finishes up, uh, there is a one frame backflip that you can do, which saves like four seconds. Um, so you backflip and then midair save orb. It is one of those ones you just gotta mash and pray. There is absolutely no skill involved in it. Now we're going inside. So there is a dark nut fight inside. I don't do. Do you skip? I do. Well, I'll try. Okay. Yes. There's a, basically there, there's, it's the similar idea for what we have for the outside barrier skip. Uh, we're going to use inside for the dark knot fight. Um, and basically, when we're there, rather than starting the barrier, we're going to try and grab a blue rupee. Um, it's a little bit more specific. It saves like 20 seconds. Uh, but we'll, we'll give it a crack and see if we can. Well, she'll, she'll give it a crack. I'm not doing much. <laughs> Um, these guys just randomly get up to you. I don't know why. I think it's whenever you go around the right side of the pillar, but I don't know. Good ball and chain. So what we're going to see here is Nuki's going to um, break a statue, which has a guaranteed blue rupee in it. Um, and then try and um, jump strike over to it. That might be good. Uh -huh. Oh, that's unfortunate. So that is just ever so that's that's as close as you can be to it without getting it. Um, but at least we we have been through some dark no fights before. Hopefully next fair by now. Never mind. There are hearts in this room. 
Oh, he dropped hearts, that's right. Uh, yeah. Um, so now what we've got is there is a quick puzzle uh, with the lanterns um, and to Lizalfos. Um, and then when we go outside, Aralfos, who is the boss from City in the Sky, uh, sorry, the mini boss from City in the Sky, uh, will be outside. And so we have a fast uh, either ball and chain strat or a great spin strat to deal with him. Have equipped bomb arrows before. Do you still have bomb arrows? Oh. I should want. <laughs> Choose your favorite Lizalfos. I will pick that one. <laughs> I don't even know if bomb arrows faster, actually. Um. I feel like it is, but I'm not sure. I know also outside people bomb arrow the Zalfos, sorry, Aralfos, rather than ranging. I see. That is quite a satisfying fight. Very. And now we get to watch the cutscene of all the friends we made along the way. Um, so early in the run, I mentioned how we saw Asha when she gave us her uh, her little drawing. Um, and then well, I, we briefly talked to Shad and we talked to... I forgot the guy who gives you arrows memo. I forgot his name. I thought he was your friend. I know. We're, we're that good mates, so I don't even call him by his first name. Oh, wow. Intriguing. Uh, but they all rock up with a rocket launcher. Spoilers. Um, sorry, in, in your time of need. I've genuinely forgotten his name. Oh wait, or his, is his name Aru? And that's why it's Aru's memo. No, don't ask me. <laughs> They're not my friends. And now we've got is we've just got the final tower climb. Um, so it's just a, a small room with a puzzle in it, but if you know where to go, it's all good. Um, four enemies, and then we can skip past the Dark Knight fight uh, a lot easier than the last one. Um, and then we're into Puppet Zelda and Ganon. I'll explain the puppets of the fight when we get there. But I briefly mentioned earlier that is it is just entirely RNG. Um, but I'll I'll explain that further when we get there. Pass this. Remind me to um, do equips before I enter, because I would like to not risk any sort of crash. Oh yeah, equip um, on the stairwell outside. Yeah, yeah. A slight cool thing you can do here is that rather than doing the three claw shots, if you stand at the corner of that stairs, you can do it in two. Great spin is just too good. Much easier than the other Dark Nut Scoop. Yeah, make sure you don't drink the lantern oil. <laughs> it is Not an about awful it. thing that when you're there at the, at the end of a run looking at two yellow bottles and deciding which one you want. Do you think 54 yeah, arrows? Are, um, 54? Uh, maybe. 
Um, so we're into our final kind of boss fight. So the final boss fight is broken up into three parts. Uh, so we've got our Puppet Zelda, we've got our Beast Ganon, and we've got our regular Ganon. Um, so Puppet Zelda, as I said, entirely RNG. Um, she can do three types of attacks. She can either uh, shoot a ball at you, as she is doing currently. Uh, she can shoot a Triforce at you, or she can uh, try to kind of lunge at you. Um, basically, the way we know we've got perfect RNG is it has to be seven cycles um, and what we want is we want her to shoot a ball at us on uh, cycle one cycle three and cycle seven if it's anything else it won't be perfect energy so we're at one and three right now so this is pretty good um, so she is guaranteed to attack us now for the next three cycles as uh, nuki is building her lovely pot forward Never get me. Safe. Perfect RNG confirmed in pot forward. Oh no. Okay, we're good. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I should also say that not even just not even just the attacks. That doesn't really matter. You're gonna get your full heal from the true jelly anyway. Oh wait, yeah. Um uh, not only are which attack she does RNG, but the length of time between attacks are also RNG. So that was perfect RNG in terms of cycles, um, but could have been faster in terms of the gap in between them. Um, so now this is the Beast Ganon fight. So what Nuki's going to do is she's going to uh, shoot Ganon with a bow, uh, hit him with a mortal draw, um, and then use the rare chew jelly that she has in her inventory to two cycle him so it makes you a lot stronger um so what she do is basically exactly what she did there but have a drink in between and it will uh, it will two cycle him there we go we glow in the dark and it's a two cycle. Um, so I, I said there was three parts to the to the final fight. It's kind of four parts. Um, so it goes Papa Zelda, Beast Ganon, Horseback Ganon, then Normal Ganon. Um, so now in this section, we actually have Zelda helping us. Um, so Zelda is shooting light arrows from the back of Epona um, while we are following Ganon around Hyrule Field. Um, Ganon's pathing is RNG, uh, so you need to adapt to that. But Zelda's shooting is based on our positioning and what angle we're holding the analog stick. So although sometimes it does feel like we're at fault, it's uh, sorry. Sometimes it does feel like it's just RNG and it's Zelda's fault. It's not always her fault. Um, but Ganon's pathing can be quite annoying. And that is pretty good. Nuki, I'm not going to lie to you. I think you're going to make it in underestimate. I think so, too. Unless you have a very unless interesting have... cannon fight. Yeah, unless I go, like, use the bathroom. <laughs> and don't forget, also, you have to equip uh, your boots, yep. your lantern, and your magic armor. Did you say lantern, too? Oh, yeah, wait, turn yeah, on yeah. The lantern, put on the boot. Yeah. Okay. Someone has asked for fishing pole, if you would like to fish Ganon, but it, it is up to you. Okay. I can fish Ganon. And then it will be time when uh, Link's sword lands in Ganon's chest. Where's the fishing pole? There we go. Good 
No. Oh no, he stood back up. <laughs> oh my god, please. Get back down. It's bad time. There we there go. go. Hi. Um, so the reasoning behind uh, the boots and all that will make sense in a second when we get through part of the uh, part of the final cutscene. Um, but GG made it an underestimate. Yeah, other than Ice Cave, um, which was an experience. I mean, City was an it experience was fun. too, but the rest of the run was quite good. Quite happy. Yeah. I haven't finished a run you're, in this you're... category in actual months, to be honest. So... Your early game into mid game was like borderline PB pace, so that is quite that is quite impressive to do in a in a like an environment like this. Yeah, that's good. Um wanna shout out of course Nathan T Bag for commentating and also being one of I guess two people now pushing this category. He's done very good. Improved quite fast. Very proud of where you're going. Just keep that up. Uh, I wanna shout out Beast. Thank you. Beast has world record. Beast is really good at this game. He is a really good person. He's a really good community member. He does a lot for this game. I couldn't have been here without him. For sure. And uh, I also want to shout out Neo, uh, donated earlier. My partner. He pushes me to be my best. And I also don't know if I'd be here without him. Been pretty hard, but he's done a lot for me, and I appreciate him. I think that's all. Um, there is this last bit of the cutscene that the bag was talking about the iron boots. But other than that, I think I'm good. Just give it a second. I've actually never seen it or paid attention to it, so I don't know how long it is. How much longer? Yeah, it's not very often we see the end of runs. <laughs> And that we're happy enough to stay around and watch the cutscene. Um, I, I guess oh, actually, I'll wait for I'll wait for the boots. Just the boots, yeah. Did your lantern expire? It might have. Should have used the lantern oil. Yeah, there we go. That was yeah. my fault. I told you to use the rare tree jelly. No, it's um, you got anything yeah. to say? But I, I guess. I, I, I guess on my end, um, thanks Nuki for having me, and thanks everyone for hanging out uh, through the middle of the night over there. Um, yeah, as Nuki said, I'm I'm one of kind of two people who grind this category. Um, currently third, trying to get to second, um, but game is hard. Um, so yeah, if you like this category or um, want to see more of it, um, waterproof tea bag with an underscore at the end because someone thought that username before me. Um, yeah, I, I do attempts quite a lot because um, I, I really, really enjoy this game in this category. Um, yeah, it's, it is quite fun. Oh, yeah, I guess I should shout out my own self too. Um, as T-Bag mentioned earlier, I did three so 100% challenge, which was that 56 hour run in one sitting. Uh, once I get home, I'm going to do that with a 2D Zelda 100%. It's going to be another 55 hour run, one sitting, no sleep. So I like 100%. Push TV slash Nuki Dog. Uh, yeah. That's about it. Thanks for having me. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nikki. Thank you very much, T-Bag. That was a wonderful run. Up next, we have got 7 Racer 7 versus Honorous. who are racing Winx Club. It's going to be fantastic. We will see you soon.